Hello I am very glad to see you on my channel. If you have already seen this video on YouTube, then I want to tell you that I made a continuation of this story from all the available chapters that you definitely haven't seen, so I advise you to watch it right now. I want to tell you the story of one boy, but first I will begin my story with his father, his name was Go Jin Young, he was known as an expert in the ancient language Dae Mi Young. He also had a seven-year-old son whose name was Jinan. He was a very curious boy who was constantly eager to learn something new. When Jin Young entered his father's office, he saw how he was sitting at the books and studying something, his father had a lot of different books on the table that he constantly read. He never liked his father's profession, was busy with his work and practically did not pay attention yes the boy, because he simply had no time due to the fact that he works all the time. Spending time with his father was something special for his father so he couldn't even think about it. The boy could not look at his father for a long time when he worked, because he did not pay attention to him at all, so the boy was always upset and left the room to do his own thing. But whenever he managed to spend time with his father, it was something incredible. His father constantly told him about his mother over a glass of alcohol, he often drank it began to envelop nostalgia in which it began to blur. Despite the smell of alcohol, the boy still did not mind spending time with his father, because he understood that at least this way he could be alone with him. Jinan do you miss your mother asked the father and after that he hugged the boy and came to his place and he felt some kind of warmth and love. Jin Young said to his dad raising his head to him and smiling yes dad I miss her a little I miss her. Well, it's alright since you're my dad and that's enough for me I get enough love from you but I still miss it sometimes and I wish my mom was here too. Lots of kids lost their fathers during the war including Ha King and Wang Ho who live next door to us so I'm fine dad don't have to worry about me. Son, you are my only child and the most beloved child, thank you for everything, the father said, and after that the child came to him so that the boy felt that his father was always with him and he could feel safe next to him. Mao An is now at home asked the stranger approaching the door of their house and the boy approaching the door shouted to him from the fence yes wait one minute. When he opened the door, he looked at the man standing near the gate and said who you would be. Then the boy looked a little closer at this man and screamed cousin uncle is it really you said the guy and the man smiled at him you understand that he recognized him this boy he answered Jin Young how are you doing? I see that you read a book I'm doing well and how did the boy answer and how is your aunt why are you without her the boy was without a hit then to see his cousin uncle. If a seven year old child asks me this question, how should I answer it, my uncle thought and began to scratch his beard. Jin Young raised his head up smiled and said it's true that earlier in this age already got married isn't it? You are a very smart boy said uncle and started sucking him on the head if only our song would be half as smart as you but the guy didn't like being scratched on the head he said uncle I can't breathe let me out. It was already night on the street and the stars sparkled in the sky, it seemed that the whole planet was covered with a large black blanket with white patterns. My father met my uncle and took him to our house, they were already sitting at the table and my father was pouring alcohol into small cups. Here, my father said and handed a cup of alcohol to his uncle, they were sitting at the table opposite each other, a lot of food was laid on the table and they were talking to each other about different things. My father took a glass and drank alcohol from it. Uncle also did not wait long and emptied the contents of the glass in a matter of seconds. So you want me to translate the ancient hieroglyphs from this golden tablet I understand everything correctly asked the father and looked at his uncle with a serious look and his uncle answered him yes you understood everything correctly. To be honest, no one studied from the ministry has such knowledge as you. In addition, his highness himself is very interested in this work, this is a very good opportunity. But I have yet to finish my research on artifacts that I have been working on for over 10 years said my father I put my head down he understood that he had to complete the work he had begun. But my uncle was very serious and he said you only have a few options with your master and knowledge you can finish this job in just a couple of days. He continued to say I understand your position but you should think about Jin Young's future because he will grow up very soon and will already be quite big. Researching artifacts is also very important how many years you have already wasted on this I know that you have run out of money you are saving on food and you are in debt. He put his head down and narrowed his eyes. My father was never so gloomy as he is now, he was clearly very worried about what my uncle said. Okay I understand I really should take this job said father and uncle said good choice buddy it's the right decision because it will at least make you some money. I spied on them standing near the door. I tried to be invisible so as not to embarrass, 
but I was really insanely interested in what they talked about there, because my uncle just doesn't come to us. I don't know how long it will take but it won't be long don't create any problems dad said not well before he started to leave on his journey. No problem father I promise everything will be fine I will behave properly and the nanny won't have any problem with me. Well done, promise that you will keep your word, and now I will go, I promise that I will come back as soon as possible, but I don't know how fast it will be. Father left, he walked into the distance, I followed him until he disappeared on the horizon I really didn't want him to leave, but I understood that there was no other choice and he had a good opportunity to earn money for our family. I hope that everything will be fine with my father, I know that he is insanely smart and I am sure that he will cope with all the obstacles in his path, and I will just wait for him. There was a pink sunset, evening had already come and it was getting dark around the reader. I you sat on those steps and waited for your father for a short time I left this place to eat but then immediately returned because I did not want to miss the moment when my father would come. But I still didn't see my father, different people were walking around, they were traders with horses or just fellow travelers, everyone was busy with their own affairs and rushed somewhere but I didn't see my father. I took a deep breath and then I thought that he probably wouldn't come today either. It wasn't the first day when he didn't come, I started to worry. I went into the room and was a little upset because today my father didn't come either, I'm always upset by such moments and I don't know what to do about it. As I walked through the rooms of our house, I noticed one door that I had never before been allowed to enter without permission. Father's office maybe while he's gone I can go there and see what's going on there just for a while I'll go check if everything is in order there but I won't tell anyone about it. Now when I think about my father, I want to go there even more because there are many things that remind me of him. He will probably scold me very much if he finds out, but nevertheless I cannot overcome my curiosity, I am extremely interested to know what is there. For the first time I went into his office without his permission and I can stay here myself so I walked very carefully at first it seemed to me that someone might be following me although I understood that there was no one in the room. When I resigned myself to the fact that there really are no one here and it's unlikely that anyone can notice me here, I began to look at everything that was in this room, all the objects that were found here were insanely interesting. There are so many books here I'm so curious to look at them all did my father really read all these books he must be insanely smart. I abruptly turned my head back, it seemed to me that someone was in the room, but then I realized that I just imagined. But I saw a very beautiful picture, I didn't pay attention before that it was hanging here, but now I focused on it, I decided to come and take a closer look at it. If I remember correctly, there must be something behind this picture, I must check it. I came closer to this picture, took it with my hand and realized that this is an ordinary fabric that can be pushed aside, I did it and saw that there was a staircase down behind it. Yes, everything is as I thought, there really was a secret entrance that I had never been in, but dad might scold me if I went down there. This staircase that leads to the cellar where my father keeps his artifacts I'm usually not allowed to look at them but for some reason today I really want to go down there. I quickly ran for a candle so that I had light to go down to this basement, I already decided that I would do it anyway and see what was below. I think that nothing will happen if I go down to this basement, it's unlikely that something can happen, I'll just look and dad won't even know about it. When I went downstairs I saw the door, I took the handle of this door with my hand, lowered it down and pulled the door towards me and then opened it. I opened the door even more in order to better see what is there, but for now I was scared to go there. When the light of my candle began to illuminate everything in the room, I saw a bunch of different artifacts and objects that fascinated me, I could not take my eyes off them. It was amazing. I looked at all these objects, I didn't know which one to look at first, because they were all insanely beautiful and interesting. There are so many colored things here, but I don't even have a clue what these things are. I saw many of the items that were on the shelves for the first time. When I looked at another stick, I saw that there are things from the west. How beautiful they were, they were made of wood, it was all handmade. I didn't understand what most of these things were for, but I really liked them. I would really like my father to tell me somehow about all these things where he got them from and why they are standing here. In the far part of the room, I saw a large box. I went closer to it, illuminated it with a candle and said that the work on which we father spent his whole life is stored here. What can lie there, I thought, and brought my candle closer in order to examine. I opened the lid of this box I began to examine everything that was there I was interested in absolutely everything. There were strange things in the box, why was my dad put a branch here and didn't know what kind of branch it was, there were books with foreign languages. 
I started digging in this box and after a while I found an interesting object, it was lying at the very bottom of this box. I managed to get it out and pull it out, I took it in my hand and examined it very carefully, it was some kind of box, but it was not like the other boxes that I had seen before. That this is an octagonal artifact, I have never seen such an artifact before, it is interesting to know why this artifact is needed. My dad, in any case, we know what it is for. He looks very intimidating, I would probably be very scared if I saw him at a very young age. We need to put it back before something happened to it so where did it lie I tried to find the exact place where this artifact was lying. But while I was trying to hide it back, I accidentally pricked you with my finger on the three that was on the lid of the box. Damn, it really hurts, I pricked how it happened, blood began to flow out of my finger. My blood started dripping right on this artifact and amazingly it hit right where the mouth was carved on the wooden box and it started glowing. Damn what's going on I must have done something wrong it's unlikely that this artifact you should glow like that daddy will kill me if they find out that I've done something. I shouldn't have come here and rummaged through his stuff I knew it wouldn't do any good but my curiosity got the better of me as always. The artifact began to emit a strong light from its eyes otherwise shine directly at me. From the eyes of this artifact, beams similar to tentacles began to appear and, as if alive, they began to reach out to me. They tried to penetrate me through my eyeballs. My eyes began to glow and I seemed to let in all this magical power that was sealed in the artifact. I experienced incredibly severe pain, the veins on my face began to appear and turn red. I screamed very loudly because it was unbearable pain. I took off into the air and soared above the ground, but I didn't realize how I was doing it, because I didn't do it, I was dragging it that inhabited me. At some point, it all ended and the artifact stopped glowing, it stopped emitting these magical tentacles from its eyes. I fell to the ground from a height of 2m as I was flying down and it was a strange feeling, as if I had disappeared from this world for a while and then returned to it. My eyes then saw nothing, they seemed to have become blind, I felt a strange pain in my head, I had never experienced anything like this before. Then I just closed my eyes and fell asleep, I was so tired during this time that I could no longer hold on. It was already evening outside. Clouds floated across the sky and quite a long time passed after I lost consciousness. The artifact was in the chest after all, I managed to hide it there before all this happened, he lay and seemed to be smiling looking at me. I opened my eyes and realized that I was waking up I did not understand how long I was unconscious and all I remember is how I fell and fell asleep. I felt very tired and I had the feeling that I was completely exhausted, as if all my strength had been taken away from me. What just happened I asked in a voice but I understood that no one would give me an answer after all, I was alone in this room, I decided to get up from the floor and look again at this artifact. I decided that I need to close this chest so that dad does not notice that I climbed here. He will probably be very angry with me if he finds out about what happened. I have to get out of here I'm scared I don't want to stay here anymore this room scares me dad didn't let me in here for no reason he probably found out that there are such artifacts that can harm me. Step by step, I was heading towards the exit in order to leave this room, I wanted to get out of here as soon as possible and just start doing my own thing. But at some point, I experienced a very strange feeling, as if I was starting to pound all over from the inside. What is this where this sound comes from why do I feel such strange sensations I just wanted to leave the room but I can't. There was a wild rumble in my head that did not give me peace of mind, it hit me like a hammer on the head and I screamed. I put my hands on my ears and tried to somehow calm this feeling in my head, but nothing worked for me, it only got louder. In front of me, I saw black hands that tried to swallow me, and not as if they wanted to hug me. I didn't control my hands, they began to move on their own and I didn't even know what was happening to them, as if someone had moved into my body. My fingers began to move strangely, they began to break and did not obey me at all, I had no control over my body at all. I wanted to scream very loudly because I was in pain, but my hand covered my stomach and I could not utter a sound. Then my hand began to choke me I could not do anything about it I could absolutely not inhale and exhale the air from my lungs because my mouth and nose were covered by my own hand. Ang Sir Sajia these words were spoken by a voice in my head. It was like some kind of spell in a language unknown to me. I already thought that I was finished, I'm about to die, my eyes opened very wide and my whole face shrank. Then I felt that I was overwhelmed with energy, I seemed to let a huge force inside me and it wanted to break out. 
Get out of here stop being in my body get out I don't want to feel you leave me alone I screamed for this feeling to go away I knew something was in me I felt it. Then there was a strong explosion, this explosion was made by me, but when it happened, things did not scatter in different directions, but rather they rose into the air and were there. Books and vases were flying all over the room, I couldn't help it, they were like fish swimming in the air. Then they nevertheless landed on the ground and remained there lying. I exhaled in order to catch my breath, bubbles began to appear from my mouth, it felt like I was underwater and every exhalation creates bubbles. I felt very hot, drops of sweat were dripping down my face. I didn't know at all what to do with it all. I just felt very bad and don't know how to stop this condition. I looked at my hands and saw that I could finally control them I felt my fingers I felt my hands and could move them calmly. The stairs that I came down here seemed to be waiting for me and I thought that I need to get out of here as quickly as possible before this feeling returned to me. I ran to these steps and thought that I need to go upstairs as quickly as possible. I can't stay here anymore because something bad has clearly happened in this room. Daskni Inari the voice in my head woke up again he was constantly talking to me some strange words in an incomprehensible language I did not know what to do to make him stop talking to me. Go away, I shouted to him so that he would unhook from me and did not want this voice to sound in my head, I wanted to finally be left without him, but he had a different opinion. I felt how this creature, the word for which parasite, began to stick to me, it did not let me in and pulled me back with its black tentacles. How is this even possible? I don't understand what kind of nonsense is this why are these tentacles pulling me in yes and where did they even come from my body is so heavy. I felt how these tentacles began to absorb my entire body, they were already even on my face and on my hair, I could do absolutely nothing with them. Calm down you just need to calm down I can't lose to these tentacles I know that I'm stronger than them and won't get rid of me sooner or later. When I realized this I realized that they really started to let me go and I felt a huge lightness in my body I could easily move on yes I managed to do it. I walked forward I climbed step by step and didn't look back because I didn't want to face the eyes of this monster let him be behind me I see which means he's not there I'm not afraid of him. At some point, the darkness filled absolutely the entire space behind me. If I had turned my head then, I would have looked directly into it, but I didn't. I wanted to take over this boy's body and take over his soul, but I didn't succeed. For some reason, I can't control him, how is that even possible? I came out of this basement then I finally returned to my dad's room but I felt that the monster had not disappeared anywhere he continued to follow me I felt his back he was behind me. I'm sure my father used some kind of trick when he sealed me there's nothing you can do about it I'll have to find another option even if it takes a very long time I'll do it anyway said the monster. I went back to my room and decided that I needed to sleep, it must have all been a bad dream although it didn't feel like a dream, I left a candle burning near my bed. I didn't want to be alone in the dark, I listened to my head, listened to everything that was happening around and heard complete silence. I can't hear these sounds anymore it's all over right finally he left me now I'm free and he won't touch me anymore I can fall asleep normally. But the monster seemed to hear everything I think about. I again heard his voice in my head and he told me I'm here don't worry what's your name he asked I was very scared. I jumped out of my bed and yelled help please what is going on here what the hell are you in my head again you got in it again. You woke me up from my sleep tell me your name said the monster he would be very scary he was all the time next to me but I could not see him yet. But then I saw a strange darkness in my room, I had never seen such darkness before, I was very scared and started screaming, I said what are you, I don't want you to be near me. The monster seemed to collect all the darkness from my room and turned into black smoke. It was a black clot of energy that had two glowing eyes, it was right in front of me. I looked at him frightened, absolutely did not know what to tell him, I was very afraid of this creature and really very scary. No I won't tell you I won't tell you my name you'll never know it clearly to you in your life I know you're not real even if you look so realistic. You really don't want to tell me your name it will be your fault I'm giving you one more opportunity just tell me your name. Morning came, the sun came out from behind the horizon and began to illuminate the street with its rays. I sat on the steps as always and waited for my father I thought that at least today he should return. I sat and thought that I probably need to tell my father about what happened to me yesterday, but I was afraid because he could scold me. The young master turned to me the nanny she ran up to me and wanted to say something I raised my head and looked at her maybe she knows when dad will return. The nanny came closer to me and said your expression is very painful maybe you are sick or injured tell me what is happening to you. I looked at her and didn't even know what to say to her. 
I couldn't tell the nanny about what happened to me. After all, she wouldn't have helped me. I exhaled and just sat for a few seconds silently I didn't know what to answer her and I had to figure out how to calm her down so that she wouldn't worry. Nothing happened don't worry about it I'm sure I'll feel much better after a little rest. She looked at me with a surprised look and answered well do not read a lot of books today and have a good rest with you it looks painfully painful I am starting to worry about you. I was still able to calm the nanny at least a little and she went on to do her own thing. And I just sat on the steps waiting for my father. Even if I tell her about what happened, she will just call me crazy because everyone else is so I have to keep this secret. The monster began to appear near me again but then I didn't notice it yet, I just sat and thought about when my father would return and how much longer I would have to wait for him. The monster started talking to me again he always appeared suddenly when I least expected him I heard his voice and he had a very nasty hoarse voice he told me you will not wait for your father. Where is this place asked monster the air here is different from where I lived it's very hard to breathe here tell me about this world maybe I can better understand what's going on here. There are no spirits in your world at all, I can't see anyone here from the ghosts only I am alone tell me, this woman, your servant asked me the monster, but I didn't want to answer him at all. No, she's not a servant, she asked me for you monster I didn't want to talk to him about anything, but I couldn't, I told him my name is not no, I want you to shut up get off me as long as you can sit in my head. You're a completely useless boy. You're useless to any of my questions. You can't answer properly. Why doesn't he come out when I ask him to come in? But when I don't ask him to leave, he seems to disappear somewhere. I hope he never comes back. My name is Sertan not Creedon. I am the great warrior of the mighty demon world Sertan remember this name you will have to get used to me. Stop messing with me I don't want you in my head get off me if you call me no then I'll call you damn. Chkirtan disappeared somewhere again now I knew his name but to be honest I would not mind knowing absolutely nothing about this monster I would like him to finally get away from me. Bon appetit young master, the nanny said to me. After she brought food to my room and put it on the table, there was a lot of delicious food. And to be honest, I really got hungry. Thank you babysitter for the food I'm sure it's delicious I said babysitter to thank her she smiled and went on about her business. I decided to start my meal with rice I have always loved rice I think it is the best food on the planet I took a small amount of rice with chopsticks and made a rice cake out of it and put it in my mouth. I haven't heard him for a while it's such a good feeling to realize that this monster isn't around me, maybe he needs to finally get off me it would be very nice. How did you know that you asked me this Chkirtang I'm all the risk that I just put in my mouth I asked him yes, why haven't you left yet? I ask how did you know repeat it again the monster in my hoarsely scary voice I started to rotate my head to understand where it is and then shouted to the whole room yes that I found out that I should have known. How did you know that my nickname is Chkirtan, the monster asked me, to be honest, for a moment I was even confused because it seemed to me that he was some kind of strange. I ask you how do you know the nickname that they called me in my demon world monster I even froze for a moment and then answered him it's your name you just said it to me yourself. But I was not very surprised that he forgot that he told me his name, I thought about something completely different. Is there really a demon world on earth, I decided to ask him directly because he knew the answer to this question for sure. Chertang clearly did not expect me to ask him this but he treated me like a stupid boy who already just wanted to get rid of him but when I asked him this question he even thought. The demon world is located between the divine world and the human world, the human world was the last to be formed, they needed a center between the two worlds if you think about it, the human world should not have been created at all. I couldn't believe my ears and in order to settle the ideological war between the demonic and the holy world they actually created the human world it's so strange. Yes boy you are right I didn't even think you could be that smart at your age but you are a very smart guy. But can I trust a creature called Chkirtan, I asked the demon and he even fell silent for a moment. Lately I hear him too often and his silence is a certain sign for me. Chkirtan is my name you understood everything correctly the demon told me but I answered him yes shut up you already finally I didn't ask you I asked if I can trust you and you dodged the answer again. I looked at my shadow and realized that the demon had now moved into my shadow after all, her eyes were burning, it was strange, but I was already gradually even starting to get used to such strange things. And then I just started laughing and crying at the same time I like to do it sometimes it helped me a lot to calm down in situations where I don't understand how to react and the demon asked me why are you laughing what's funny you heard.
yes, it just became funny for a while you know demon I know how your name is translated and I know what it means in the Wajang language. Your name means to cry while you sing, which is why I'm asking if you can be trusted because it's strange to trust a demon with that nickname. Maybe you are some kind of crazy, because such nicknames are not given just like that, probably you deserved it for some act of yours. No, I'm not crazy answered the demon how do you even know how my nickname is translated I didn't tell anyone about it and you people don't know our language how are you at your age we know such things. Confess vividly how do you know how my exactly your language is translated maybe you still know about my abilities I ask you how you knew that my ability is to use the sounds that I make to control people's emotions, driving them crazy until they cry. At that moment I was even a little tired while he listened to him and he himself told me everything about his abilities if he is so talkative I don't think that this is such secret information. I don't know and I'm going to sleep so please shut up Chkurtin don't bother me sleeping after all, if I don't rest, tomorrow I won't have any strength at all. No I don't let you sleep brat wake up so why are you ignoring me how are you able to ignore me? He thinks that he will fall asleep and this will help him get rid of me, but I will overtake him even in a dream, I will not let him exist in peace, because he himself called me. Chertang created a magical black hole from wax in the dark energy near my bed, he clearly did not want me to get enough sleep. What an interesting kid I've never met anyone like him he's too smart for his age he's smart and curious it's so weird that I think about it why do I even think about this kid why do I feel so attached to him. Just wait a little one day I will take control of your body boy and then you will definitely not be able to get rid of me. And when I capture your body, then I promise you we will return to the demon world and you will never return to this world again, you can forget about it forever. Demons usually live for about 5000 years, this is a fact that I read in books that are in my father's room. Chkurtin lived only 1000 years, which means that in human terms, this is the same as living 10 human years out of 50. Based on my calculations and calculation, I can assume that you are now only 10 years old and then it turns out we are both 10 years old you should be my friend you know. Suddenly, the nanny jumped out into the street and shouted master master you are back we have been waiting for you for so long thank god you have returned home I heard her voice and thought that probably my dad had already returned. Your father has returned, the sir said the nanny I was delighted as if it were my second birthday and I immediately ran to my father I wanted to see him as soon as possible. While I was not here, what will not happen asked the father, taking off his hat. I've been gone for quite a long time and you're a magician to do some business or misbehave isn't that why I'm asking if there was anything that happened during my absence. If I tell him about the demon that possessed me then he will know that I went to his basement it will definitely not end in anything good dad will scold me because I promised him to behave. There's nothing wrong, it's okay, dad, I've been good, honest. Well, if everything is as you are telling me now, then you are a huge fellow. Well done, you learned Dae Myung's language during my absence. I started laughing and pretending everything was okay I said yes sure I learned it dad I figured it out for hours every day he heard it and patted me on the head. Well then your dad has some urgent business in the office right now you can go babysitter it's alright you did a great job and thank you so much for looking after the boy while I was away. I began to smile awkwardly and pretend that everything was in order but I myself understood that big problems await me if dad sees that I was rummaging through his office. Yes, I answered him. I, too, will probably go and rest a little, because a lot has happened lately and I'm tired. Chertang woke up again and started talking to me he said no it was just the person you call your father usually so taciturn I told him shut up you demon don't talk to me in front of your father. Dad went to his office and wanted to open the door plan to go about his business there and check if everything is in order. He walked up to the painting in which was the same passage that I recently found before my father entered there he said there is no more time I can't wait any longer I need to do it now. He opened the curtain with his hand and looked down sullenly, he did not immediately go there, but stood still for a while before going down. Then he nevertheless went down the stairs and opened the door to the secret room in which he kept all his artifacts. In the room, he did not suspect anything strange, he just went into it and went to a certain rack with various artifacts. He approached the cabinet in which there were various scrolls and multicolored objects, he frantically searched for something in the lockers. Dad took out some kind of scroll and laid it out, he did not carefully look at this scroll. Agree with my prediction after I return to the imperial family and finish my studies on the golden plaque I will be in danger. Up to this point, I need to remember everything and write it down, no matter what happens to me, absolutely no one cares but I still have to do it, because if not me, 
then no one will do it. He seemed to be transported to another world where the sky was not at all like ours, magical fragments of clouds flew around, as if moving ten times faster than ours on earth. Sangwon your highness you called me ask for a favor and the person answered him yes of course called you come on quickly come to me. Is it true yes you let Jinan go home asked the gentleman who was sitting in the bath at that moment the girl standing next to him poured tea into his cup the servant answered yes he said he forgot an important document I let him leave. Tell me my faithful servant what are you going to do in the event that information is leaked. Don't worry your majesty everything will be all right because it hasn't even been 10 days since he started his research. Many scientists have left to work on it, there is still a lot of work to be done because you can't study it all so quickly. Well, the master obviously didn't like the fact that his servant let the translator go and he said no, it won't work like that. You absolutely don't understand what you are talking about. As soon as he comes back and finishes his research, I want you to do something and it will have to be done for sure. I don't see any other options. You will have to find all his family and all who are connected with it after he finishes his research and take kill everyone and I do not want any of his family members to be left alive. It was already night outside and all the people were in their houses on the street it was quiet and calm. My father packed a bag and tied it in a knot I don't know what he put in that bag and didn't tell me there he was very secretive after he came back from his trip. Dad hung the bag on his shoulder, straightened his hat and was about to leave he needed to continue to go about his business and return to the business that my cousin uncle found for him. Dad looked at me with the nanny before leaving and said goodbye to us before leaving. I have to tell you something maybe this time I'll be back much later than usual maybe I'll spend a whole month researching my new job. You know they say that no news is good news so even if you don't get any news from me don't worry so you know everything is fine. Son, listen to the nanny, be good to me. It may not be for a month. So I hope that you will behave properly and will not create problems for the nanny. I promised my father that I would behave well and after that he patted my head, took his bag and went on his way, my nanny, and I watched him go. Father saw that not far from our house there were soldiers in yellow clothes with weapons on their belts, as if they were waiting for him. The soldiers stood on both sides, they held on to their weapons and wanted something from my father, he did not say anything, he just watched them. The leader of these soldiers came up to my father and said Mr. Ko Jun Hong I understand that it was you who said the soldier and my father simply nodded his head in agreement. We came to escort you my name is Yuk Du from Jini Wei after that the soldier bowed to my father and I realized that these people are not as simple as it seems at first glance. I knew that these people belonged to government troops. But why are they now accompanying my father to this question, I could not answer. It scared me a little. Well then let's hit the road said the main soldiers and all the warriors have already turned around to accompany my father. But dad didn't want to leave so soon. He asked the soldiers to stop for a while and then turned to me and was about to say something. Jean young son I know that I tell you this almost always but nevertheless I want to repeat again you should never neglect your studies remember always make time for it. I gave you nine books on Han Shu a year ago you must have read them all now repeat the third volume for sure repeat the third volume it will be the most important for you. I didn't quite understand that moment. Why did the Pope ask me to repeat the third volume, but most likely it was necessary and for some reason he nevertheless asked me to do this, but I was very surprised at that moment. Yes, son, it's the third volume and remember when I get back, I'll give you an exam, so prepare better the soldiers couldn't wait any longer they said we've got to go let's go faster. Yes I'm going already said my father and after that they set off on the road warrior said your son is a genius you knew about it already at that age I read Han Shu it's worth a lot. I was very interested in what my father had in mind when he asked me to read the third volume I finished reading one two years ago why read the third volume again why did he even say that? Did he really forget that I had already read all these books but it's not like my father he always had a good memory he must have had something else in mind. Days passed one after another, I didn't even have time to follow them they seemed to fly like comets through the starry sky. The weather changed every day sometimes it was very hot and sometimes cool evenings came I read the third volume and I was not at all up to it. On one of these days, a heavy downpour began, the rain was so strong that it seemed to me that it would flood all the streets and I would have to go boating around the city. I watched this rain I watched it fill the streets with water I fell in love with watching the rain. The nanny usually doesn't let me sit outside when it's raining because I can get sick but I didn't tell her that I'm sitting outside right now I just took an umbrella with me and decided to watch the rain. 
A whole month has passed from my father there is no news, he said that if there is no news, then we should not worry about this, but how can I be calm because I don't know what is happening to him. Don't it's time to go to the house I've been sitting outside for too long I really can get sick but when I was about to go into the house I heard some strange sounds as if someone was approaching our house. I saw two people in hoods approaching our house I couldn't see their faces but they looked like the soldiers who accompanied my father when he left. I turned my head and was so happy when I saw these people I couldn't even believe my eyes they came so suddenly in the middle of the rain. But my dad was not there and I began to worry because it was all so strange. Are the wars still guarding our house why are they doing this why are they here if my dad is not here? This is so strange. Why would these soldiers stand here because they must have a lot of their own things to do, but for some reason they also guard our house, and in addition, in the rain. I called the demon who was still somewhere inside me I thought that I need to get advice from him Chirten you asked me here and he said that you want what happened. Chikertang, I wanted to ask you. Even sooner, to consult, why do you think the soldiers are standing around our house, as if they are watching us, the demon asked me, are you talking about those soldiers? It seems they came when your father came for a long time I feel their energy near our house these soldiers haunt me. So you knew all this time that they were here and didn't tell me anything how could you do this to me and the demon answered but I didn't think it could be strange I don't know what customs you have here. Exactly my dad before he left and asked me to read the third volume probably he said it for a reason he definitely knew something because he could not forget that I had already studied this book. I need to urgently read the third volume, my father left it for me. He wanted to tell me something, I'm sure of it, but he couldn't. This book should be somewhere here in his library, but how can I find it here, he has so many books, I don't remember where exactly this book was located. Perhaps my father left me some kind of sign he wanted to warn me about something I want this book to be around here somewhere I remember it. Hooray, I found a shelf on which all the books are located. I want somewhere here there should be the third volume that my dad told me about. But for some reason there is no third house here, where can it be? I need to think that dad asked me to read it for a reason. He must have hidden it somewhere. The rain began to subside little by little and I had been in the library for quite some time. I couldn't find this third volume, where could it go? I must have counted the books wrong, that's why I can't find it. Suddenly, Chkurtin woke up in my head and started telling me that he didn't want to do this now. And I answered him. Sorry, but I'm busy now, I'm not up to you. Chkurtin said I have been watching you all this time and I want to say that you have not looked in one more place the book you are looking for may be there. Did I seem to have looked at absolutely everything that was here and you think that I missed some place? Guy try to go down to the basement maybe that book you're looking for is located right there maybe your father hid it there on purpose. The vault here could be that book because my father might have left me some message through this book for a reason he said that there would be no news he definitely knows something. When I think that a demon has stuck to me here, it becomes uncomfortable, this thought still haunts me, but nevertheless, I gradually begin to get used to it. Chertang let's go with me to see if there is a book that I'm looking for or dad still left it somewhere in the library but I just didn't see it. I held a flashlight in my hand and went down and down the stairs, then I still went into my father's secret office. I walked around the room and did not notice anything suspicious but then at some point I went to my father's table. And I saw that there was a book on the table. Perhaps this was the very book that I was looking for. I approached her closer and illuminated the lamps on the table in order to examine it. In the end, it turned out to be exactly the book that I was looking for. Chir Tan you were right all this time the book really was here but how did you guess I'm so glad I found it. Chkirtan woke up again in my head said look at the inscriptions that are on the table maybe they will somehow help you because your father probably left them here for a reason. These words are in the correct order. Dad wrote one word on each sheet and laid them out next to a friend. He probably wanted to say something to me with this. They, what can they mean, I still cannot understand. Probably, we need to work a little on unraveling these words. Churton said please look in the third volume because your father could have left some clue there you are right as always right well why did he write something on a folded page. Now let's see what he had in mind he wrote everything here backwards. Father definitely didn't want anyone but me to solve this riddle. He really came up with a whole message for me. It's tedious to take a better look at all these symbols and words, maybe I'll be able to understand something if I look at them from the other side. 
the order is violated, the right and left hieroglyphs are moved if you read backwards, then you might get a sentence of mother's animal powers three times, which can all mean. Chkurtin again told me the guy yes what are you doing I don't have time to follow the course of your thoughts explain to me what is happening here you solved this riddle. I think I figured out what dad meant. It looks like I solved this riddle. The demon asked. Well, then what comes out? I'm also interested. Tell me if you understand. I'll tell you but later if you want to know then you'll have to wait for the demon but it didn't suit him and he started talking why don't you want to tell me now I helped you find answers and you hide the solution of the riddle from me. The statues I passed by maybe they will also give me an answer to one of the questions that I had at the time of solving this riddle. There are three statues of these animals on aloe, among them the mother, who was born in the sea, loved turtles very much. And my main hand is the left hand we know about it only me and dad no one else knows about it it is stronger than the right hand. So by turning this statue of a turtle to the left three times, maybe I'll get something I need to try. The statue turns very hard. I don't have enough strength. To do this, you need to try to push it harder. Hey guy what are you doing there so long fussing what are you doing stop I'm scared for you. Hooray I finally managed to spin this statue yes. I just needed to apply a little more force. When I did this, another secret room began to open in front of me, I couldn't even think that my father made another secret room in his secret office, absolutely no one knew about him why did my father want me to get here so much. My god, how strange it all is, dad knew something for sure and wanted to share it with me, but I'm even afraid to imagine what he prepared for me there. There were records of my father's research hanging on the wall, they were right on the wall. I looked at them closely, but I didn't immediately understand anything. And there were documents on the table. I don't think they were lying here just like that. Dad definitely wanted me to read them. I went closer to the table, took these documents and began to read them. It was written that this letter from my dad addressed to me was a mistake to come to the Imperial Palace they think I need a long time to decipher the gold plates. But fortunately, I figured them out very quickly and it wasn't difficult for me to do it, but I haven't told them anything yet. I don't want to give them the contents of the gold plates because it can be too dangerous if this knowledge falls into the wrong hands and I definitely don't trust these people. On the next leaves, which in these documents were drawn strange hieroglyphs and letters, I have never seen such before, this is some ancient scripture. Chkurtin woke up at that moment. He was also very interested in unraveling all these secrets that my father left me. I wonder what will happen next. Chkurtin said, you know, these symbols remind me very much of ancient runes. I heard such a word for the first time and did not understand what he was talking about. And what are runes, can you tell me about them in more detail, and the demon nevertheless decided to tell me everything he knows about them, you know the guy, these magic formulas are called runes. And what is magic I asked and the demon answered me well, how would you say so listen carefully magic uses mana to change the air and nature. Divide the sea into yours or strike lightning in one place, all this can be done thanks to magic. If you wield magical power and understand how it works, then you will be able to counter your opponents, you will be able to burn the enemy with a lightning bolt. Magic is very different you can even fly on a broom if you want to master this skill. The world of the foot is an amazing world in which there are completely different creatures, even those that you never thought of. At that moment, a mouse ran into the room, she was looking for food and I noticed her, she saw me and got scared and then ran back to her mink. Turn into a rat or use the spirits of nature as a servant, you can do almost anything you want, but for this you need to go through a long way of learning the magic of mastering its techniques and spells. Chkurtin tell me, do you know how to use magic, I asked the demon and he thought for a while and then asked me again what magic are you talking about. Listen demon and could you teach me this magic, I would be very grateful to you, I beg you, it would really help me a lot because you just told me so much about it. While the demon and I are dealing with what magic is, in another place the horse ran at a gallop, raising blue dust with its hooves. The rider urged his horse to run even faster he was in a hurry somewhere and wanted to get to his destination as quickly as possible. The rider shouted at his horse to run faster, he shouted at the top of his voice we need to save Jin Yong. According to the text, besides where we live, there are many other places and worlds, and the person who wrote this came from another world as a wanderer who travels between cities. This person traveled between worlds. This man was a real magician named Jenna. He tried to return to his world, but he couldn't do it. The heavens envied his abilities. 
Therefore, Mach could not return and end his life in this, he found a cave and decided to stay in it. However, this wizard was not as simple as it might seem at first glance, he was a man who saw many different worlds. He thought that it was because of the cursed item that he accidentally got here, perhaps because of this item he could not return to his world. The item that the wizard received in our world had tremendous power, this power was enough to change Jen's magic that he created to return. It was a demonic thing that possessed violent power and few people knew about this power. Jean Young my son I know that you are my smart child and you will guess how to find manuscripts I am writing this message for you. I ask you to study all the research of your father, which I will leave you, this will help you gain new knowledge. But I ask you to always handle such things with the utmost care. Always be careful because these objects with which you will have to work have incredible power. So in my father's notes, the encryption of all these runes is written. Now I understand what he wanted to tell me when he left all these inscriptions on his board, however. If I knew all this before I already touched the object after which you moved in. Everything could be completely different for me. In any case, there used to be a magician here who came for a friend from another world now I will know about it but he did not bring magic here the demon answered pray he could not return because of me you understand that he is a fool. Exactly those letters that were drawn on my father's work and research, they can somehow help me. These knowns are clearly here for a reason, the demon began to laugh and said not knowns but runes. Come on, Chkirtan, what are you doing with these runes? You said that last time you transferred the speeches of people from my head to yours. Listen, can you help me you can put these runes into my head like this human tongue did the demon was very pleased with my request said yes what are you talking about why should I do this? Of course I can do it and it won't be too difficult for me but why did I answer him if you can do it so just do it ask me why I need it. You and I are two joint minds can't we know together that this is one if you help me do this I will be very grateful to you. Yes I can do it but still it won't be so easy do you think tell the demon. Chir Ten you told me once that you were a great warrior can't you really handle such an easy task I don't think it will be a problem for you. Yes how dare you doubt my abilities of course I can do it well if you want me I will transfer the runes to your head but be prepared. Your head will hurt a lot after I do this, you will feel like it is about to explode, but you yourself asked me to do this. My eyes began to glow, emit a bright light, as if they were two spotlights. When the demon finished transferring his knowledge about these runes to me, I felt that my head hurts a lot, but he did not deceive me when he said that there would be a feeling that my head would explode. You thought learning languages would be easy boy I just needed time to fully understand all this. Chkurtan you probably won't believe me but I just read all the runes that are written here it was not difficult for me the demon was surprised at this moment and said yes how do you do it. I read these runes and strange sensations began to appear in my body. Maybe it was magic. Maybe I just came up with it, but I understand what all these runes mean. I carefully read them in order not to miss anything. It was a very interesting language, the language of runes. It was the language of magic. This kid is really so smart I have never met such children because he is only 10 years old he is not an ordinary child that's for sure. Great I did well with reading all these runes now I feel much better so good that I don't have to study all this for years. I remembered all the words that were on the wall. Now I can calmly read a sentence from these runes. But the whole problem was that when I started reading in the language of runes, what I read scared me very much and the Jia man understood this. He asked me what it was. Now you are afraid you yourself wanted to know the language of runes now you know it, but were you ready for this? It was starting to get dark outside, it was getting closer to night I hadn't been out for a long time and I was in a secret room all the time. Chkirtan I have already read quite a lot of my father's works on magic, I understand what they all write about. You can help me learn a little magic. Okay, I can't do it on my own, I really need your help. Chirtang said to me well, I said earlier that it is impossible to learn magic just like that because in Makai it is forbidden by law such rules. But you can teach me the most common basic magic that is available to any beginner. And the most important thing is that we are not in Makai now. The demon thought for a while and did not know what to say to me. After all, I caught him by surprise and all his excuses now sounded very stupid. Okay I'll teach you the demon said to me and I happily started jumping around the room and shouting thank you Chirtan. Guy stop rejoicing it's not that simple do you think you should understand that I'm new to human magic because it's very different from demonic. 
Hey you're a great warrior right then what can you do if you don't know the most ordinary human magic, she's the simplest me more powerful than all people combined and how dare you talk to me like that boy. I said that you will teach me and you must do it you promised the demon thought for a while and answered me. I will teach you one magic that I use in Macau you can definitely master it. This magic is called the finger of fantasy I asked him how it is like the finger of fantasy and he said yes fantasy is magic that is controlled by the finger like a martial art using the finger I don't know however, the strength must be different and then that of people if you have a lot of magic then you can do incredible things. For example thanks to this magic, you can cut space in half without much effort, but you need to beware of this spell because it has very dangerous properties why did I ask the demon? If you use it incorrectly, very serious problems can begin. You must always be very careful when using this spell. If you make a mistake, then not only mana, but also life energy will leave your fingertip. You must be aware of this. If you make a serious mistake then there is a chance that you may even die so I only use it once a day if possible. Jean Young was shouting someone's voice oh no someone is looking for me I must have been here too long I need to get out of here. I recognize this voice for sure. This is the voice of my great uncle Uncle Chan, I need to quickly run there to meet Danya. He definitely shouldn't notice me here. And I don't want him to wait here for me for so long. When I ran out of the room, I stepped on one of the tiles that were on the floor, after which the doors began to close. Hooray I managed to do it I closed the doors to the secret room now for sure no one will be able to go there this is what I need. I took my flashlight and left the room I did not want anyone to notice me and therefore I moved very quietly. I quietly opened the door and climbed the stairs as quietly as possible so that no one could hear me I didn't want my uncle and nanny to find me here. Jean Young are you where are we already tired of looking for you are you okay please answer us. At some point, my uncle and the nanny stopped and saw me, they were very excited at that moment, as if something had happened. Uncle Chan I greet you you were looking for me and here I come. You are very excited please tell me something happened maybe something happened to my father why were you looking for me so much and what are you doing here? Boy listen to me, said the uncle, after that he sat down opposite me, took both hands on my shoulders and said your father has problems. There was a disaster that no one could have predicted your dad was arrested in the imperial palace. What does it mean that they handed over how it happened why they didn't tell me anything right away, I don't understand. Listen man, I myself know absolutely nothing but he falsely deciphered the contents of the record that he needed to decipher, they say the emperor is angry because of this act. Well, how is it? Why did dad do this? Did he really not want to get money for his work, he knew that he would be arrested if he did so. Boy I understand your concerns but anyway we can't stay here it's very dangerous let's get out of here quickly at least you have to escape before they find us. Uncle you tell me that I should run away from my house I'm not ready for this. Guy I understand that this is all very spontaneous and I understand your worries about this, but you must be aware that if you offend the imperial family, then all relatives will be killed, I cannot allow this. Maybe the emperor's warriors will want to kill you they will come to catch you so you need to run away from here and the sooner the better. So let's not waste time let's quickly run to the back doors, because soldiers may already be standing near the main entrance. Let's get out of this side. I think we'll be able to escape, and it's not likely that they will guard us here. If there are warriors here, we won't be able to get through. Therefore, we must first look through the gap. When the uncle opened the door, they immediately hit him from the other side with a spear, the spear cut his hand and left a cut there, blood gushed from his hand. Soldiers were already waiting for us and they did not want to let us go they knew that we would want to escape, so they guarded us near the gate. I saw drops of blood that fell from the blade of the spear and I was a little scared, they really are so cruel. Uncle Chan, you're all right, they hurt you, you must be in a lot of pain right now, I ran up to my uncle to look at his wound. He said it was okay, just scratched his shoulder, that's all. Nothing out of the ordinary happened. Soldiers came to us and they were very angry the main soldier said you thought that you would be able to escape so easily. I guarantee you that I will not let you leave this house you will stay here and do what we tell you whether you want it or not. You saw how your uncle begins to writhe in pain because his shoulder was bleeding and I did not know how to help him. He held on to his shoulder and it started to bleed more and more I saw how he tried to pretend that everything was in order but he was not at all okay. Yes, how dare you hit my uncle with your spear, you are completely crazy who gave you the right to touch other people. I could not allow these people to offend people close to me, 
especially if they had not offended the nanny and my uncle even more, I would never forgive myself for this. I decided to use the magic that I recently learned. It was not in vain that I still spent a temporary study of this spell, now is the time to try using it. Hey haven't you forgotten my warning you gotta do it right otherwise you'll just die. Jinan wanted to use his magic spell to inflict damage on the soldiers, but suddenly he got further to his feet after being shot in the shoulder. The uncle looked at the soldiers who had just stabbed him with a spear and told them that he was the candidate for the cabinet of ministers of Yong Sang Hyun. He warned these stupid soldiers that they would not get away with this act just like that, they would be punished for daring to injure the candidate of the cabinet of ministers. The soldiers were frightened when they heard who they were dealing with, their commander immediately began to change in front of the master. The commander began to run towards the master in order to find out what state his hand was in now, but his uncle did not allow him to come close to him. He asked these soldiers what they were doing here and why the hell they allowed themselves to attack civilians in the territory of this house. Uncle ordered these soldiers to immediately leave the territory of this house and disappear from here. But the commander answered him that it was impossible to do this, they could not get out of here. After all, they have a great walk here, this information surprised uncle very much. The commander realized that he needed to explain what was happening here and he declared that he was the head of the guard Yuk Du Gam he was following the order of the imperial family and explained that they had no right to retreat from this territory until the moment the imperial family gave an order. Uncle immediately began to protect the rights of this house and the rights of the child who was next to him. He said that there was no one in this house except for the child and the nanny. He tried to explain that there were no people in this house who needed to be guarded or taken away from here, but the commander did not agree with him. He said that they have an order from the emperor that he must carry out no matter what and no one can resist this. The commander said that they need to arrest this child because he is the son of a criminal. The uncle tried to protect the child and explain to these soldiers that Jinan is not even eight years old yet and he cannot harm the empire in any way. The uncle continued to defend the boy on the soldiers no longer listened to him Jinan understood at that moment that things were getting worse and worse. The commander began to come closer and closer and constantly said the same phrase that he was only following the order of the imperial family and had no right to object to him. The commander warned uncle and then that if he resists and prevents the soldiers from taking the child, then they will have to arrest him along with Jinan. The boy decided to finally resolve this conflict and told the soldiers that he would obediently follow them and that his uncle should not worry about it. Uncle did not expect such a turn of events, still believed that the child could not be given to these soldiers. The boy tried to calm his uncle and explain to him that the people from the government would not do anything to the child. They must protect civilians. Commander, when hear the words of the child, he felt unwell because he understood that the child was still too naive. The boy decided to continue his speech and said that if he was arrested by these soldiers then he should know the reason why he was taken away and ask for the right to meet his father. The commander thought about the words of this boy. He had to make a decision. He put his hand on his heart and replied that his father was imprisoned under his supervision and he knows where his father is. The commander promised that he would allow the boy to meet his father and Jinan agreed to go along with these people. The uncle knelt down on one knee and tried to explain to the boy that his decision was very dangerous because anything could happen to him in this prison. Jinan tried to explain to his uncle that despite his young age, he understands all the risks and do not worry because he is the first son in this house. He told his uncle that his father didn't want to see him run away so don't worry about it. The commander will explain the situation to my uncle and said that the guilt of the criminal has not yet been proven. Therefore, it is better for this child to be in prison than on the run. Uncle had to come to terms with this decision because he could not influence anything at the moment and the most correct decision in his case was to agree. The soldiers took the boy under arrest and began to take the maid out of the house and the uncle looked at him for the last time. The uncle began to cry because he felt ashamed in front of his brother for not being able to save his son from the soldiers. It was already dark outside and the huge moon rolled out from behind the mountain ranges. The prison building was empty around this building there was not a single person. Rats ran through the cellars and prison cells of Jingyi Wei prison in this together it was very strong and stank of wet animal fur. The commander led the boy through the underground catacombs of this prison and told him a terrible story that happened to people here, he explained that half of the people entering here die. The commander did not want to scare the boy but he had to tell him what this place was he said that even if someone survives in this prison, almost everyone loses their minds because this place is known as a living hell. 
In one of the prison cells there was a man he stretched his hand through the iron bars and they tried to grab the boy by the shoulder but he didn't succeed the man looked like a living dead he asked for help but the boy just walked on don't pay attention to him. The commander stopped near one of the doors, then he took out the keys and put them in the lock, turned to the right side several times and opened the door. The commander opened the door wider and said that the father of this boy was in this particular cell. Jin Young burst into tears when he heard that his father was in this cell, he could not even believe that he would be able to meet him again. The boy immediately ran into the prison cell and ran to look for his father, he shouted his name in order to understand where he was. But when he saw him, he felt terrible because he did not even expect that his father could look like that. The soldiers tied his hands to iron handcuffs and hung him on the wall like that for a very long time. He heard a familiar voice, immediately woke up, he saw his son in front of him and could not believe that it really turned out to everyone that he was still in a dream. Jinan burst into tears when he saw that his father woke up. He tried to explain to his dad that this was all real at that moment the commander saw that the child wanted to get closer to his father and we forbade him to do this because those were the rules of this prison. The father was not happy when he saw his son here, he did not understand what was happening. He asked the boy why he is now here, because he does not belong here. The boy couldn't stop his crying as tears streamed down his cheeks he asked his father why did these soldiers call him a criminal. Jin Young wanted to know if his father was a criminal or just a slander he was brought here unfair. The father began to try to break out of the chain, shouted at the commander to take the boy to a normal place. He wanted a child. He screamed even louder when he looked at this commander, he didn't understand why his son was brought here, because he was not to blame for anything. The commander had to behave calmly, so he tried to explain that he couldn't do anything about it, this is a common order, and as you know, if you offend the imperial family, then all relatives can be killed. He began to cry, he could no longer hold back his tears because the situation was getting out of control, he was powerless and could not help his child in any way. Jin Young also continues to cry and even more I saw that his father was very tormented by the situation that had developed. The commander lowered his head down, closed his eyes and said that the meeting time was up, now they had to leave here. The commander took the boy by the shoulder and said that it was time for them to leave here, the father continued to scream and try to stop them, but it was already too late. Tears rolled down his slits and fell to the floor, he could not stop them. All that falls to him is just to watch how his son walks with the commander. He couldn't stop them, all he could do was keep screaming he asked his son to sit because he was still a child, he screamed that he was ready to die just to let his son live. But suddenly he heard someone's voice from his cell, this voice asked him if I sit your son will you obediently do your job as you were ordered to do it. You weren't surprised when he saw what was coming out of the darkness whose silhouette it was, he immediately realized that it was the emperor, but how did he get there and how long did he stay there, no one knew. The emperor came out of the darkness and showed his face he was ready to tell this man to carry out his orders. The father then began to cry even harder. He asked the emperor to have mercy on his son, he persuaded him not to touch the child. The emperor carefully listened to all the requests of this man and then said that he had several orders that this man must fulfill if he promises not to deceive and how to conduct research. Then he will leave his son alive at that moment silence began in the prison cell. The father did not know whether it was possible to trust the emperor and asked how true his words were, the emperor answered him that this man himself had already tried to deceive him once, so the emperor had to use his son as insurance. And at the end he added that his son's David will be exiled to a distant land until the study continues. It was a special place that few people knew about it was an island to which various criminals were exiled this island was called Jiangandong. This island was isolated, it was in Shandong province, they say that the prisoners who got here cannot escape. The boy sailed on the ship closer and closer to the island and saw that people began to approach the edge of the cliff and look at the newcomer. The guards tried to calm the boy, they told him that you should not be afraid of these criminals here, because they are all cute and harmless guys. Jinan did not believe the words of these corrupt guards and personally saw that terrible bandits were standing in front of him. Cutthroats even a demon appeared over his shoulder and said that he did not want to go to this place because this place was even worse than hell. The commander put a seal on the document that the messenger brought him. He was very unhappy with the decision of the imperial family. It was written in the document that the child should be sent to the island to the most terrible prisoners, he really did not like this decision, he did not understand what the emperor wanted to achieve with such an act. 
The soldier saw this document and decided to ask his commander how humane this act is, because sending a child to such a place is very dangerous, he will be like a toy for criminals. The commander did not want to continue to communicate with the soldier on this topic and ordered the soldiers to put the child in the same room with old man Gu Yang. The soldiers led the child to a large cave, which was under the strict guard of the imperial guard. Jinan walked along with the soldiers through a dark cave, trying to see the place he was being led to. Passing through the cave, he saw a lot of prisoners here who were busy with various jobs, some of them were transporting stones and someone was mining these stones. The criminals looked at the boy who was brought to this island and discussed the fact that the world has gone crazy since children are already being sent here. One of the criminals said that it would be interesting to have fun with this child. The commander brought the child to the stage and waited for all the other criminals to gather on the square, the criminals discussed the appearance of the child and created a loud rumble. The commander shouted loudly and ordered everything to be silenced by the criminal so that he could explain what was happening here. The prisoners fell silent after the chief shouted at them and attentively looked at him in order to listen to what he wants to tell them. The chief looked at the prisoners again, then turned his head to the child and walked closer to him. He took him by the collar of his shirt and lifted him up with one hand after which he said I want to introduce you to a new prisoner on our island. His name is Jinan and this boy inserted a criminal at the age of eight. The chief will explain that this guy is still very young, so he will do small assignments until he is ten years old and ask the prisoners to take good care of him. One huge man with a big thick beard came out of the crowd of people and said that it was imperative to make sure that this boy did not need anything. Another prisoner in a pink shirt approached the hairy big man and pushed him with his elbow, after which he asked him what he would do if this little kid was scared and started crying. The thug started laughing and said that if this child would cry then he would just strip him naked. Jinan heard the voice of demons in his head and the demon told him that there is not a single adequate person in this place, all the people present here are disgusting people and this hairy thug is a particularly dangerous and unpleasant person. The boy kept thinking that his father was now in a prison cell and hoped that everything would be fine with him. Night fell and the boy lay in the prison cell right on the floor and tried to sleep, the rest of the prisoners had already fallen asleep a long time ago, but he could not sleep. He rubbed his eyes with his fist and rose from the floor he sat down and leaned against the wall. Jinan did not understand what was happening, he looked around him and then remembered that he lost consciousness as soon as he entered the dungeon. He sat and looked at the iron bars that did not allow him to leave this place. The demon could not calm down, he constantly complains that they were sent to this terrible place, he did not understand what he was doing here and the boy had to calm him down. Jinan tried to explain to the demon inside him that he needed to endure just a few days and think about how to proceed. One of the prisoners entered the cell and shouted that it was time for this kid to wake up. There was a very long queue for the boys of Tver in the kitchen where they were supposed to fill him up with food and feed him this month because of the prisoners who held a bowl in their hands, the cook poured some soup into these bowls. He was led to this place by a hairy thug, he held the boy by the shoulder and led him right to the front of the line. The big man pushed aside the people who were waiting in line to eat the soup, but the goon was not interested in it, he threw them back and put Jinan in their place. Then he leaned right up to the boy's face and said that he needed to eat very well so that later he could work normally, because if he could not work, then someone else would have to do his job and the rest of the prisoners might get angry because of this. Jin Young will turn his head back and look at the people who were with him in line. There were dissatisfied prisoners who did not like being pushed back and instead of them they were put in line by this new child who arrived at their prison. The thug yelled at these prisoners when he saw that they were looking at him with an unhappy look he asked them to be patient for today because this child has just arrived and he is very hungry. Jin Young took the big man's hand and said that everything is fine, you don't have to worry about him. But the thug looked at the child with a displeased look. Then he leaned closer to his face and told him that he was not doing this out of mercy, so it's better for the guy to keep quiet. After a couple of minutes, he still got his portion of soup, I stepped aside the boy decided to carefully consider this soup and he became very ill when he smelled this terrible food. There were different ingredients in this super, but mostly it was scraps of food that they didn't eat up soldiers were swimming their bones and unfinished meat and everything that should have been thrown away after they ate it was in this soup. Thug I approached the boy grabbed him by the shoulder and pushed him aside he told him that when someone gets a portion he should step aside so as not to disturb others. Jinan looked at this soup and was afraid to touch it, because it seemed to him that he would die if he tasted it, because it looked disgusting. 
The thug looked at the expression on the face that was the boy and told him that if he is not hungry and does not want to eat, then let him not throw this soup away. But it's better to give it to him, and he will share with someone more hungry. The thug told the boy that there are many prisoners who even lack such food. Therefore, it would be better for him not to complain, after all, taste this soup. They sat right on the ground not far from the kitchen and ate this soup. The thug began to ask questions to the boy he said that if he was brought here, then his family most likely committed high treason and angered the emperor very much. Jinan did not want to talk to this man and tell him what happened, he just sat and was silent. He held a bowl of soup in his hand and could not dare to taste it. He never ate such food and did not want to try it at all, or began to get angry that he ended up in such a place and had to eat such garbage. Jin Young thought that their family was not particularly rich, but nevertheless they never tried such garbage as this soup. He held a plate in his hand and tried to figure out what to do in order to eat normally, but he never found a solution. The brute continued to greedily eat his food he had been here for years so this soup did not seem disgusting to him it was the only food he had eaten for many years. Jin Young still decided to try this food, he took his hand a spoon and decided that he would eat it. The guy decided to show that he is not a weakling and he told the thug that after all, not a rag can eat this soup and is able to cope with such difficulties. He took the contents of the soup into his spoon and made a promise to himself that he would endure this food until he got out of here. The guy began to put this food into his mouth and swallowed it with his eyes closed, he did not want to feel the taste of this food, but he understood that he needed to get enough so that he could continue to work in order to survive. He tried to eat as much soup as possible and put it in his stomach so that he would not want to eat for a long time. The prisoner made a bandage on his head worked with stones and constantly bring him tools. The prisoners who constantly walked around in a red long shirt watched the child all the time and every time he wanted to have a little rest, they shouted at him and forced him to work. The boy performed a lot of tasks in a day at some point he just fell to the ground a powerless prisoner with a bald head sat and watched this, he saw that the boy was pretending to be dead. But Jinan ran around different locations and tried to help everyone. He collected all the hammers that were in the warehouse and took offense at all legs to bring these hammers to the builders. Despite the fact that he was in a hurry, he tried to bring hammers as quickly as possible. Anyway, one of the prisoners hit him on the head for walking very slowly. He had calluses and scratches on his hands from which blood flowed. At the end of the day, he still made it to his prison cell and despite the fact that he slept on the floor, this did not prevent him from falling asleep very quickly. When the boy had already begun to gradually get used to the local rules of the regimes, the demon began to help him learn magic. He taught the guy to collect energy inside himself and then redirect it into magical flows, thanks to which you can use the spell. The demon was very happy when the boy succeeded, he told him that a few more trainings and the boy would soon be able to master magic. After that, he would destroy this terrible place once and for all. The demon explains to him that in order to collect magical energy in oneself, one needs very strong natural energy. And in this place, the energy was disgusting and could not help in any way. The days on this island were very long, despite the fact that there was a lot of work and every day resembled the previous one. Jinan trained his magical energy every night and tried to improve his aura so that he could finally master magic. He usually got out in the morning and slept for several hours, after which he was always awakened and, along with the rest of the prisoners, was taken to their workplaces. At that time, while the guy was sleeping, one prisoner climbed into his prison cell with his hands wrapped in bandages. He grabbed the boy right by the leg and began to. Jinan opened his eyes and was surprised that someone was trying to drag him away, he did not understand what was happening here. Behind the boy, a very old man in a black hoodie with his hands wrapped in this man had long gray hair and silently sat over the body of the boy. It was very dark in the prison cells, but from the darkness came sounds. Grandfather took the boy's leg with his hands and began to feel him and examine his leg. The boy did not understand what old man Gu Yang was doing, he lay and did not move pretending to be still sleeping on the old man continued to feel the boy's leg. At some point, the boy suddenly jumped up from the floor and looked at this man. He asked his grandfather what was happening. The old man did not answer anything and just silently otherwise continue to stretch the boy's leg. He was very busy with this process. The old man seemed to be trying to find some point on the guy's leg. Jinan suddenly felt that his heaviness after a hard day's work disappeared somewhere due to the fact that his grandfather needed his leg, he began to feel much better. 
The boy asked Demon Sertan if he knew about the fact that Grandfather stretches his legs when the boy is sleeping and the demon replied that he knew about it. Sertan said that he did not say anything to the boy because he thought it was very useful for him and did not see the point in telling the boy about it. He thought that with his character, he would obviously refuse such a service, because it would seem to him that it was very strange that the old man massaged him all night. Jin Young thanked his grandfather for giving him a massage, the old man carefully looked into the guy's eyes and asked how he felt. Jin Young replied that he was fine he was a bit tired but still feeling good he asked his grandfather if it was hard for him to massage every night. Old man asked the guy how he got here he was very worried why such a young boy ended up in such a terrible place. Jinin was surprised by such a question of the old man, he had not yet talked to anyone on this subject, because he did not trust anyone in this prison, but when he looked at his grandfather, he realized that he could be told. The guy told grandpa that he was always exiled by order of the imperial family. The old man scratched his long gray beard and thought about the boy's words. He said that they don't exile to the island just like that, most likely your parents insulted the imperial family, and in this case, all relatives are killed on the son of a criminal, they simply sent here. The guy sat and looked at how grandfather himself guesses about the reason why the child was sent here. Grandpa seemed to see through his whole story. All of a sudden, the old man said that all this time while the guy was here he was looking after him and noticed that he really was an incredible child, however. The old man also noticed that a very strange energy was flowing inside his body and decided to ask the boy if he had ever studied martial arts. Jinan, surprised, looked at the old man and asked him about what martial arts. He is now saying he says it was not clear to him what exactly the old man wants to know. The boy began to suspect that this old man sees in him not just a strange energy. He noticed the seal of Heltan in him and most likely the old man guesses that a demon lives inside him but it would be very strange to tell him about Sertan. Jinan answered the old man that he had never studied martial arts in his life, but he didn't know anything about them because he had never practiced them, the old man lowered his head and sighed in disbelief. The guy felt that the old man did not trust his words and decided to correct the situation a little. He told that he studied the breathing technique that his father showed him. The old man scratched his beard with his hand and looked at the boy very carefully. He asked him about the breathing technique that he told. Was it really the same breathing technique with the stomach? Jinan replied that this was the technique he was talking about, but it's not that the martial art is just a cleansing of the mind and body. The old man listened attentively to what the boy told him and asked him not to overdo it in learning the breathing technique, because you can lose consciousness. He sat and carefully examined the boy, then he nevertheless told him that from now on he would use the child as an assistant, his body was very weak and if he was not strengthened, he would not be able to live even a year in this prison. Jinan didn't mind training with the old man and learning martial arts, he thought the soldiers wouldn't let them train, they would be against it. The old man reassured the guy and said that he himself would talk with the soldiers about this, he did not need to worry about it. Jinan looked at the old man and did not know how to thank him because this man very sincerely wanted to help him and did not demand anything in return. But then the old man nevertheless said that he was doing all this only because he would need the boy in the future, and if he helped him now, then later the boy would have to help the old man. Near one of the big mountains that were on this island in the morning, people were quarrying stone from the rock. The sounds of hammers were heard throughout the territory, the prisoners worked here from the very morning, but far from everyone, the old man was sitting on a wooden high chair, a guy was standing next to him. The old man saw that at the time of work his hammer began to be out of order, he took it in his hands and began to examine it. He noticed that the chisel was completely worn out and it was necessary to repair it. He asked the boy to bring new chisels from the warehouse, the guy immediately answered his grandfather that he would do it as quickly as possible. Jin Young immediately went to the side of the warehouse in order to find a chisel for grandfather's hammer. He passed by the rest of the prisoners who were transporting stones and doing their work. Demon Sertan started talking to the boy again. He said that after the guy became a subordinate of old man Gu Yang, no one touches them anymore and does not offend in this prison, grandfather's influence was very strong in this place. Demon was insanely interested in what this old man does. Why does everyone in prison treat him with such respect? Jinan had already arrived at the warehouse and wanted to go into it, but suddenly he heard a rude male voice that called him to him, he turned his head and saw in front of him. 
the same healthy hairy man who helped him that day when he first arrived at the prison, this bully said hello to the child. Jin Young also greeted this man, he said hello and Uncle Sin at that moment the thug looked at the guy carefully and told him I see that things have been going very well for you lately. He said that he had heard rumors about the fact that the old man Gu Yang took him as his assistant, this thug was sincerely glad that he was helping such an important person. But immediately after he praised the guy, he leaned closer to him, practically touching his nose with his nose and said that if it were not for this old man, then this guy would have gone to him. Uncle Sin saw that the guy was not afraid of him and after that he began to laugh out loud he advised him to show his best side so that the old man could be proud of him. And then he told the guy that the old man who is now helping him is the scariest and most terrible person he has ever seen. Jinan asked the thug is it possible to ask one question and the thug looked at him in surprise and was ready to listen. Jin Young asked Gu Yang's great-grandfather to tell him he wanted to know what kind of person he is. Uncle Xing crossed his large arms over his chest, looked at the guy in surprise and asked him don't you know what kind of person this old man is then I'll tell you now boy. There was one story connected with him when new doju arrives, the predecessor who ran the prison before him always warns him. If you want to leave Chongdong Island as soon as possible, you must be very careful and listen to all my advice. The whole problem lies in the fact that the position of doju itself is high, but the status of this position is greatly reduced if he occupies it on the island of Chang'andong. The reason why it is necessary to please old man Gu Yang is nothing but influence on people this old man has this skill perfectly. All his life he has been making statues, he carves them out of stone, and then these statues are sent to the imperial palace, where all people admire them. However, there was one idiot who did not want to respect the old man, he tried to suppress him by force and reduce his authority. This fool did not understand the importance of the business that the old man was engaged in, he believed that grandfather was just knocking. Until I should give him indulgence for this, he does not deserve respect. When Gu Yang found out that they did not want to respect him and they were trying to suppress his authority, he stopped working, he did not work for ten days as a sign of a strike, and three statues were missing in the imperial palace. A few days later, Doju received a letter stating that he remained on this island for another three years for not following the order given to him by the imperial family. He had to bring the statue on time. This news made the chief very angry and he ordered the guards to seize the old man and bring him directly to Doju. The soldiers came for the old man directly to his cell, they were armed and ready to act seriously, but to their great regret, they did not know what Yang Gu was capable of. Despite the fact that the old man was very calm and friendly all this time, when the guards came for him, he showed his true face and I would not advise anyone to see him in this state again. Gu Yang killed all the guards who came for him, he did not leave anyone alive despite the fact that they were armed, this did not help them escape death. The head of the prison could not calm down and send guards to the cell to the old man, but no one came out alive. No matter how many soldiers he sent there, no one could cope with the old man, no matter how armed they were, he still could not defeat one person. Gu Yang possessed incredible speed and knew many techniques of various martial arts and an ordinary soldier imaginary could not do anything against the old man. He was able to repel hundreds of quick blows with just one hand and mercilessly killed everyone who raised weapons at him. In his fists there was a force equivalent to a whole hammer, and if his fist hit the enemy's face, then it was unlikely that he could survive. With one blow, he broke the ribs and bones of young soldiers. No one then could have thought that this calm grandfather had such incredible strength, no one in prison until that moment had even thought about confronting the old man. After hitting Gu Yang, the soldier flew off so hard into the wall that there are still dents left and every prisoner and guard can see this hole in the wall and remember what the old man is capable of. An ordinary come on soldier was not able to cope with his strength, they were too stupid and weak to resist him even an army of soldiers would hardly be able to cope with this old man. He moved quickly and imperceptibly his movements were quiet his blows were clear and strong. At some point in the battle, the old man saw the spear of one of the soldiers lying on the ground. He decided to take it and at that moment absolutely everyone was frightened. After all, when he killed half the guards with his bare hands, it already frightened everyone, but when the old man took his hands as I was a guard, it became creepy. The prisoners watched all this action from the side and everyone was wondering what else Gu Yang is capable of. The soldiers on the island were already starting to run out, he killed half of all the guards in a couple of hours, 
the head of the prison began to regret that I decided to contact this old man. No matter how many hawks he sent into battle, none of them could even strike. Gu Yang then said if you want to catch me, you will have to send sex soldiers to this island and lose at least half, in which case Doju himself will become a criminal of the empire. He pointed his spear at him and pointed the tip of me straight at Doju. Gu Yang broke the spear that he picked up from the ground with one hand, he did not damage anyone with this weapon. I still don't understand Doju. Doju laughed when he heard the old man's threat and he couldn't hold back his family he laughed and looked directly into his eyes, this act made Gu Yang very angry. And he threw the tip of the spear right at the soldiers but he didn't want to kill anyone only to scare the tip as I landed right in the ground not far from them. The old man replied that it would be even better if they did not want to surrender, he would have to destroy them. But the old man was a very smart man he had lived for a very long time and knew how to restrain his anger he offered the warden the last time to make a choice he would become a prisoner or get a promotion what he wanted more asked Jin and old man Gu Yang. The boss was very frightened, realized that he had crossed all the boundaries and now he could no longer resist because he came face to face with the old man. In the end, he bowed his head and begged for forgiveness he admitted his mistake and begged to be left alive this was the only way he could calm Gu Yang's anger. After three years, this boss was still able to leave the island, he was given permission to do so and all thanks to the fact that the old man did not hold a grudge against him. Jinan asked the thug and really, after this incident, no one else contacted the old man and became completely afraid after that day. Unless old man Gu Yang himself wants to leave Stone Mountain, no one can force him to have the right to choose and act as he wants. Jinan collected the materials that his grandfather asked him to bring. He ran to the rocks in order to bring tools, but at some point he stopped near a yellow tree and decided to examine it. Jin Young stood and held the box of tools in his hands while the grandfather continued to carve the stone the boy was very bored and he watched the falling leaves. He remembered about his father and began to think about how he feels there. His dad is everything okay with him. Old man Gu saw in the face of the boy what he was thinking about and decided to ask the guy are you worried about your father? I see that this does not give you peace. Your face is full of anxiety, I see that the thought of your father disturbs your mind and does not allow you to live in peace. Jinan was very surprised when the old man found out what he was thinking. Could this man be able to read minds? The guy put his head down and took a deep breath and then said that he was really worried about his father. It's been a long time since you last saw each other, probably your father is still in that dungeon and suffering. He was worried that he was doing well in this prison. Unlike his father, who is now tied to the wall and suffers every day. The old man leaned closer to the guy looked into his eyes and said listen if the thought of your father hurts you, then your distance from each other will only increase, you will not be able to do anything and you will only kill yourself with these thoughts. Forget about him until you can take care of yourself don't worry about your father, he can't help you in any way, and you can't help him in any way. If you think about him then thoughts will just burn your soul from the inside. Jinan smiled when he heard the old man's light and told him that he would try not to think about his father anymore. The guy was sent back to the warehouse, he must have materials from there. He went to the warehouse doors and grabbed the handle to open the door. All this time he was thinking about the words of the old man. He was trying to understand whether he could not think about his father or whether these thoughts would devour his soul from the inside. The demon decided to interfere with his thoughts because these thoughts were already starting to bother him he said that the boy really needs to stop thinking about his father because these thoughts can break him and they would never be able to meet. The demon tried to explain to him that it was impossible to forget about his father forever, anyway, he would have to think about him from time to time, but at this moment he should still be distracted. Jinan smiled and told the demon that this was a very good idea, he would need to take a break for a while and get down to business. The boy was so busy with his thoughts that he didn't even notice that there was no one around him, he was all alone in the warehouse, there weren't even soldiers who usually guard the warehouse. He needed to change the hammer and bring a new hammer for grandfather, but he did not understand where all the guards had gone. The guy could not, without the permission of the guard, take a hammer and leave here of his own free will, they definitely had to report to the guard. The demon said that in this warehouse there is a trace of a man and suggested that the guy follow this trail. The boy walked through the labyrinths of the warehouse right behind the demon, he did not understand where the demon was leading him. At some point, when the guy came up to a large closet in which the tools were stored, he saw two people. They called the boy to come closer to them, 
he was a hairy thug and a security guard who always worked in the warehouse. Jinan asked them what they were doing here but these people were in no hurry to answer the child they asked him to come even closer to them. Jin Young said that he is very busy and it is time for him to leave here, he cannot stay long because his grandfather is waiting for him. The thug got very angry when the guy did not want to follow his order, he called the boy a cheeky bastard and accused him of constantly looking down on him just because the old man was looking after him. But Jin Young was very surprised when he heard what Uncle Shing said to him because he never disrespected him. Uncle Sin came closer to him and pointed his finger at him he said that if the guy listened to him carefully and showed respect, he would immediately approach him and not come up with excuses. Jinan immediately objected to this thug, he did not agree with him and said that he does everything as he sees fit. Sin became even more angry when the child wanted to object to him, he took his shirt collar and lifted it up with one hand. The boy began to scream very loudly and call for help. But the warehouse was well hidden in the rock and no one heard his cries. Sin mocked the guy and continued to hold him with one hand in the air. He asked the boy what you would do if I did not let you go. The guard watched all this from the side and laughed happily, he asked the thug to take off his pants from the boy. But Sin was minding his own business and I didn't care about that guard he told him to wait because of this child he could get a whole bottle of alcohol. Jin Young couldn't believe they could do such terrible things for one bottle of alcohol. The guard continued to smile and watch what was happening from the side. Jinan understood that he could not resist such a strong man, because this thug could kill him with one blow of his fist. And at that moment, he realized that it was not necessary to use physical force, because in this way he would definitely lose. He decided to try to use his magic and push his opponent aside. The demon saw that the guy was going to use magic and decided to warn him because it could be very dangerous. But Jinan understood that he simply had no other choice and magic was the only way to get out of this situation. Jinan asked the demon to notify him when he had enough energy to use his magic strike. The boy once again warned the thug that if he did not let the boy go now, then he would very much regret it. But the words of the child only made the big man laugh and he began to laugh very loudly, but he could not even imagine what this guy was capable of. Jinan collected a huge amount of energy and a red fire orb appeared in his hands. He held this sphere in his palms and it got bigger and bigger every second. The demon warned the boy that this was the perfect time to use a magic spell. Jinan once again looked at the fiery sphere that was in his hands and still decided that he should make a blow. He touched his fingers to the thug's chest and all the fire that was in his hands burned the body of his opponent. Xing started screaming in pain as the fiery flames began to burn his body. The fire got right inside his body and enveloped his heart in flames and he experienced unbearable pain. Sin could not resist this pain, it burned him from the inside, his body began to burn, it seemed to him that he had already died, but instead he continued to experience hellish pain. The boy's magic power was enough for this big strong man to fall to the ground and end up in pain. The guard was not ready for such a turn of events, he did not expect that this boy would be able to fight back such a strong man. The guard began to try to help the big man, the boy at that moment tried to crawl back as far as possible. He looked at his fingers and saw smoke coming from behind his hand. Night had already fallen, the boy was sitting in his prison cell and still continued to look at his hand, he could not forget this feeling. Old man Gu Yan came up to the picture and sat right in front of the boy. He watched the whole evening as the guy looks at his hand and decided to talk to him about the fact that it's probably very difficult for him now. But Jin Young said that he was fine and had no problems. Gu Yang was worried about this guy's behavior and he started scratching his beard. He extended his hand to him with an open palm and said that he had an offer. Jin Young asked about what offer Grandpa wants to talk to him now. Gu Yang suggested that the guy start studying martial arts so that at any moment he could learn to defend himself. Jin Young was surprised when his grandfather talked to him about martial arts he asked who would teach him. Gu Yang offered himself as a teacher. He said that he had been doing this for many years and could transfer his knowledge to the boy. They sat opposite each other and it was very quiet in their prison cell. Jin Young asked his grandfather if he could really teach him martial arts. Gu Yang replied that it would be a difficult path, but he would be able to pass on his knowledge to him. Jin Young was very surprised when he found out that his grandfather knows martial arts. The old man told him that he had been studying martial arts for a very long time. In the end, they say that this old man beat up several dozen soldiers, for sure he is a real master Murim. Gu Yang said that the guy didn't need to treat him like his mentor, it wasn't necessary. 
He just wanted to pass on his knowledge of martial arts to him, he just wanted the boy to learn it. Jinin carefully looked at his grandfather. He put his hand on his chest and asked him why grandpa wants to do this as he worried that the boy will not be able to protect himself. It seemed to him a very strange proposal to his grandfather, because he does a lot of things so that the guy feels good here and now he wants to selflessly teach him martial arts. He could not understand why the grandfather wanted to do this, because it was not like a simple act of kindness to the child, there was a completely different purpose behind his offer. He wanted to know why it was necessary for the Sterikov to teach him martial arts and to pass on to him all the knowledge that he possessed. The old man saw the thoughts of this guy, he knew what he was thinking and answered him that the boy was right, he had a request to him. In exchange for martial arts training, he wanted to ask the guy to do something for him. However, the request that the old man wanted to ask him was very complicated. To begin with, the boy would have to get off this island, he wants to do it very difficult, but he needed to do it. Jin Young was very surprised when he heard that he would have to escape from Jiangandong Island. Yang Gu said that if a boy wants to learn a real martial art, he can show him all the basic techniques that need to be mastered. He did not demand that the guy answer him this offer right now he allowed him to think because this is a path that will be very difficult to pass. He gave five years to think for these five years the boy had to think over the old man's proposal and give him an answer. Jin Young was very surprised when his grandfather told him that he gives him five years to think, because it seemed to him that it was a lot. The old man explained to the guy that during this time he will have time to grow up and after so many years his body and mind will finally mature to study martial arts, then he will be able to make a truly correct decision. And the most important problem was that the boy's body was not yet ready to study martial arts, in order to start studying them, it was necessary to have a strong, ready body. Jin Young still couldn't understand the words my grandfather used to say his brain would be overloaded with this information. Gu Yang began to comb his long grey beard and look at the floor very thoughtfully, then he said that five years might not be enough to make a decision. Jinan thought that if he really learned martial arts, it would be much easier for him to survive here in this prison. Learning martial arts will help him become much stronger then he can save his father it will be much easier to do. The guy put his hands on his knees and clenched them into fists. He replied that he would think over the words of his grandfather and follow his path if necessary. The days on this island were very long, every day you had to do the same thing and the moments of loneliness just sitting on a stone alone with your thoughts were very precious in this place. The boy often thought about what would happen to him in the future, he constantly thought about his father and tried to drive away bad thoughts. He heard someone trying to pass him very quietly and drew attention to him. It was Uncle Sin after the last meetings, this big man is very much afraid of this child and tries once again not to catch his eye, but this time the boy noticed him and did not allow him to pass by. He heard the boy call him and turned his head and they still noticed him, he looked at the boy and asked what happened. Jinan got up from the stone and approached his uncle's son, he extended his hand forward to show him that he did not intend to continue the conflict. The boy just wanted to know from this person if he was all right after their last meeting, if his body was restored after using his magic spell on him. Sin was very surprised that the boy was not offended by him and so kindly continued to communicate with him, he replied that everything was fine with him. His body has already recovered and he can move normally. He tried to convince the boy that everything was all right with him, because he was a very big strong man and it was worth nothing for him to survive such a slight injury. Jin Young laughed and smiled sweetly. He was very glad that everything was fine with this person. Sin folded his fingers on both hands and rolled his eyes. Sin decided to take advantage of the fact that this child began to talk to him and wanted to ask him something. He felt very embarrassed at that moment. Nevertheless, he said that he had a very important matter that he almost forgot about. In fact, he just really wanted to leave here because he was terribly afraid of this child. As soon as he said goodbye to the boy, he immediately began to run as fast as he could to get away from here as far as possible. Jinan did not understand what was wrong with this man, as if he had just seen a ghost and why he ran away so quickly. At that moment, a demon appeared and explained to the boy that this is absolutely normal behavior, because the boy beat him very badly yesterday. The demon admitted that he felt very pleased and calm when the boy was able to fight back this thug. The demon said that if he could turn back time, he would burn this hairy man and reduce him to ashes. Jinan did not agree with the demon because it would be very stupid. Despite the fact that this hairy man was acting very strange, he still did not deserve to die. 
However, yesterday's magic attack was very cool and thanks to this hairy man, he was able to test his magic in action. Now he will no longer suffer because of this hairy man the boy stood and talked with the demon at that moment an old man approached him and heard the conversation and the boy. The old man came up very unexpectedly and asked if the boy was ready to start work. Jin Young turned his head to his grandfather and replied that he had been ready for a long time and had been waiting for him at this place for several hours. The old man took out a hammer from his and handed it to the boy Jin and gladly took this hammer. In his hands were objects for working with stone, these were objects that helped grandfather make statues from stones. Gu Yang said that from today the boy will learn to break rocks. Jin Young was very surprised when his grandfather offered him such a job, he did not expect him to break rocks at such a young age. The old man explained to the boy that he had already shown many times how to work with a stone, and the boy watched this process for a long time and now he is able to start doing this himself. The guy asked his grandfather if this work with stones is a martial art or is it just an additional burden on him. The old man replied to the boy that working with a stone is directly related to the study of martial arts. The old man wanted to teach the guy a technique called Chodan. The old man said that in ancient times he belonged to one of the organizations, this organization was located in the Tan Tian Spiritual Temple and they had a book called Chodan. It was an incredible technique that brought incredible benefits in order to lay the foundation for any martial arts. Thanks to this technique, it was possible to perfectly create your own qi energy flows inside the body. This technique is also very effective in terms of physical fitness, it helps to strengthen the body and achieve incredible results thanks to which you can break a real stone with one hand. Crushing is a preparatory stage for me. But the main thing in this process of studying is not to rush, and then the result will come so quickly that you won't even expect it. The main secret of you technique is that breathing and hammer blows are in the same rhythm, and when a person is able to find this balance, he will be able to use the Chodan technique. The old man handed the hammer to the boy and said that from now on he can start learning this technique. In the mountain valley on the edge of this island, hammer blows were heard. Jin Young was perfecting his blows with his hammer. He was trying to synchronize them with his heart, but so far he was not good at it. The old man was watching the process from the side. The boy struck blow after blow with his hammer and tried to hone his skills as quickly as possible. From the day his grandfather decided to train this young boy in martial arts, every day he crushed stones and maintained respiratory balance. He tried to follow all the instructions of his grandfather and sometimes he didn't succeed and he hit himself on the fingers with a hammer. Night fell the moon hung high in the sky and illuminated the earth like a large lantern. Every night his grandfather took him to the rocks and made him hang on a stone wall for several hours. He made him hang on rocks to make his fingers strong. The old man made him hang on a stone wall every night. He wanted the boy's spirit and body to be strengthened. Just hanging on the wall was very hard, but it was much easier due to the ability to control internal energy and have a special power of fantasy thanks to these abilities, the boy was able to spend several hours on the wall. His hands and fingers became stronger every day, he strengthened his body and this test was given to him very hard because he was still very small and weak. It's been a whole year since grandpa started teaching him martial arts and he learned to hang on the wall holding his body on only two fingers of one hand. His body became stronger every day, he could hang on the ledge of the wall, clinging to it with two fingers and pulling himself up several hundred times without putting much effort into this process. He began to strengthen his legs with the new exercise and his speed and strength became much stronger. He easily jumped from rock to rock, his hair has already grown very much this year and his body has become stronger. Gu Yang carefully watched the guy training when he finally jumped off the cliff, the old man asked if he had finished training or would he continue. Jin Young replied to his grandfather that he was already finishing his workout, he did all the exercises that he had to do for today. Gu Yang carefully looked at the boy. He tried to examine him from head to toe. He tried to understand if his body has improved enough over the past year with the transition to another stage of development of martial arts, there are no problems. This is a very good result. It really was very unexpected that the guy has no problems in order to undergo training without any serious consequences. Grandfather lowered his head down and thought about something, his face in them became very sad, as if he remembered something very terrible. Jinan carefully watched Grandfather and he became interested in what happened to him. Although to understand why Grandfather was upset, 
The old man raised his head and told the boy that everything was fine with him. Nothing happened. He just thought about how to learn quickly this guy was his only student and he showed incredible results. Gu Yang looked at the guy and, on his condition, allowed him to go to rest because he was very exhausted and tired during training. Jinan bowed to his master and told him that he would go about his business. He was very grateful to him for the training and was now ready to go to rest. The old man followed the boy with his eyes, he waited for him to leave, he did not take his eyes off him. All this time, he was thinking that five years seemed not enough for the boy to learn martial arts, but he is growing very fast, even faster than you could imagine. The old man laughed and thought that even in ten years he would have time to transfer all his knowledge of martial arts and teach him everything that he knows interesting such a feeling arises and the installation of which is an outstanding student. The old man began to worry the thought that because of him the boy develops much longer than he could, at certain points it interferes with his development. He remembered that he was teaching this boy everything he knew in order to fulfill his cherished desire. Gu Yang was already sure that it was my boy who was able to fulfill his last wish, which he dreams of all his life, which is why he spends so much time and effort on his training. Jin Young was preparing for one of his training sessions after he worked with his grandfather he would leave and start practicing martial arts on his own. He possessed magical abilities that he did not tell anyone about and when he was alone with himself he learned to combine his magic along with martial arts. Jinan used one of his techniques that he recently learned, this technique was to direct all of his magical chakra into two fingers on his hand and then his fingers turned into a sharp dangerous weapon thanks to which he could cut stones in half. His speed was much faster than a year ago, he could already move so fast that an ordinary soldier would not have time to catch up with him even if he gave all his best, and the guy learned to balance and control himself, he did not tell anyone about his abilities. Jinan, although he has already become much stronger than he was a year ago, still, many trainings were still very difficult for him and he spent a lot of energy on doing everything with high quality. The demon was next to the boys all this time, he watched each of his workouts, and after the last exercise in which he cut several mountain stones with two fingers, the demon told him that his fingers were gradually starting to get used to such loads. The demon controlled the magical power that was seething inside the boy. He tried to analyze how his chakras develop and how strong his magical energy flow becomes. The demon informed the boy that he had already grown very much in his magical abilities and now he could go beyond the second circle and go to the third magic circle, he would be able to study a new seal. Jinan could not remember the word circle for some reason it always seemed strange to him it was an incomprehensible word for him he always called these circles magic seals on the demon why did you like to call them circles? Jinan suggested that the demon from now on call them seals so it would be much easier and communicate with each other, the demon did not like this idea, but he could not object because his body belonged to a boy. Jinan decided to have a serious talk with the demon and discuss with him the name of all the spells. Although once and for all fix their names so that it would be easier for them to communicate during the battle. He suggested that light magic be called a sunbeam so it would be easier during the battle to tell each other the right spell, flight magic could be called levitation. Jinan was waiting for approval from the demon, because he needed to make sure that not only he liked his idea, because in this case they would not be able to efficiently manage magic teams. But the demon did not like the fact that all these names sounded very simple, he wanted to complicate these names so much that no one understood what they were talking about. Jinan saw that the demon was dissatisfied with his idea, but nevertheless he remained in his opinion and did not want to change anything he offered to train internal energy along with the demons. Jinan had to choose the right boulder to meditate on but there were a lot of them and he was starting to defocus between all those rocks. Having passed near all these stones, he saw one that suited him the most, it was a bylan with a very smooth surface, he decided that he would not find the best option and would meditate on this one. The boy climbed this stone and sat in the lotus position, joined his hands and put them on his knees after that he closed his eyes and began to meditate collecting energy in himself. In order to move into the correct state, he needed to adjust his breathing. He had to combine his breathing with the beating of his heart, and only then would he be able to dive into the world of magical energy. When he managed to feel the correct breathing, he gradually began to plunge into the magical world and feel how chakras and magical flows flow through his body, his hair flew up and levitated. After a couple of minutes, he was still able to rise into the air and take off, his breathing was even and unshakable, he was all in the process of meditation. The medallion helped him feel magical energy, 
thanks to him he could communicate with his demon and saturate his body with magical flows. Jinan meditated and tried to accumulate magical energy in himself, but suddenly his energy turned black. He did not understand what was happening to him, this energy began to absorb him and he felt all of it was washed from dark energy. He realized that he just needed to calm down and in order to stop the outburst of this black energy, he needed to stop the chi energy in his body. When he stopped the chi energy inside his body, the black energy disappeared and an explosion occurred around him and smoke appeared. The demon did not understand what happened and decided to ask the boy what it had just been but the guy could not answer him so immediately. Jinan confessed to the demon that a huge amount of energy had just appeared in his case. He asked Sertan if he knew what had just happened. Sertan explained that the power of the magic stone and the energies of the seal are mixed together and in connection with this there is a huge gap in energy. Jinan was very surprised when he heard about the fact that prints together with the stone are connected and forces, and the demon was very surprised that the boy did not know this. Sertan said that the energies of the magic stone and the magic seal have been mixing their energies for a very long time and it has accumulated a lot, so there was an explosion. Jinan was very angry that the demons didn't tell him this before because he knew about it all this time, but it seemed obvious to the demon. The boy concluded that the speed of his development increased so quickly only because he had a magic stone with him all the time. Sertan said what is it and everything is obvious because the stone gives him magical abilities and explained to the guy that he is not a genius. Jinan was upset because all this time he thought that he had talent, but now when he found out that his rapid growth is due to the fact that the magic stone gives him energy, he felt offended. The magic stone, the energy of the seal, together found synergy among themselves and all the time filled the boy with the energy that his body lacked. The demon told the guy that when I didn't come here, he was sure that the fourth magic circle would be the limit of this boy's ability, but everything turned out to be much better than he thought. Jinan actually had good potential and could develop his magical abilities much further than the fourth magic circle. Jin Young began to look at his hand from different angles and he wanted to feel the energy that was passing through his veins. He clenched his fist and decided that from now on he would work even harder to see how far he could go. New leaves were starting to bloom on the tree branch, which meant that the weather was getting warmer on the island. Jinan meditated on stones with his master Gu Yang for two years. Every day they honed their skills and improved their qi energy. Gu Yang constantly I think that the boy is developing very fast they have been studying martial arts for only two years but this boy's ability has reached the master with 30 years of practice. The old man taught this guy almost everything he knew. He himself wondered if it was worth teaching this guy the last volume of Tian Tan. The whole problem with this book was that it was never supposed to get into the outside world and ordinary people would not have the right to use it. And the very last house was always to be kept in the strictest confidence and only be shown to the elite. But the old man at one time studied the last volume and he knew everything about what was told there, he was worried about the question should he share this knowledge with the boy is he really a cheater who can learn this knowledge. Gu Yang decided that it would be right to teach the boy this knowledge. After all, he has outstanding abilities and who, if not he, should possess this knowledge. Jinan walked up to the old man I stopped right in front of him he asked grandpa how long had he been waiting for him. Gu Yang replied that everything is fine and waited as long as necessary, he praised the boy for the fact that his profound energy is growing at an incredibly fast rate. Jin Young replied that it was all thanks to his grandfather and the workouts he showed him. The old man carefully looked at the boy and he thought about something as if I were gathering my thoughts in order to tell him one very important news. After a few seconds, he nevertheless decided to tell the boy that he was going to pass on to him all the knowledge that was in the last volume of Tian Tan. Gu Yang I will explain to the guy that among all this volume is the most basic because it explains all the truths of the great martial arts. Thanks to the knowledge that is in the third volume of Tian Tan, he will be able to throw out inner strength from the depths of his soul into the outside world, moving it at will to where he needs it. The old man raised his hand up and tried to collect all the boy's attention on what he would say now. And he explained that this knowledge allows you to control the energy of qi. Gu Yang said that in the future he will definitely teach the boy this knowledge, but he needs to grow up a little more in order to study the last volume of Tian Tan. After that, the old man closed his eyes again and continued to meditate while sitting on a stone, the boy looked at him carefully and said that he would study this knowledge with pleasure. It was already dark outside, it was evening, the boy was sitting on a stone, 
drawing strange hieroglyphs in the sand with a stick. He sat on this stone for a very long time, he tried to draw all the hieroglyphs that he knew, and therefore spent a lot of time on it. At some point, Jinan took a very deep breath and froze as if he was upset because he forgot how one of the hieroglyphs is drawn. Sertan noticed that something was wrong with the boy, he did not understand what it was and therefore decided to ask why he was so upset. Jinan told the demon that he was drawing ancient scripts that his father studied at the request of the imperial palace, the boy remembers all the hieroglyphs from this script. He told the demon that he began to understand the meaning of all these words. Previously, they seemed to him unrelated, as if they had no contact, but now the boy began to catch the meaning of these words. One of these hieroglyphs was actually a spell and an unusual simple spell, a real martial arts spell. Jinan said that he still did not know the exact name of this spell, but he tried to translate these symbols into human language and realized that literally but it translates as absorbing the energy of heaven and earth and controlling the soul circuit did not understand anything. This spell must be very strong, because if it is able to absorb the forces of heaven and earth, then this spell has destructive abilities in it. This is the magic of controlling your soul, it is very dangerous and usually such spells belong to dark magic. Jin and Well, what does he tell about the rest of the videos that he managed to translate and he said that the second plate says that the received magical power can be released if you learn how to use it. Demon Sertan was very interested in what the spell was because he understood that if you use this great demon ability correctly, when you can reach incredible heights. But the boy was worried about completely different thoughts about this spell and did not pay attention to the power and destructive malice that owned this spell. He was more worried that people want to learn this magic and won't let his father quietly walk away from learning this magic people want to wield the power of this demonic spell. Jinan was upset when he realized why his father was still being held in custody, understood that his father just wants to save the world from the catastrophe that can happen if this magic falls into the wrong hands. The demon suggested that the boy learn this spell himself and combine it with his martial arts. He said that there is no more suitable candidate on this planet to learn this magic. But the boy did not agree with Jiamen, because he believed that if you learn this spell, then he himself will become a demon, but Sertan explained to him that everything works very differently. He told the boy that if he has this magic, then most likely you will be able to properly assimilate the power of the magic stone and wash all the magic seal. In addition, he believed that the boy still did not have enough energy to release all this destructive magic. But if the boy agreed to learn this magic, he would later be able to master the unique ability to use lightning strikes. Jinan was interested in the possibility of using lightning strikes but the demon at that moment began to feel embarrassed because he said too much too much should not have told the boy about it but it was too late. Sertan explained to him that no matter how much he wanted to master this magic now, he would not succeed because nothing would come of it with his current abilities, because he was still very weak, his heart would simply burn out and the boy could die because of this. Jinan was upset when he found out that he could not learn this spell, he was already ready to learn it in order to possess the ability of lightning strikes in the future, but now it already seemed pointless to him. Jinan decided to give up on me and decided that he needed to improve his physical spiritual indicators in order to still study it and he had three years to prepare for the study. The demon at that moment stopped understanding the guy. He thought that the boy had completely lost his mind. Jinan continued to study martial arts every day, together with his master, he worked on a sculpture in the morning. Although it helped to collect concentration and hone his skills, Jin Young told the old man about the spell that he had recently learned and the old man thought for a long time what to answer the boy, he again asked if Jin Young was wrong when he said about the technique of heaven and earth. Jinan was absolutely sure that the character he translated literally sounded exactly like that and he saw it with his own eyes. The boy remembered that the demon divided this spell into three parts the first of the parts was the technique of heaven and earth soul control energy absorption it is better to hide the information about energy absorption and soul control and tell grandfather about martial art magic would not be a good idea. Gu Yang understood that the boy was not telling him something but he did not know what exactly and extracting information from him would not be the best idea. 
Gu Yang began to scratch his beard with his hand and wondered what kind of martial art it was, he told the guy that despite his poor training and insufficient knowledge of martial arts, this spell was very good and would be useful in martial arts. The old man thought about the fact that this spell contained great power and it could be very dangerous. He tried to warn the boy that the study of this spell we would lead to bad consequences and if he was serious about studying it, he would need to be very careful. Jinan decided to ask a question that worried him a lot. He wanted to know if he would study the technique that the old man taught him and at the same time study this spell. Will he have problems with this or everything will be fine? The old man replied that the whole reason why Tian Tan is called one of the most important and powerful martial arts techniques is not only that it is not able to teach a person to control his qi energy. This technique harmonizes easily with other martial arts and is the foundation on which other martial arts techniques can be applied, and there is not a single technique better than it. Thanks to her, it was necessary to balance her strength, because even if the source of strength in a person was weak, she still allowed her to collect enough qi energy in her body, which is why she was one of the three great martial arts techniques. Jin Young was very happy when he found out that he could learn several different techniques at the same time and they would not interfere with each other. Gu Yang allowed the boy to learn this heaven and earth technique, it seemed to him a great martial art, and he told the boy that he would need to learn this technique very hard. After that, Gu Yang said goodbye to the boy and said that it was time for him to leave, he had an urgent dialogue with a guy named Doju. Before leaving, the old man asked the boy to make the last adjustments to the sculpture so that it looked excellent. Jinan was ready to spend the whole night improving this statue because he felt a strong surge of strength in himself when he found out that he could learn two techniques because his grandfather gave him permission to do so. He waited patiently for a chance to practice learning a new technique. He wanted that moment to come as quickly as possible. Um, he wanted to drink yang energy during the day when everyone is still sleeping while studying the technique and absorbing yin energy. And if he manages to correctly schedule his day for different workouts, then before going to bed he will have time to practice the Tian Tan martial arts technique, he will be able to create a cycle of two energies in his body that will complement each other. Jinan continued to strike the instrument with a hammer and make a sculpture out of raw stone. He could not quit everything and immediately study new technology he needed to finish so you and business he needed to finish the statue so that the old man could be proud of him, he decided that in three days try to have time to finish this statue. But for this, he would need to do only sculpture for three days and abandon the rest of his affairs. This is the only way he could free himself more time in the future. Jinan heard someone steps behind him, he was surprised because usually no one walks in this part of the island, but now a person has appeared here. This was the same big guy that the guy recently defeated in a duel with one blow of his magic. This man came here to talk to the boy. Jinan told him that today he should have time to finish work on this statue and he needs to work very hard today and there is no time for talking. The big man was very serious, he came here with bad intentions, he saw that the boy was busy and it was only to his advantage. He grabbed a stick, I left with all my strength after that I approached the boy with very quiet steps so that he could not even hear. Jin Young didn't pay attention to the big man and was busy sculpting he wanted to finish it as soon as possible so he didn't even pay attention to the presence of this person. The big man waited for the moment and the boy was completely immersed in the process and after that he swung his stick in order to hit him and Jinan at that moment continued to work on the statue. Previously, this man was the second in command on this island and everyone respected him he had an authority that allowed him to feel calm and confident in this prison. Only the old man Gu Yang was more important than him, but he was not interested in being the most important person on the island, he pursued completely different goals and therefore the big man could behave like the main one among all the prisoners, he was their leader. He was satisfied with the authority that he owned, thanks to this he could eat normally food, unlike the rest of the prisoners. When others were working hard, he could afford to rest and choose the easiest job. But then his sweet life on this island ended because this guy appeared and everything changed dramatically. This boy became the old man's favorite and his authority grew every day and the strength of this boy appeared more and more. The prisoners saw that the boy was getting stronger every day and they began to respect him due to this, the boy's authority grew and all the prisoners began to treat him as the second most important person in this prison. Because of Jinan, the reputation of this man was shaken and they stopped showing respect for him. He became the most ordinary prisoner and he had to work every day just like everyone else. 
He could not accept the fact that from now on no one respects him anymore he did not want to be the third most important person in this prison he believed that two dominant leaders who lead all the rest were enough. He became an opinion leader already at the age of 22, when he was still very young, and already at such a young age he made sure that everyone respected him and listened to his opinion. For ten whole years, he tried to maintain his reputation and did not allow anyone to take his place. He closely watched all the people who surrounded him and crossed any attempts to overthrow him from his position as a leader. There were a lot of people who wanted to take his place, they were all waiting for the right moment to take advantage of him and end this man's leadership in prison. But he succeeded. Let's fight back against whole crowds of prisoners, he fought off with his own hands from everyone who tried to initiate an attack or ruin his reputation. He was ready to make any sacrifices and leave people crippled or even kill in order to keep his place in this prison. He was not ready to give this child all the glory and respect that he had achieved for many years. He was very angry with this boy and believed that he was the most ordinary monster who has amazing abilities that you don't tell anyone about. He had to live in constant fear for two years because the boy would fight him back. He was so strong that the big man did not have the strength to resist him and because of this he constantly lived in fear and hid in the corners like a rat. He did not want to just give his second place to this child and was ready to go to extreme measures again in order to regain his former reputation. He waited for the old man to leave and go about his business so that the child would be left alone, he had been waiting for this moment for a long time and now this guy is sitting right in front of him and suspects absolutely nothing. The only thing that could help Jin Young right now was only the eyes that could have been on the back of his head, but since he did not have them, this was the perfect opportunity to strike. He took his stick in his hand and decided to deliver a crushing blow that could kill Jinan. The guy all this time was engaged in improving and finalizing his statue, trying to make it perfect. Jinan noticed that Uncle Xing had been standing behind him for a very long time and did not make any sounds, it looked very suspicious. He remembered the day when he used his magic for the first time and dealt a strong blow to this man and realized that he must have been very angry with him after this incident and decided to take revenge. Sertan had the very eyes on the back of the boy's head. He saw that this man was going to attack him and warned the guy to dodge right away. He did not have enough reaction speed to completely evade the blow and the stick still managed to damage him in the shoulder. Jinan felt a strong pain in his shoulder and nearly passed out from the pain but still managed to restrain himself. He grabbed his hammer with which he usually worked on the statue and decided to use it as a weapon. The boy decided to hit first and then see where his opponent was when he hit there was no one behind him and he couldn't deal damage but that meant he had time to dodge. Jinan turned his head to the enemy, but there was no one there, his enemy disappeared somewhere. Uncle Xing moved fast enough even though he looked very big and heavy, his movements were still light and agile, the boy should have understood where his opponent was now. All this time he was in the dark because he could not find his enemy, but then he heard that the sounds of steps were heard behind him and realized where Sin was. He turned his head and saw that the enemy was already too close. He needed to lean there from the new one. Jinan no longer had time to jump back or dodge, so he decided to block, he put his hand in front of him and wanted to block the blow with a stick. He even managed to grab a stick and stop it from moving. Xing was very surprised when he saw the quick reaction of this child, he did not understand why the boy had such a speed of movement. Jinan Y stick on himself and the thug lost his balance he started to fall. Jinan decided to take advantage of the fact that his enemy was off balance and wanted to strike him with a counter punch that would allow him to briefly silence his enemy. He didn't hit the hammer right away, instead the boy decided that a headbutt would be enough to knock the man off balance and stun him for a certain amount of time. Blood began to drip from Sin's mouth, the blow that the boy inflicted on him was very strong and the thugs did not expect that his body would not withstand this blow. Xing flew back and hit his head on the ground several times. Jinan landed such a strong blow that the man kicked off the ground several times and rolled to the edge of the ledge from which he could fall. Below were very sharp stones like thorns that could pierce a person. Jinan saw that his blow was very strong and because of this, Sin could fall off the cliff and hit the sharp stones. Sin could not resist and due to inertia, he nevertheless fell off the edge of the cliff and began to fly down. Jinan couldn't let this man die even though he just wanted to kill him so he ran to the edge of the ledge and held out his hand. At the very last second, he still managed to grab the man by the hand and hold him tightly. The boy was holding this big man with one hand, his strength was enough to keep him from falling. 
Jinan told him to hold on tight because if he didn't hold on then he would definitely fall on those sharp rocks and die. Sin looked down and realized that he still did not want to die, he wanted to stay alive at any cost. Sin began to cry like a child and asked to be saved, it was clear from him that he was not ready to die such a death. This man wanted to live a little more. Sertan watched the whole fight and didn't understand why the boy had to save this one coming he just wanted to kill the boy. The demon said that no one will know what happened here and the death of this person will not affect the boy in any way, but Jin Young asked the demon to look at the other side. There, on the other side, there were a lot of people, they watched all this time what was happening now, all these people could then tell the guards that the boy killed this man. He couldn't let these people accuse him of killing whom he plotted me to. Jin Young did not want bad words to start appearing in prison and everyone to think that he was a murderer. The boy began to pull this hairy man up and asked him to hold on tight so that he would not fall. He still managed to pull out the thug and put him on the ground, the big man could not believe that he still remained alive. The boy was very angry with this man, he began to envelop rage, so he warned this thug that if he did this again, then the boy would simply be forced to kill him. Sin cried like a girl, tears flowed down his face and drooling from his nose, snot flowed from his nose, and he said that he would never try to kill this boy again. Jinan was still angry with him, but he had to believe the words of this man. After all, he obviously did not want to kill him and hoped that this big man was still telling the truth. Jinan believed that it was his fault that he was attacked, he behaved carelessly and was attentive enough. He looked at the stick and thought that if it was a real sword then his arm would definitely be cut off with one blow and he would probably already be dead. He relaxed too much, deducted that his abilities had grown and he became much stronger, he completely forgot that this is a prison and here you need to be constantly vigilant, careful because everyone wants to attack you. Jinan asked the demons to constantly be on the lookout and make sure that no one gets too close to him, because if the boy dies then the demon will most likely die too and Sertan rushed about with his request he did not mind watching the safety of the boy I promise his approaching opponents. It was already night time, the clouds were floating in. It was dark on the island in the dark sky. The head of the system stood near the window and watched the clouds float across the sky. His office was illuminated by the moonlight that came through the window the head of the prison stood near the window and held his hands behind his back he heard someone knocking on his door. He allowed the man to enter his office and waited for him to enter. Old man Gu Yang entered the office, he immediately apologized for such a sudden intrusion and bowed to the head of the prison, and the head himself was surprised that the old man decided to come to him so late. Gu Yang silently stood at the door and did not utter a word, his appearance was quite neat, he had time to prepare a little for the meeting, concern could be seen in his eyes. The head of the doju prison decided to ask the old man what was the purpose of his visit. Yang Gu said in a very serious voice that he had a special request to the head of the prison and would like to express it. The prisoners, as always, worked in stone mines and mined stone, some of them transported it on carts, and some with beaters from rocks. At that time, while the prisoners were engaged in carrying and processing stone, the guy sat and all this time carved statues from stone. On this day it was especially hot and so hot that some people began to feel dizzy and they lost consciousness, and today everyone worked without outerwear because it was leaking to your body and a blow if you continued to work in t-shirts. The guard shouted very loudly that it was time for lunch. And after the break, all the prisoners had to return to their jobs again. One of the prisoners called the rest of the workers to go along with him for a break. Precious lunch time could not be wasted. They began to communicate with each other about the fact that they were already very hungry. And it's good that it was finally time for lunch, but the boy sat all this time and continued to work on the statue. He got up from his chair and decided to look at how this statue will look like in the future. He suddenly realized that it had already been six years since that conversation with old man Gu Yan. During this time, a lot of things managed to happen and the guy himself had already grown very much and ceased to be a child, a hairy man approached him and greeted him. Sin asked the guy if he was going to have lunch now or continue to work on this statue again and skip doing it. Jinan smiled and replied that they could go ahead without him and then he would catch up with the guy did not hold a grudge against this person and communicated with him very politely. Sin felt very embarrassed, this is the act that he did, he was still uncomfortable in front of the guy, he wanted to somehow make amends for his guilt, but did not know how. 
Shin bowed to the boy and said that he would go to lunch in these six years, the biggest change happened in his relationship with the hairy Uncle Sin. On the day when he fell on the boy and wanted to kill him, something amazing happened that no one expected. Gu Yang found out that this big man had attempted on his student and met him in a neutral territory that few people knew about in prison there were no guards and old men to do anything with this man the thug understood all the dangerous situations apologized to the old man. He decided not to punish this stupid man and asked him to treat the guy as he would treat his boss, now this child was like a master to him. Gu Yang explained to him that this child could have done a terrible thing and let him die, but he still decided to save him and therefore he deserves the kindness and respect that Xing should repay him. The big man bowed to the old man and replied that he would treat the child as his boss if Gu Yang himself asked for it, and from that moment Uncle Harry became Jinan's assistant. The sun was very bright that day and it was almost impossible to hide from it. The boy raised his head up and covered his eyes with his hand. It was very hot and the sun's rays poked around his body. Old man Gu Yang said that the hotter the sun, the better for him. Yin and Yang is the purest harmony between heaven and earth and the boy had to accept them in the incarnation in which they were. Jinan listened to all the advice of the old man and tried to do as he says and not object to him. The boy remembers his grandfather that it was already six years after their conversation and it was finally necessary to make decisions. He lowered his head down and thought, then he still asked his grandfather is it possible to get out of this prison. He asked how strong he could become if he could still master the martial arts. The old man is not ready for such a question. He needed time to think about what to answer the boy because this is a very difficult question. He told him a story about how he learned the martial arts on his own after being given them by his master and he never tried to compare himself to others because it's wrong. He admitted that his mentor was one of the top ten masters in the world and there were always various legendary rumors about his mentor. He would never have been able to compete with her because he would have simply been killed, but he was sure that he was still not inferior to his mentor in terms of strength. The old man asked the boy if he really wanted to learn martial arts and if he was ready for it. Jinan imagined all ten members of the best martial artists, it was ten heavenly great masters and he dreamed of becoming one of them. The boy understood why he could not compare himself with them. After all, they were great people who devoted their entire lives to the study of martial arts. It was impossible to compare with them, it would sound like a joke if now someone from outside heard the boy's thoughts, they would probably laugh. Over the past five years of training, I don't even understand if he has the right to compare himself with anyone, but he was sure of one thing exactly to his grandfather, the martial arts that he taught him this is definitely not a joke. Jin Young replied that he would study martial arts and fulfill all the requests of his grandfather, no matter how hard they were. Gu Yang told him that he would tell him about all the nuances at night, there was no time to do it now, so I just had to keep working. Night fell they met on the edge of one of the largest mountains that were on this island they stood on top looked at the big forest. The old man was ready to tell this boy the secrets that would happen to him. He told him that he would teach him one of the great techniques called Shinsebekt. Gu Yang decided to demonstrate this technique to the guy in order for him to better understand how it differs from other techniques. He later said that this technique involves hundreds of different movements in it, there is never a beginning and an end, and it shimmers like water. The forms of this technique were endless. It never ended. The owner of this technique could generate any ways to use it as he needed it. Gu Yang explained that the most important thing in this technique is that what is most appreciated is its harmony, thanks to it it is easy to control qi energy during movement. The fighters of the central lands call this technique oriental dragon breath. Gu Yang tried so hard to show the boy all the best aspects of this technique that he even forgot that he was already too old, his body could not withstand such loads, so he began to cough up blood. He admitted that his body is no longer the same as before and he is not able to use this technique because it can simply deplete his body and kill him. The boy was delighted because he understood that this technique of martial arts is now absolutely free and few people know it. Therefore, it would be very pleasant for him to learn this technique. The old man told the boy that thanks to him he would be able to reach incredible heights, but first he had to work very hard and work hard to learn it. But Jinan did not care at all that it could be very difficult because he wanted to gain freedom at any cost, no matter how much strength he would need to spend for this. Gu Yang was surprised when he saw the desire for freedom in this boy, he had never seen such a desire and zeal to be free like his. 
The old man became very interested in what kind of freedom the boy was telling him now, he did not understand the guy wants to escape from prison and become free or does he want to train with martial arts and be free to use. But this doesn't make any sense, because the guy himself understood what he was talking about, it was the most important thing for the old man and it was important for him to understand that the boy was able to develop and go further. Gu Yang decided to tell him about a place no one knows about, it was a secret that the old man never told anyone. He invited the boy to follow him and look at this place. Gu Yang told the head of the prison that he had one request that he would like to voice. The head of the prison was very surprised when the old man decided to personally ask for something from him and was ready to listen to the request. Gu Yang's request was that the head of the prison allow the boy named Jinan to move freely around the prison at any time he wanted the boy to be able to walk around the island wherever he pleases without the supervision of guards. In return, he was ready to do one unique thing for a month for the head of the prison, which he could not refuse. This proposal interested the head of the prison, he decided to find out what kind of unique thing this old man can do in one month. Gu Yang said that this unique thing belongs to the work he usually does, which is to work on statues. Dodge is surprised to see all that was required of him was to give the freedom to the boy to move around the island without guards. But he was not ready to agree to this proposal so immediately. After all, it was very unexpected and the head of the prison became interested in why the old man was doing so much for this child. He asked if there was anything else that needed to be done for him. Gu Yang said that for the time being, he didn't need anything else, only the fulfillment of this request, the head of the prison agreed and replied that he had been with them since the child and provided him with freedom in the stone mountains. But he warned that it is strictly forbidden to leave the territory of the island. After all, if this happens, then it will be regarded as an escape and both of them will be very severely punished. The old man agreed with these rules. Gu Yang also asked to be given the opportunity to use the eastern cave for their own purposes. The head of the prison agreed with this request and allowed them to use the oriental beads refuse that they can do whatever they want there because this place is empty anyway and nothing happens there. Gu Yang thanked Doju for agreeing to this proposal, after which he left the office of the head of the prison. When Gu Yang brought the boy to this cave, it was already morning. They were standing right in front of the entrance to it. The old man told the boy a story about how this cave was found during excavations about fifty years ago, it was used as a house for workers. After the liberation of the mountains in the west, housing for workers and prisoners was moved there, and this cave became completely empty because it was too far from the developments. But the old man believed that this cave was not useless and it could be very useful to them in the study of martial techniques. He said in this cave there is one hidden place that is known only to the old man. Nobody except him knows about this place. This place once saved an old man when he was between life and death. They walked through the tunnels of this cave for a long time and at some point the old man stopped holding a torch in his hands and told the boy that they had already come. In front of them was a waterfall with hot water, it was a kind of geyser, the old man told the boy that this was the very secret of this cave. Gu Yang told him that he called this cave Hyaliankan. The old man was very grateful to this cave, but so far he did not tell the boy why he said that the guy would soon find out everything himself. They every day I studied martial arts techniques Matcha trained all day long and whatever the weather was outside it only tempered his spirit. His clothes were wet because it was raining, but that still didn't stop him from training. Jin Young continued to hone his skills under the supervision of his mentor. At night, he immersed his body in the warm waters that were in the cave and relaxed his muscles, this source filled him with energy. A drop of morning race flowed from a leaf into a tree. Jinan continued to work on statues and showed his mentor the results he had already achieved. When no one saw, he used his magic and the demon helped him in studying the magic chakras. Winter came and the last leaves that were on the tree withered and began to fall, snow fell and covered the entire territory of the island. It was very cold, but they still continued to train outside despite the low temperature, nothing could stop their training. Jinan had already grown up and became a real man, he already had a strong physique and spent many years studying martial arts techniques, the old man saw his growth and on that day said that the boy could already try to use these techniques himself. Jin Young gathered his strength and tried to perform all the strikes as close to the ideal as possible. The guy was ready to try this technique. He made the first blow with his fist and felt the incredible power that was in him, he had never felt anything like this before. His movements are incredibly fast, 
able to carry different punches from different techniques in a matter of seconds. Gu Yang watched the boy's technique and was proud that he still managed to learn it before that he had such a talented student. The boy threw hundreds of quick blows and felt his body ready to use the most powerful blow of this martial arts technique. He tried to do it there and was surprised at what strength was available to him, he was ready to break a whole rock with one fist. Gu Yang did not expect that the boy had grown so much and learned this technique, but he was surprised when he saw such a strong blow. Jinan was waiting for what his mentor would say to him from the side because he felt that he was pretty good at this technique. In the look of the old man, he noticed pride in his student, this could be understood without words. Gu Yang thought that the time had already come to finish the training, he had already taught everything he could teach, and then he had nothing to do here. They returned to their prison cell after training, the guard opened the door and let me in. Jin Young talked about the fact that today was a very hard training and he hardly coped with all the tasks for the old man did not answer him at all. Jin In was surprised why grandfather was silent, he did not understand what was happening, it seemed to him that he had done something wrong and grandfather was offended by him. Gu Yang stood in front of the guy for a long time and was silent at some point, he nevertheless spoke and told him this time to get on the ship in the evening and leave this island. You must leave here. The old man said that he had already managed to agree with Dodge that the boy needed to leave these islands and the head of the prison was allowed to do this. The boy did not have to worry about the fact that he would then be pursued by security, because the head of the prison himself allowed the guy to leave the island and he had to do it as quickly and quietly as possible so that no one would know about it. Jinan did not let my head down and sighed heavily, he could not believe that this moment had finally come and now he was free to leave this island. Gu Yang remembered what this guy looked like when he first arrived on the island, he was still a very young child who did not understand anything. But now I was standing in front of him. A real man who was ready for all life's trials, he was prepared to meet this life. Jin Young joked that when he leaves, the old man will be very bored and lonely. On this island, he is not sure to miss him. Gu Yang laughed and told him that as soon as he sees the guy, he will immediately start working on me with a special thing and besides, he would need to look after the hairy Uncle Xing, so he will never be bored. Jinan scratched his head with his hand and also laughed, he understood that grandfather was joking and in fact it was very hard for him to part with him. Jinan began to feel embarrassed because as soon as he leaves the island, he will begin a new life that he has been dreaming about all this time. He remembered that grandfather had a special request for him that he never voiced, and the guy reminded grandfather of this request. He wanted to know what it was. Gu Yang stood silently for several minutes, as if gathering his strength to voice his request to the boy, it was hard for him to talk about it. Jin Young became nervous when he saw concern in his grandfather's eyes, he could not even imagine what his old man would ask for. Gu closed his eyes and said that now he would tell him everything. He even believed and could not believe that this moment had come and he had the opportunity to ask the guy to fulfill this request. Gu Yang told the boy that he has grown and become very strong, so it's time for him to hear the old man's request. Gu Yang told him everything he wanted to ask him and the boy was very surprised when he heard it all from his mentor. He could not even think that grandfather could ever ask him to do such an act. The next day, a ship sailed from the island with guards and provisions. On this ship there was a statue wrapped in fabric so as not to get dirty and no one was supposed to see this statue ahead of time, it was brought onto the ship by a guy with a rewound head, the guard saw him and asked him to be careful with this statue if he does not want to lose his life, because if anyone, something will damage this statue, this will affect everyone who is on the ship. The guard was very surprised when he saw a guy with a rewound head on the ship, I don't understand what this person forgot here. The guy continued to drag the statue despite the fact that the guard yelled at him. The guard was unhappy with the fact that one of the prisoners was standing idle and he yelled at him and asked him to go help the others to drag this statue and then scolded him for bringing a sick man with a bandaged head here. The prisoner who is in charge of the recruitment said that this guy is doing a good job even though he has a bandaged head it's all because he just had a fresh scar on his face and he paid him the boys to save. The guard was very dissatisfied with the fact that this guy decided to save money and took a colleague on the ship, because because of him we wing to suffer the statue. He asked, next time, don't do such things and don't recruit injured workers because it can have a very bad effect on work. 
The guard asked this man if all the statues were dragged onto the ship and the man answered him that it was the last statue and now I can't sail. The captain of the ship shouted very loudly that they were now sailing so that everyone was ready to sail. He ordered to raise the anchors and start moving. The ship is sailing a little differently from the coast and heading towards the city, this moment has finally come. The worker, bandaged with his head, decided to go to the edge of the ship and see how the island moves away from them. He was on the back of the deck and watched them carefully as they sailed away. Under the bandaged bandages was Jinan, he could not believe that this moment had finally come and he managed to leave the island. He always thought that he would leave this island someday and get out of here, but when that moment came he couldn't believe his eyes. It was so unexpected that he began to miss those times he spent on this island. Jin Young leaned on the railing of the ship and watched the island he thought that when he returned to the mainland he had two things to do. The first thing he needed to do was save his father and protect his family. At that moment, on the edge of the cliff, he saw the silhouette of a man. It was Gu Yang, he stood and watched the boy, he came here to look at him for the last time and how his ship was sailing, he came here to say goodbye. It was very hard for the old men to let go of this boy and he understood that his days would now be ordinary and uninteresting. But it was the right decision to believe the guy had his own path that he had to come. Jinan understood that now he was looking at his grandfather for the last time and although remember him in his memory just like that. The old man a stood and looked at how the ship was sailing away until it crossed the horizons and disappeared into the depths of the sea. On that day, the old man told the boy that his real name was Gyeong Mubak. And even the head of the prison does not know about this, because this is a secret that the old man did not tell anyone, and on the list he is listed as Gu Yang. Jinan didn't understand why Grandpa kept his name hidden all this time, it was a mystery to him. Grandfather told that his name should not be pronounced outside, it is forbidden and it is better for no one to know about it. Because if everyone finds out about it, then everyone on this island will be killed, usually even people whose name is similar to his die. Jinan asked his grandfather how this is even possible, the historian told him that there is one person who is quite capable of this. This man is ready to kill people in droves and mercilessly mock them. The boy asked his grandfather who this man was. The old man put his hand on the boy's shoulder and decided to tell him something. He told him that when the boy gets out of this prison, he will have to find a man named Gaian Mugyeong. This man is the old man's brother and Jinan will have to kill him. Jin Young didn't understand how this was possible. Did Grandpa really want to ask him to kill his own brother? He was sure that he was simply mistaken and a man named Gaian Mugyeong was the very master of the Heavenly Ten who were legendary. The old man confessed that everything is exactly as he says his brother was indeed a member of the Heavenly Ten martial artists. Oh my God thought the guy when he found out who he would have to fight because he thought it was incredible. When he first heard that he would need to fight such a monumental warrior, for some reason he immediately remembered his grandfather. He could never even think about the fact that they are somehow connected with each other and can hate each other. Jinan asked his grandfather why he wants to kill his blood relative and why they have such enmity. The old man told the story that it was not his own brother his parents adopted at a young age. This man was the real big enemy for grandfather. It was the enemy who killed his parents and the people he loved more than anything in the world. Jinan thought about his grandfather's words, it seemed to him that this was really a good reason to hate this man and ask him to kill. Gu Yang said that when he returned from twenty years of wandering around the world with his master, that his house had already turned into ruins, it burned with a bright flame and someone set it on fire. He ran into the house to try to save but it was too late, everyone he loved so much was killed at the hands of his brother. He sobbed and could not stop his tears, because the whole world that he had been building for so long collapsed right before his eyes in one moment. He did not notice how his brother approached him from behind and although he finished the work he had begun, his hands were bloody on this ball was the blood of his parents and the blood of all the people he loved. Brother made a blow with his sword right in the back like a vile wrath. He dragged Gu Yang's wounded body in the rain through the mud for several kilometers. Even in his fading consciousness, he could not ask his brother why he did this. It was a terrible act. But this cruel man nevertheless gave him an answer to this question and said that he did it in order to pay off the debt and return everything that belonged to him by right. Gu Yang couldn't understand him then. He didn't understand his motives. It all looked very strange, as if his brother had just gone crazy. He was not a natural child in this family, but still everyone treated him like a family member and no one understood why he decided to do this with our family. 
He ruined himself to kill all the people who took care of him from childhood he killed those who gave him a roof over his head and adopted him into the family killed his parents who raised him for thirty years. Gu Yang still did not understand what kind of debt it was that cost the lives of all his families. He still doesn't know what his secret was he never found out why his brother went mad it was a secret that had to be unraveled. The old man said that he was very lucky when the water threw him onto this particular island but his body was irreparably damaged because early on the sword was very deep, you had to give up revenge on your brother. The old man said that after he got to this island, he gave up all his attempts to take revenge and just began to live on until he met a boy. At that moment, he ignited a new idea to take revenge on his brother through a guy. He saw his inner strength and enchanting abilities that grew every day and saw how the guy trains hard, it became clear to him what he wants. The old man, without thinking twice, decided to ask the boy to fulfill his request, because it was exactly what he sincerely wanted. Revenge on his brother. This is what he truly wanted to get, but he himself could not do it, so the guy was the perfect opportunity and weapon for revenge. However, the old man admitted that he could not force the boy to do this task against his will, because it would be very cruel of him. Gu Yang asked the boy directly if he will fulfill his request after he has taken care of his business. Jinan understood that now a lot depends on him. He had to make an insanely important decision of his life and give an answer to the old man. He understood that he needed to kill a person against his will, a person whom he did not even know, but he heard a rather long story about why this person deserved to die. Demon all this time I watched the boy while he remembered the conversation with his grandfather. This was their last conversation. The demon was delighted when the boy finally woke up and decided to himself, now he could calmly talk to her, the boy replied that he had already woken up, he needed to get down to business. Jinan left the hold and went to the edge of the deck to look at the sea. The demon said that today was very cloudy in the sea, nothing was visible, it was true, because in such weather it is dangerous to sail on the sea. Jinan continued to stand and look into the distance, he thought about everything that had happened to him lately. He admitted that thanks to his grandfather on the island, nothing happened to him, no terrible situations happened because his grandfather constantly protected him. And the fact that the guy got up much stronger was also the merit of his grandfather, the demon was unhappy that they forgot about him reminded the guy that he taught him magic, which played a huge role. Sertan said that maybe he was looking after the boy to use him for revenge, but the demon does everything disinterestedly only because he is with the boy all the time and the guy admitted that the demon may be quite right. But nevertheless, no matter how it was, and no matter what goals the grandfather pursued, the boy would still fulfill his request and kill his brother. He said that he did not know the intentions of the old man, but since it happened and he helped him all this time, then you need to pay this old man somehow, because he deserved it. In addition, the guy understood the feelings of his grandfather and understood his pain. After all, it's not every day that people lose a family. The demon told that it was very difficult for him to understand this old man. After all, he never had a family and he doesn't even know what it is. Since not both began to drip rain and fall on the deck of the ship, Jinan and the demon don't expect it to rain this was bad news for them as it could start a storm. The demon didn't want it to rain because they could get wet here and then get sick, so he suggested that the guy go back inside and not get wet in the rain. He didn't want to just keep silent in the rain and hoped that it was just the most ordinary rain without any of their consequences. An hour later, the sea became very disturbing and a storm began and all the workers who were on deck went out to see what was happening, no one understood how dangerous this weather was. The waves brought more and more began to shake the deck in different directions, the ship could no longer swim calmly, it was necessary to maintain balance correctly so that the ship did not capsize. The captain of the ship in this weather because the wind was getting stronger and the waves were getting bigger and stronger this could damage the ship. One of the crew members approached the captain and asked what was happening with the ship. He noticed that certain problems were starting. The captain replied that everything was in order nothing special was happening in front of him stood the caretaker and he tried to explain to him that the wind became stronger because of this, the ship began to rock strongly. The captain asked the caretaker to go back to his cabin and not get wet in the rain because there was a very strong wind and rain and it was very dangerous here. But at some point they looked up and saw, besides being very scary, something that frightened them. Even Jin Young was very scared when he saw this natural disaster. 
The sky seemed to be angry with them and gathered all its anger into one huge lightning that struck the water not far from them, this lightning created a strong explosion and the water began to scatter in different directions. One of the sailors made the assumption that thunderstorms are starting now, which meant that these are the worst conditions for sailing, their ship could simply sink from one lightning strike, but if thunderstorms start now, then they say there will not be very much. The sailors began to run frightened in half and they did not understand what to do. After all, if a thunderstorm starts now, then there will be a strong wind and a lot of lightning along with it, this means that the probability that they will swim out of here was very low and most likely everyone will die. The captain of the ship shouted very loudly and made everyone calm down he said that they would leave the epicenter and everything would be fine there was no need to create a panic on the deck and all that was needed was to lower the sails and hold on to the pillars so as not to fly away. Jinan understand that all the sailors who are on deck are now very much panicked and could not calm down, this had to be somehow resolved because they were absolutely ineffective at the moment. The demon also began to tense up a little due to such weather conditions, he assumed that the space wall had opened and that's why it's here now. Such disgusting weather. Jinan was surprised when he heard the demon's suggestion. He asked him to repeat what he said again, but the demon refused. Sertan asked the guy to look, and because he saw there was not something terrible, Jinan turned his head and when he saw the catastrophe that was approaching them, he froze in place, he seemed to be frozen and could not move. After a couple of seconds, I realized the whole catastrophe terribly approaching them and shouted to all the sailors not to grab for something and hold on tight. Their ship hit the most terrible place right at the epicenter of a large wave the size of a ninth wave that could absorb and turn the ship over several times and pull it apart, this wave could destroy the entire crew. Jinan understood that a catastrophe was approaching them that could destroy them all and did not know what to do now. The ship dived under the water along with all the crew members. The statue they were supposed to bring to the imperial palace also dived under the water and they were all on the verge of drowning. Jinan almost suffocated while underwater, but at some point he still managed to wake up and come to his senses. He held his breath in his chest and began to try to swim up in order to get more air into his lungs. He tried to get to the top of the water as quickly as possible. His physical fitness helped him swim out quickly despite being in very deep water. When he finally managed to get out of the water and take a breath, he felt that it was now raining very heavily. Jinan understood that the moss would die at any second, but still he managed to survive due to the fact that he woke up in time. He looked around and saw that the ship was no more, he did not understand what had happened. The ship, along with the people, went underwater, everything was destroyed, and many people died, they could not swim out. Jin Young began to understand the full scale of this tragedy, he became ill from the fact that so many people died. The demon again I asked the boy to look ahead and there was a giant wave the demon asked the boy to use some kind of magic to get out of this place. Jinan without thinking twice uses the magic of flight in order to fly away from here and not get into this wave. He pushed off the surface of the water and was able to take off the air a sufficient distance so that he was not hooked by a wave. He levitated into the air and watched what was happening in the sea below him. Sertan was happy as a child when he realized that they managed to take off but the guy would not be so happy because he had to keep his balance in the air. He decided to take a look around himself and understand what was happening here, but then he felt how he was starting to lose his balance. He lost his balance because at the height of his flight there was a very strong wind that knocked him down. Jinan fell into the water and could not continue his levitation, he hit very hard when his body came into contact with the water. He was very angry because even with the magic of flight it was impossible to get out of this weather around, there were huge waves in the water that killed lightning and there was a strong wind in the air that did not allow him to fly away. The demon offered to summon a ghost so that he could help them get out of here. But Jinan thought this was a very stupid idea, because where are you from here in the middle of the sea moss to be a ghost? He that the demon is just mocking him because it was a very stupid proposal, in addition, in this situation it is very difficult to use magic. Sertan at that moment I was not joking and was very serious, he said that when the lightning struck, he felt that the spatial gates had opened and this was a good sign. Jinan still didn't understand how this dimensional gate could be connected to the summoning of the spirit, it all sounded very strange and unreliable. The demon admitted that when the spatial gates opened, he felt that several creatures appeared from them. At that moment, two different worlds that should never have met touched, but through a thunderstorm, weak ties appeared between the worlds. 
and some amazing creatures began to appear from another world, which the demon felt as if they were not gathering at the lumen of the expanded dimension. The demon was not sure if there was at least one spirit among all these creatures, but he offered to try because it might be a good idea. Jean and this idea turned out to be very strange because he had to summon a spirit from another dimension. He believed that it was impossible to scatter the energy remaining inside his body. After all, if he now calls on the spirit there will be some other creature, this will only aggravate the situation. It was very dangerous to try such methods in such a place in such a difficult situation. If a useless monster like a demon were suddenly caught, then they would simply die here. Sertan was offended when the guy called him a useless demon, but nevertheless said that he did not feel evil demonic energy here and there would most likely be useful creatures. He already wanted to quarrel with the guy, but then he realized that now was not the time for this and asked to still call someone already in order to save them. There was simply no other way for them, there was nothing left for them except just to try. Jinan still agreed to this demon's adventure and decided that we really should try. He prepared his hands for this spell and prepared to call. He had very little time and energy, he had to act very quickly. Sertan said that he would take care of the most complex details, the guy had only to cast a spell and summon the spirit here. Genie hand forward and called the green seal he said the spirit that controls the winds of mother nature I call you and I want to make a soul contract with you. But unfortunately no one appeared in front of them after they used this spell. Did no one really show up, how is that even possible? Are they really that unlucky? The demon was very upset when no one appeared, he was sure that someone in any way should have appeared in front of them. Jinan reproached the demons for the fact that there was no one. He said that in vain he only spent his strength on summoning this spirit. He regrets his act and that he obeyed this demon, because nothing happened, the magical energy inside him dried up a little. But suddenly the face of a girl with green hair appeared in front of his face. She asked where she was now. It was a small fairy, he managed to summon a creature here, but it was a palm-sized fairy. She asked the guy if he wanted to conclude or he still decided to change his mind. Jinan was surprised when he saw a fairy in front of his face, he really did not expect that they would succeed with this spirit summoning idea. The fairy said that she had very little time and the guy needed to answer faster if he really wants to conclude a contract. Jinan was very surprised when the fairy asked him to hurry up, he did not expect the spirits to be able to be busy. She did not make her repeat the same thing several times but still said it again, it was you though to make a contract with me. She reminded the guy that the wind is getting stronger he needs to think faster because she just crossed over the dimensional walls and Jenin was very tired, he replied that he really wants to sign a contract with her. You were not calm, usually this feeling is rare, but this day was filled with various terrible events. The guy said that if this fairy is the spirit of the wind, she can make a contract with him and save him. When the fairy looked at the guys and said that he had no magic at all and he didn't suit her. In this case, he asked her to conclude a contract with her soul and the spirit of the wind and swore before God that he would fulfill the terms of this contract. She said I Sophina admit that I made a contract with you. She looked at him carefully and decided to make sure once again how useful this person could be to her. Sylphine raised her hands up and began to yawn she said that she wanted to rest now because she was very tired. She began to look around herself and did not understand what kind of place this was. She decided to find out as much as possible about this place, but the guy did not like it. Jinan asked the demon if all spirits behave as strangely as this and the demon told her that he did not know he thought that this girl is very immature, so she behaves like that. He confessed that one stupid one was enough and now he also has a stupid demon girl who does not want to do anything demons began to dislike the fact that the guy constantly insults him. He warned them that the storm was intensifying and the lightning was getting bigger, they had to get out of here as quickly as possible. Jinan began to panic because the situation was getting worse he had already stopped hoping that my year would get out of here in and before it was too late he asked the spirit to take them away from here and the girl just started to panic. Oh thought about getting rid of him as soon as possible because he was already starting to bother her. She parted your magic and parted the water into two halves in order to be able to pass here normally, then she began to clear the sky, here are the clouds. Jinan was very surprised when he saw the ability of this fairy. With just one spell, she was able to clear the sky of terrible weather, this ability proved the power of this little fairy. She smiled and looked at their reaction because she was very proud of herself for being able to move the clouds and create good weather. 
Jinan looked at the sky and could not believe what happened to him that day, he had just recently left the island and already got to the side, now he is right in the center of the sea. He managed a wooden raft that was part of a broken ship and the guy rested lying on this raft, he was disturbed by the thought that he was stuck in the middle of a still sea. He wanted to get out of here but so far he didn't have any idea because it would take a lot of mind to lift this board into the sky and he knew not to waste magic now. Hoping that the sea itself will bring him ashore was stupid because it was not clear how much time it takes for the sea to help him get to land. He saw that the fairy woke up after her dream and appeared near his face, he decided to turn to her and asked Sylphina to use some magic so that she would help him get ashore but she was very tired and did not want to use magic. Jinan is outraged that the fairy does not want to help him. After all, they have been resting for three whole days, but it still wasn't enough for her. The fairy explained to her master that she does not like to work and she would not mind resting all her life. Jinan was very angry with the fairy and still forced her to use magic so that she would help them get ashore and the fairy still agreed. She was unhappy with the fact that her new owner constantly made her work and she began to regret her choice of owner. Demon Serten noticed something very strange in the distance and asked the guy to look in that direction. Two ships were visible on the horizon, they sailed directly towards Jin, the guy could not see the banner under which these ships sailed because they were too far away. Sylphina started using her magic to move the dam forward but Jin Young stopped her because he had another request. He asked the fairy to sneak onto the ship that was visible on the horizon and conduct reconnaissance. He wanted her to find out what flag this ship was sailing under. Jinan asked the fairy if she knows human flags and how good she is at understanding the human world fairy replied that she knows everything, unlike stupid demons. Sertan began to get angry with this fairy every day more and more, he believed that she was also lazy and despises demons. Jinan tried to calm his demon and explained to her that she does not even know that Sertan has been around all this time and therefore she does not understand what she is talking about. But the demons were still annoyed by the fact that a third-rate spirit dares to open its mouth and insult demonic beings. Sylphina returned day after reconnaissance and said that ships were sailing in the distance and there were people on them. But these people are fighting among themselves, they have a naval battle going on and they are boarding other people's ships. Jinan became wary when he found out that a battle was going on between these ships, he asked again in Ufa and how many ships were there now. The fairy replied that there are only two ships that sail very close to each other, they fight among themselves. A real battle was taking place on the deck of the ship, people fought ruthlessly and killed each other. A warrior in autumn clothes and with a white bandage on his head killed several enemies at once with quick blows of his sword at the same time, so he was an experienced warrior. Jinan was able to get to the ship and climbed onto the deck, he was afraid to show up until I understood the full picture of the events taking place here. But just a couple of minutes later, he decided that he should still climb onto this ship, made a swift jump up and landed right on the deck of the ship. He saw the corpse of a man lying in front of him, he was bleeding and his body was white it was a terrible picture and Jinan didn't expect to see this man here. The corpse that lay in front of him scared the guy and he needed time to recover. But when the guy opened his eyes and looked around him what he saw scared him even more he was not ready for what he saw. Around it lay dead people, they were sailors from two different ships, they were dressed in different uniforms, some of them had no arms, some had parts of the body cut off or mutilated. Jinan first encountered all the cruelty of the real world, he could not even think that such terrible things are happening in the world that surrounds him. He clenched his fist and tried to recover, had to decide on an act to enter this cruel world and fight it he needed to calm down because his body was shaking with fear. Jinan decided that he needed to follow the course of the battle on this ship and understand what was happening here. Why are these people fighting among themselves who is right and who is wrong? He saw the sign of the golden dragon on the bandana of one of the warriors, he immediately thought that these people could be from the clan of the sea dragon. People in other clothes were most likely pirates and the guy came to the conclusion that the clan of the sea dragon was attacked by pirates in order to rob. His assumptions helped him make a choice and side with the Golden Dragon Clan and resist the pirates, he came out of the corner and was noticed by the pirates. One of these pirates immediately rushed at the guy. He grabbed his axe and wanted to cut him in half with his axe. The blade of the camera almost touched the guy's head, but it didn't scare him at all, he even thought that this pirate was moving too slowly to fight him. Jinan was a well-trained fighter and possessed incredible speed and agility, so he was easily able to dodge the blow of this pirate. After he dodged, 
he immediately decided to launch a counterattack and struck his fist right in the face of this pirate. The blow was so strong that his opponent flew back and broke one of the walls of the ship. And after the blow, smoke appeared on the deck. The pirates had never seen such strong blows before and they tried to understand where their friend had disappeared. But at that moment, Jinan took advantage of the situation and ran out of the smoke and decided to attack the rest of the pirates. He moved so fast that it was impossible to follow him his movements were quiet and clear. Jinan took one of these pirates by the throat and began to drag. He threw his opponent and with all his strength hit his head on the deck of the ship and thereby broke several planks. After that, he turned his head back and looked with a menacing look at the rest of the pirates. They were scared when they saw that the guy was going to attack them, they were not ready to fight such a strong opponent and did not understand where he came from. While he dealt with his enemies and beat them in the captain's cabin, a man hid who was watching the battle during this time. This man was always looking through the gap as one man destroys an entire army of pirates. Through the gap in the door one could see the eyes of this man, but no one noticed him because during the battle there was no time for him. Jinan delivered a very strong blow with his fists and knocked out all the nonsense from his opponents, he broke their bones and knocked out their teeth. A man suddenly appeared on the deck of the ship, it was a warrior in expensive clothes, he inserted his sword into the wooden deck and sat down on his knee. This man, judging by his clothes, also belonged to the Sea Dragon Clan, expressed his dissatisfaction with the operations and reprisals for daring to attack the ship. He raised his head up and shouted so loudly that everyone on deck could hear him he declared that the central troops never let this go unpunished. One of the pirates, most likely holding the position of captain, raised his saber up otherwise to laugh at his opponent, he considered him a verbose weakling. The pirate captain wanted to kill his opponent and was already swinging his weapon in order to strike, but Jin Young noticed this and immediately ran towards them in order to prevent the kill. He used his magic that remained inside him and threw back the captain operator. He decided to carefully consider his opponent and memorize his face, he wondered why this pirate stood out from the rest. The captain of the pirates did not understand what was happening if he was surprised when he saw a new warrior in front of him, he thought that he knew everyone who was on this ship, but he was standing in front of him to get acquainted, he did not understand where this stranger came from. Jinan turned to the fairy again and wanted to ask again for something. The fairy was very tired and did not burn with the desire to help her master. Jinan asked the fairy to help him adjust the wind magic and if she did that she would let her rest and the fairy agreed. The captain of the pirates was very angry with this stranger, he did not understand why the boy was behaving so boldly and wanted to punish him for it. He grabbed his sword and dashed towards the protagonist in order to stab him. He wanted to kill the stranger. Jinan at this moment tried to call on wind magic and use his last remnants of magic in order to fight off the pirate captain. Jinan quickly accumulated enough energy inside his body to deliver a powerful blow of air and threw his opponent several meters into the air. The captain did not understand what was happening, he was picking up or up and he was where the wind flows he first encountered magic it was hard for him to understand what was happening now. He was thrown so hard that he flew over the edge of the ship and began to fly into the water. He would have hit the surface of the water very hard and is now in the depths of the sea. Jinan was even a little sorry that all these pirates would become food for the KO but he believed that it was karma and they deserved what was happening to them. A few seconds after he said this, a shark appeared from the sea and immediately swallowed this man. Jinan watched how the shark eats this pirate, it seemed to him this sight was very creepy at that time a man stood behind him and watched the guy. This man asked a stranger who he was and what his name was, the guy turned his head and realized that it was time to introduce himself. He joined his hands and bowed after that he gave his name to Ko Jin Young. The pirates began to panic when they saw that their captain had died, they began to flee and leave the deck of the ship. One of the pirates was very angry because their plan was thwarted by a stranger who slaughtered half of their pirate crew. He shouted very loudly that the next time he met this man, he would definitely cut off his head, he turned to Cho Jong Myung. It was the same man with a white bandage on his head, which depicted the golden dragon. Cho Jong Myung stood and watched the pirate ship sail into the distance, he understood that the pirates had lost the battle and were forced to leave with pride, followed the losing ship with his eyes. Cho Jong Myung was glad that he managed to recapture his ship and stay alive, but he did not show his joy. He realized that despite the fact that they managed to win the battle, Still these grots did not create very many problems that needed to be solved. 
half of his crew was killed, the rest was very seriously injured, the doctors who were on the ship tried to help the wounded sailors, there were a lot of them and the doctors did not have time to cure everyone at once. Dead sailors lay on the deck in pools of their blood, their weapons lay beside them, their bodies were mutilated with heavy scars. They needed to figure out what to do with the dead bodies, because leaving them lying on the ship would be the wrong thing to do. Cho Jong Myung had to make a decision about his further actions in order for his crew to continue to work and function, but it was hard for him to survive the death of the rest of his crew members. Jinan asked the captain of this ship if he was all right, he saw that it was hard for this man to come to terms with the death of his warriors. Jo Jong Myung turned his head to the guy and looked into his eyes, wanted to somehow thank this man for saving. The captain bowed to the stranger and thanked him for saving all these people. Cho Jong Myung did not want to be rude but nevertheless asked the guy where he came from because there were no other ships nearby, he wondered where this man came from in the middle of the sea such a moment. Jinan did not know how to explain this whole situation that happened to them and replied that his ship sank and the only survivor who was left was him. Jinan said that all this time he drifted on the door from the cabin, which was in the sea, and thanks to it he was able to stay afloat for three days. He even pointed his finger at this door, which was still floating not far from the ship. Cho Jong Myung was very surprised when he found out that this guy was able to stay on such a board for three days and survive in the sea absolutely without any provisions. A tall girl with very long hair came out of the captain's cabin, she turned to the captain and called him her father she confirmed that this stranger was telling the truth. This girl's name was Yong Hyang she was the captain's daughter she had very kind eyes and she was dressed in a white kimono her long hair was in neat curls with a flow over her clothes. Jinan was stunned by her beauty when he saw her in his heart, as if a new light was lit, he could not take his eyes off her. When he looked into her eyes, he was ready to drown, no longer surrender to them completely, she seemed to him the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. Yong Hyang looked at the guy in surprise and did not understand why he was looking at her like that, it was a little alarming. She blushed because she realized that this man was looking at her with a loving look. She said that she saw through the gap. He was floating on the board. The girl said that she noticed a drawing of a dragon on this board and she was a little embarrassed by this ornament. She tried to remember what this dragon ornament on the board meant and looked at it better. But she noticed it was the door from the cabin on the Shinryango ship, this sign was very familiar to her. Jinan was surprised by the observation of this girl, because even with the deck of the ship it was difficult to see this ornament, but she still managed. He did not understand how this girl could see this ornament, see all its patterns while in the captain's cabin and watch everything and the cracks in the doors. The captain was very surprised when he heard that Ryanho's ship was wrecked. The captain was wary of this news, once again looked at the stranger, he told the guy that he didn't look like Matrasov and again crossed why did this guy sail on this particular ship. Jinan replied that he really was on that ship and told them about the fact that he worked there as a temporary sailor. He said that he loaded things on this ship and sailed after that their ship got into a storm and that because of this the ship was wrecked and the ship capsized. The captain was upset because of this news, lowered his head down, imagined how many victims this shipwreck brought and he was because of the fact that such a big ship the kid now had no trace of him. She looked at him carefully and tried to understand what he was thinking. It was hard for her to look at how her father was sad and she decided to take care of him and offered him a little rest with him, she invited the stranger to the same rest a little because he was very tired at sea for three days. Yong Hyang said that it was very impolite of them to stand on the deck of the ship and not offer a stranger some rest. She said that they should have a bite to eat and discuss the details later. Capian was not opposed to such a proposal, he also felt tired in his body and in his thoughts today made him very tired. Therefore, a little rest was the right decision. The captain told the guy that he was very grateful to him for saving him, no matter what, without him they would not have been able to fight off these bloodthirsty pirates. He suggested that Jinan go to the cabin and rest and a little later he would visit him and discuss everything. The captain once again asked the guy if he could find out all the details of the shipwreck and Jin Young replied that he would tell him everything that happened without any problems. Jin Young started walking to the cabin before he left he decided to say goodbye to the girl again and she said goodbye to him in return. She watched him leave and followed him with her eyes, this guy was not like everyone else. She noticed a very unique feature of him. He was one of those people who could calmly look into her eyes and at the same time feel absolutely calm. This surprised the girl. 
Except her family no one can look her in the eyes but this guy does it like nothing happened. She called him an amazing person and watched him until she entered the cabin. The captain asked Yong Hyang about this guy and wanted to know if this man really told them the truth or did he lie about something. She told that this man told the truth and there were no lies in his words. The captain heard what he needed and after that he decided to go to the edge of the ship and watch the sea. The girl had an amazing ability that allowed her to see heavenly predictions and always see when a person tells her the truth and when she lies, she had eyes of divine conduct that will not allow anyone to lie. The girl turned to her father and said that most likely the connection with the storm and the wreck of the ship her father's friends died because of this and the captain of the ship was sad. But he reassured himself with the words that it is natural for a sailor to die at sea. After all, this is how sea sayings usually go. He regretted losing so many of his best sailors while he was looking for his friend's ship. He also admitted that it was not worth taking his daughter with him, because it really could be a threat to her life, but the girl thought it was completely different, she said that she wanted to be useful, and therefore followed her father. And for him, the most important thing was that his daughter remained safe and sound after such a bloody battle, it was important for him because he would not be able to survive the death of his daughter. In the evening, the three of them met on the deck of the ship and decided to finally discuss everything that happened to them. Jinan told them a long story about how they sailed away from the island and how their ship got into a storm. He told them about the shipwreck and how he managed to survive in this chaos. The captain replied that now everything became clear to him and he was able to understand the full picture of what was happening, but at the same time he asked the guy what he wants to do now and what he will do next. Now, Jinan replied that he was going to go north as soon as he got to land, he needed to head in that direction. He has a task that needs to be done. The captain was delighted when he heard that this guy had a plan of action and said that tomorrow one day I would go by sea and then they would not change course to land and would be able to land the guy. It came in the morning and the ship calmly sailed on the sea the weather was good and did not portend trouble, everything was calm and quiet. Jinan was on the deck of the ship doing his own thing but at some point a demon appeared and saw something very suspicious he told the guy to look there. There was land in front of them and in the distance one could see a sea pier to which ships sail, I stopped there. The demon was very happy when he saw dry land. He wanted to get to the pier as soon as possible in order to leave this ship. All Jean thought about was that his father was out there somewhere and he would soon be able to find him. He became very interested in what was happening with his father now and we live in general, these questions disturbed the guys did not let him calm down. But he immediately convinced himself that his father was still alive, everything was fine with him, he did not even want to admit the thought that something could happen to his father. He came back here to save him and make it possible to see his father again. The ship arrived at the shore and moored, and they began to unload barrels and various cargo from it. Jinan, together with the captain and his daughter, went down to the decks of the ship and headed towards the city. When they walked through the port area, people appeared in front of them, the guy was alert when he saw them. These people seemed familiar to him, and he carefully examined them. They stood right in front of them and seemed to be waiting for something. Zhang Miyang bowed to the man who was standing in front of him, he called him his uncle and said that they had returned from a sea voyage. His uncle said that the captain did a very good job on this sea voyage and praised him. He admitted that recently the pirates are getting bolder and bolder and it begins to bother him, in addition, it was said that there was a very strong wind in the sea. The uncle looked at the stranger who was with them and asked the captain if Yong Hyang was checking him for the truth. He replied that his daughter checked the strangers for the truth and said that he was telling the truth uncle was reassured by this answer and he no longer felt in danger. Uncle approached the guy and asked him to move away with him for a couple of minutes and discuss something. He introduced himself and gave his name Yuk Deho said that he was the commander of the Sea Dragon Fleet. Yuk thanks Jin Young for saving his crew. Yuk Deho was still very wary of his attitude towards him and said that he still wanted to ask him something. But before he asks his question, he offered to come inside with him and talk. Jinan agreed but immediately warned the man that he wouldn't have much to tell him and didn't want too much to be expected of him. They went to the palace and Yuk was sitting on his throne surrounded by a small group of twelve soldiers, his family members were also there and Jin Young was standing in front of him. The soldiers stood and watched everything that was happening, they had to protect their master so that you would not become. Some looked at each other, they tried to understand what was going on here. Jinan noticed that these soldiers had eyes full of curiosity. They wanted to know what was going on here. 
They were all interested in understanding why this stranger was here now. But the eyes of these soldiers were of little interest to him, and he looked to the side and noticed something amazing. He saw Yong Hyang's eyes, they were beautiful eyes that he was ready to look forever and look for them among a thousand other eyes. The demon did not understand why the guy constantly looks at the eyes of this girl and says that they are beautiful, because it seemed to him that this girl always looks like she is terribly unhappy with everything that happens and the guy tried to explain to him that the demon would not be able to understand everything and the delights of her look. Demon asked him what can be beautiful in the eyes that constantly look into his soul. Sertan told about the fact that their very first meeting. He noticed how this girl looks deep into his soul and is able to see everything he thinks and feels. Sertan admitted that he helped the guy avoid her gaze, used the magic of illusions to cloud her mind, because only in this state she will not be able to open the spoon that Jinan says. Sertan was still very uncomfortable being next to her, he felt disgusting when she looked into their eyes, in addition, this girl was very similar to the celestials who live in the paradise of heavenly cities, the demons do not translate them into spirit. Jinan understood that the demon is unlikely to realize all the charms of this girl because he did not experience human emotions and does not know how it is to see such a beautiful girl. Yuk Deho began his speech and said that when the wind increased and a storm began at sea, one of the greatest ships he had ever seen sank and only one person survived after the crash. Jinan said that this was exactly what happened and this man who survived was he admitted that this was the most ordinary luck and there was nothing here that could embarrass this gentleman. But Yuk Deho still felt that something was wrong here and could not leave him the thought that this guy got off too easy after such a shipwreck he asked the guy about how he became a temporary sailor. Yuk Deho said that even a temporary sailor cannot get on this ship. Just like that, if someone does not recommend him, in particular, only proven sailors who have proven their loyalty in previous trips to the sea are selected for the ship bound for Chongandong Island. He asked Jinan who recommended him to this ship. Jinan did not want to answer this question. He asked why this gentleman was so curious about who recommended him to this ship and asked is it bad that he survived. Deho shared his thoughts about the fact that no one noticed how this giant ship disappeared into the depths of the sea. After all, it has not been the first year of regular business on this route. But this time the ship sank. He was embarrassed by the fact that a temporary sailor appeared on the ship and only this person remained the only survivor of the wreck despite the fact that the ship was sunk in a storm. The whole problem was that the same surviving person turned out to be absolutely unknown to anyone and no one had heard anything about him before. But on the other hand, it was impossible to let out the fact that the rest of the sailors who also went to sea that day said that there was a strong wind and there were high waves. But none of these sailors ever mentioned a storm, and this made the master think that the shipwreck could have been specially rigged. Jinan asked the demon why did none of these people know that there was a storm in the sea that day and the demon answered him that it most likely began only in the place where the spatial wall was opened, so none of the other sailors noticed this storm. Jin Young was in a predicament because telling these people about the dimensional hole would be stupid and no one would believe him, but even now these people thought he was lying to them. Jinan wanted to understand what the true intentions of these people were what they wanted from him, because it's not just that they still keep him here. The guy decided to ask them directly and not waste time he asked them to answer honestly what they want to know from him these people. Yuk Deho realized that it was really stupid to play for time, he decided to go straight to the point and said that they all want to know the identity of this person. He explained that if the storm had actually been at sea that day, then it could have sunk any ship, whatever it was, and it would hardly have sunk just one ship. However, even the best sailor who spent his whole life at sea could not get out of this storm, and in the fact that the story of how the guy survived three days relying on only one cabin door sailed for not so long, it all sounds very untrue. Yuck said that no matter how the captain of the ship spoke about him and described this stranger as a skilled fighter, it was still hard to believe that he managed to survive so easily. Jinan finally figured out what the main problem was. These people just didn't want to believe him and tried to blame him for the shipwreck and when he figured it out he laughed. One of the soldiers who at that time was in this place was most likely the captain of the detachment, reproached the guy for laughing. Jin Young said that he was amused by the fact that they didn't trust him and didn't understand how people could be distrusted so much. One of the soldiers could not stand it and shouted at the guy. He insulted him and said that this was not the way to behave towards the master. He went straight to this guy and is ready to fight because the guy started being rude to his owner. 
Yang Yang began to get very worried and worried about the fact that the commander of the squad was so angry with this guy. Jinan, don't worry about the fact that this upstart wants to attack him in the evening, he read that it is absolutely useless, he is unlikely to succeed. It would also be useless to communicate with these people and prove something to them. After all, they wanted to know what he was capable of, so they started this whole show. The boss gave the guy the first kick and he managed to block his kick, but nevertheless flew back. Jin Young managed to break with his feet after he flew back he tried to balance his center of gravity and stay on his feet and not fall. This man decided to continue the battle and fight with a stranger, he ran closer, made a strong jerk upwards and though to deliver the next blow. He went down and made a strong kick with his foot on the ground, but the guy was no longer there. Jinan jumped back and dodged the blow he didn't want to take another hit just because he didn't want to fight this soldier. He also decided to skip the next attack and dodge it. Jinan didn't want to counterattack him yet, he just tried to dodge his punch. He constantly blocked and dodged all of his attacks because he knew that if he made his counterattack then this soldier would definitely not be lucky. But at some point, he still decided to hit this guy and counterattack him. He dealt several blows with his fists to his face and to his body. Jin Young jumped back after hitting the guys like this and looked what else could he do next. He landed a kick straight to the head of his opponent and put enough power into it to finally end the fight. Jinan hit so hard that his enemy flew off to the side and fell to the ground, after which strong puffs of smoke appeared around him. Yuk Deho was surprised by the skill of this stranger in combat, the platoon leader who was standing next to him also did not expect that this guy had such skill in combat. Yong Hyang was surprised by Temka the stranger dealt with such an experienced soldier, but then she remembered how he fought with the pirates on the deck of the ship and realized that he really was an experienced warrior. The soldier lay on the ground and lost consciousness his face was beaten, drooling from his mouth and he himself was defeated in this battle. Jinan smiled when he realized that he defeated this soldier, he didn't put much effort in order to do it, but he was amused, they just wanted to test his abilities. Jinan was pleased that he could easily fight off this soldier. The beaten man lay right next to him on the ground unconscious, but the guy was not interested because he himself ran into him. Jinan looked at the master who started all this mess and waited for his reaction, although he could understand what they would do next. Deho was very surprised at how easily this guy fought. He could not even imagine that anyone in this world could be so skillful in martial arts. The chief of the gentleman's guard was shocked by this duel, because he did not even have time to make out the movements of this guy, everything was very fast. Deho turned to Commander Guac and asked him to check this guy to make sure everything was exactly right. Guac bowed to his master and said that he would fulfill his request immediately. He stood right in front of the guy and looked into his eyes. Guac could not contain his emotions and confessed to this guy that what he just saw was incredible, he cannot believe his eyes, this fight went so fast that he did not even have time to notice anything. Guac admitted that the soldier that Jinan had just fought was a very strong but experienced warrior, but nevertheless he absolutely could not do anything against him. The commander decided to ask the protagonist who he is, where did ordinary commoners come from? Jinan answered him that he had already called his name and did not intend to repeat it a second time and asked this man who was standing right in front of him what he wanted was it really not enough for him and he wants to start again and fight him again. Guac was much more cunning than the World Cup soldier with whom the guy had just fought and asked him to apologize for his act and after that he began to take out his sword. He put his sword in front of him at the guy and said that he needs to interrogate Jinan at any cost and uses his sword for this. Jinan was not against it, he was interested in the offer of such a fight, he told his opponent that he could attack first and was absolutely not afraid of his enemy. Guac did just that, he decided that he would attack first and this did not bother him at all, he wanted to strike a strong blow at his opponent. Guac swung his sword and was ready to strike at defeat. But Jin Young, as always, easily dodged this attack by making a jump and jumped over to his enemy behind his back. Guac realized that his opponent was now behind him and immediately turned around to deliver the next attack with his swords. But she was also unsuccessful because the guy very deftly dodged her by crouching back and the sword just slid through the air. Jinan realized that it was time to attack him, he had already missed a couple of attacks and could deliver his counterattack. He began to accumulate strength in his fist and collects energy in it in order to strike, he will show this guy that it is better not to run into him. Jinan punched his opponent with all his strength right in the solar plexus put all his strength into it. Guac started coughing after getting punched in his chest he didn't expect the punch to be so hard. 
the commander flew back and grabbed his chest with his hand otherwise coughing. He is very surprised how this guy hit him with such a strong blow from an unstable stance and even the bulletproof vest did not help him withstand this blow. Guack looked at his opponent and the first thought that was in his head was that this guy was a real monster. The commander realized that he needed to fight on equal terms and used his chakra to saturate the sword with doubled energy. Guack wanted to go all out and fight this guy like a real opponent. Jinan was very surprised when he saw that his opponent was using real Dao energy. Guack swung his sword and wanted to deliver a powerful blow in order to defeat his enemy once and for all and show his master that he is still stronger than his opponent. His sword strike was so strong that after the impact around the earth shuddered from the impact point, stones began to fly off and smoke appeared. Jinan assessed the strength of this man and realized that he is indeed a great warrior capable of doing such a thing. He looked ahead and watched his opponent, he did not understand where I am now his enemy. A silhouette appeared from the smoke his opponent approached him closer and closer. Guack shouted that this time it would not be easy to parry his blow, because he was no longer playing with him and was going to fight seriously. His next attack which he uses is called the cross cut which is that he delivers two strikes one vertically and the second horizontally and if the opponent hits right in the center of these strikes his body will not be able to withstand such a strong attack. Jinan calmly dodged two Dao energy waves approaching him and didn't take any damage. That's that because it was too slow an attack for him and his agility was enough to dodge it without putting much effort into it. He clenched his fist and began to accumulate new energy in it in order to deliver the next blows. He wanted to quickly end this battle and stop doing stupid fights. Thanks to the energy that he focused in his fist, he was able to repel the strong Dao attack that his opponent inflicted on him, he simply broke this energy wave with his fist. Daeho was very surprised when he saw what this guy was capable of. He could not even imagine that someone could resist the energy of Dao and beat off such strong blows with his bare fists. There was a very large explosion and purple smoke appeared, nothing was visible and two warriors disappeared from view, no one could understand what was happening inside this smoke. Jinan calmly stood and waited for this smoke to dissipate and he finally sees what happened to his opponent. Then when the smoke cleared he saw his opponent's face and wanted to warn him that if his opponent continued to fight further then the guy would stop holding back and most likely kill him. Blood began to drip onto the floor and create a small puddle on the ground. Guack held his sword in front of his face and held it outstretched, his hand was bleeding and his palm was cut. He that continues this battle there was no point everything there was to know about this guy I already managed to do everything to disgrace the commander did not want to anymore. Guack bowed to his master and apologized for tarnishing the name of the sea dragons he did not think that this opponent would be so strong and admitted that he would most likely not be able to serve as an admiral in the army of the sea dragon. Diho replied that everything is in order and he should not worry about this. He asked the admiral to raise his head, he himself said that he did not expect that this person would be so strong apologized to the admiral because he suffered because of the greed of the master. Daeho allowed the admiral to go and bandage his wound so that it would not fester in the future Guack bowed and thanked the master for allowing him to bandage the wound. Daeho came closer to the guy and apologized for everything that had just happened here, he felt ashamed of his actions and asked the guy for understanding, he explained to him what would happen if he were in their place, he would have done exactly the same. Diho bowed respectfully and we said that he was sorry that he could not adequately respond to his help, but only caused inconvenience and only continuous problems. Jin Young raised his index finger and asked in return to ask one question sir. Jinan said that he was aware that sea dragons were considered one of the three pillars of the Traders Association throughout the continent. He added to his words that he knew that the sea dragons are one of the best spies for obtaining information and equal to me. Daeho told him that everything that the guy listed was absolutely true and immediately asked him what this person wants. Jinan mentioned that the association provides many different services, and one of them is the supply of a huge part of the various items to the imperial palace. Therefore, he has one request to the lord. Jinan asked him to tell him everything this gentleman knows about the imperial palace. Daeho warned the boy that it could be very dangerous and divulging information about the imperial palace and the imperial family is a huge crime that will be severely punished in the consequences if anyone finds out about it. I will do my best to fulfill your desire, however, what you are looking for may put the fleet in great danger said the lord to his interlocutor. Jinan explained to him that he was not up to anything bad, 
but he needed to find out about several people who were now being held in this palace of the emperor and warned that if this gentleman did not fulfill his request and did not tell him about everything, then he would insist and take other measures. Diho folded his arms on his chest, thought about the words of his interlocutor, he understood that the choice before him was very serious and he was very much setting up his reputation by deciding on such an act. Yong Hyang decided to intervene in their dialogue and asked the guy told Leon Master that he is now heading north. Jin Young said it was true he was indeed heading north and he would need to get there as fast as possible. Yong Hyang told him that they also have important things to do in the north and they will soon be leaving then so they are on their way she said that it will not take long if he will let her help him. Jin Young was very surprised that the girl took the initiative together, then I want to go north, he answered her that he agreed to this proposal, but anyway, first he wanted to hear what they had to do in that direction. At, Yong Yang invited the guy to the palace and decided to show hospitality because he had already experienced so much in recent days, despite the fact that he helped her family, he never felt at ease here during this time. She decided to give him tea to drink. The girl told him about the fact that she needed escort on the way, the guy carefully and listened, but then asked again what she meant by the word escort. She told him that there are usually no problems on the path they take. However, recently the road to her has become quite difficult there now it is very dangerous because various robbers have appeared and she requested the support of the Sea Dragon fleet in order to accompany her. Yun said that they would most likely be heading north in a few days and could take him with them. Jinan was surprised when she offered him this option and he asked her can she really trust a person whom she knows only recently and has no idea who he is. Yun decided to change the subject and not answer his question she said that she would have to go on this trip because her sister really wants to see her. But in secret, she admitted that she didn't like her sister at all. She couldn't stand her, and if there was an opportunity not to see her, she would have met her better in them. The girl talked about the fact that they now have huge problems in the fleet and they suffer heavy losses due to pirates who constantly attack ships and rob them. But the goods were not the main problem. They were more infuriated by the fact that they constantly lose very important craftsmen who are hard to find because they are killed by pirates and in such a situation it is not known when they will be reprimanded by associations for the constant loss of people. Jinan listened carefully to the girl and then asked her a question can you really not refuse your sister because of all these events and she answered him that everything is exactly like that. She looked at her reflection in the cup and said that everything turned out this way not by her will and she could only trust her eyes. She admitted if she made a mistake that making the wrong choice would put her in great danger, but nothing can be done about it. He what to answer her and just continued to look into her eyes, he could not look away. She sat and held a cup of tea in her hands. Jean Young suddenly smiled and then started laughing he did it to unload the paws. He nevertheless made a decision and told her that he was ready to take on this job. The demon told the guy that he was being too soft when he was around her and his decision was completely irrational but the guy asked the demon to shut up. He walked after he talked with the girl, she was left to sit alone at the table and drink tea. All this time she thought about taking this guy with her absolutely not because of a lack of people for a completely different reason. She could not see the true essence of this man, no matter how hard she tried, she always failed to do this, as if something constantly prevented her from looking into the depths of him. She understood that a martial artist like him could not be an ordinary temporary mattress. For the first time, she could not see the soul of this person, and this did not give her rest, she constantly thought about it. She was constantly nervous and worried because she did not know what was on his mind what this guy really wants. Jinan did not get out of her head, she constantly thought about him and imagined his face, she justified this by saying that she could not figure it out, but in fact the reason was completely different. Her ears and cheeks were always red when she imagined him. Yun is happening because she had never felt like this before, something inside her seemed to be happy and screaming a little, but she couldn't stop it. She got out of the carriage and next to her stood the crew that accompanied her all this time. Standing in front of her was Jean Young wearing the purple new clothes he was given. He decided to ask the lady for information about this clothes, because it seemed to him that this was the clothes of a scientist, but not a guard or a warrior. Jean Young thought it was some kind of joke and they want him to become a scientist. Yun laughed when she heard that he called himself a scientist she said that it won't solve his personality problem because he won't become a real scientist even if he wears a suit and he doesn't have to worry about it. She told him that he didn't need to worry about it and asked him to refrain from using his powers unless something happened. 
Young explained that she gave the clothes to him so that he could be undercover and be able to protect her in case of a surprise attack, but so that no one knew that he was a martial arts master and Jean Young said that he would try to do everything so that he would not be declassified. Suddenly, another man in black clothes appeared and when he saw the guy standing in front of him, he called him his partner. This exvid looked very friendly he extended his hand and gave his name to introduce himself he said his name was Urian. They got to know each other and gave each other their names after which they shook hands. Young explained that this person is one of the top five martial artists and she thinks he will be useful because he has a lot of martial experience. Urian talked about what he heard about how this newcomer defeated the commander with his own hands without weapons and admitted that he was very glad to meet and serve with such a person. Jean Young replied that he would be happy to work with such a master and hoped to learn a lot from such a person. They began to climb into the carriage and gradually begin to set off. Jinan noticed something strange, he thought that one of the soldiers who was standing near them looked suspicious. But when he saw his face up close, he remembered that this was the same soldier who had attacked him first that day when the master invited them to talk. Jinan asked if this person was okay and had time or if his body recovered after that battle. The soldier did not behave at all benevolently, he did everything as he had to do and they do not want to communicate friendly with the master. Jinan because this person is most likely afraid of him after he lost the battle but it was no wonder he himself then ran into the duel. Urian took the reins of the horses and said that they are already setting off because the preparations have already been completed. He warned everyone that the road will be very long and they are already leaving in order to notify everyone. The corrida began to move, its wheels gradually began to rotate. They drove into the depths of the forest and calmly drove through it, the horse slowly walked forward and dragged the carriage behind it. Jin Young opened the window and constantly looked in. He watched everything that was going on around him. He noticed that he had not smelled the forest for a long time and already missed him, he was pleased to be in the carriage and drive through the forest, this inspired him with positive emotions. He thought that the smell of the forest was very different from the smell of the sea, but while they were not serenely riding in a carriage, robbers began to hide behind the trees and wait for the moment to attack. Jinan noticed something suspicious in the bushes there were some strange movements and he was watching them. He guessed that something was wrong here and smiled when he thought that they were going to be attacked, but he did not tell anyone about it because it was only suspicion. The clouds began to thicken in the sky and the daughter began to drip summer continued its movement. Urian said that it is starting to rain and you may have to drive in the rain, this is not the best news for such climatic conditions. Yun said that they still have about an hour to go to the nearest city, so it's best for them to find a place where I can't stop for a while and hide. Urian said that I know you are a temple not far from here and if the lady has a desire, he can take her there. She shared her thoughts that her daughter is most likely unlikely to run out today and it would be better to stay in this temple and spend the night and tomorrow not to hit the road again. Corita changed her courses and started heading towards this temple. Urian noticed that something was wrong in this place, it was very strange to look at this place. After all, it did not look deserted, and he decided to look around here. He asked everyone to be on the alert because anything could happen here and therefore it was necessary to constantly be vigilant. Jinan said that ten miles ago they were followed by robbers and all this time they were watching them. Yong and in a calm voice asked the guy why he is only now talking about the fact that the robbers followed them if he knew about it all this time. Jinan said that she didn't want the enemy to know that he was noticed anyway he was going to deal with them sooner or later and so it made sense for me to tell everyone else. Jinan looked out the window and said that it was time to deal with these robbers. The bandits surrounded the carriage from all sides and did not let it pass, they decided to suddenly attack the carriage. The robbers were armed with long sharp swords, they were all dressed and equally there were quite a lot of them and they did not allow the carriage to pass forward. One of the bandits with a scar on his face looked directly at them with a menacing look. The robbers with your swords and frightening their horse were much more than the escorted crew that guarded the lady. Urian all the time tried to find out who these people were and what they needed, but they did not answer him at all in response, they simply threatened with their swords. One of the thugs came almost close to the carriage and Urian realized what kind of people were now standing in front of him. He immediately realized that these people were the great triad, very dangerous robbers who are constantly engaged in robbery and interception of various cargoes. Urian called them vile scum and accused them of not having any right to attack the association. Their leader laughed out loud when he heard the accusation against him and explained that he should not report or explain himself to such an upstart like him.
Urian immediately grabbed his sword and was ready to fight with them, he explained to them that they do not understand what they are doing and accused these people of constantly committing immoral evil that needs to be destroyed. These people used to not be so terrible but since they got involved with the Junwa organization they started doing evil but they only explained it by the fact that everything itself was so twisted. Their leader said that he did not have any evil intentions and only fulfills the order of his master, he said that he needs a girl who is in the carriage if they give her to them then and do not let everyone go alive. They were the most immoral robbers that were on the continent. Because they could take on the case of kidnapping a woman, and this was considered worse than any crime. The leader of these robbers got very angry when he heard such accusations against him and called this guy a bastard who didn't understand anything. Jinan realized that finally I started his time, he can get out of the carriage and he has been waiting for this moment for a long time. The guy needed his shoulder and said that I was very comfortable in the carriage, tired of them already a little warm up in nature. One of the robbers was very surprised when he saw that another person got out of the carriage. He did not think that someone else would be there and therefore asked who he was and what his name was. Jinan was not afraid of these people, he was ready to fight them at any moment, but before the battle, he wanted to make a good mockery of them by insulting them. The bandit grabbed him by the collar of his shirt and lifted him up, he called this guy an idiotic scientist and a weakling, not understanding at all who to deal with. Jinan was absolutely not afraid of him and looking into his eyes with a challenge, he considered this robber the most ordinary garbage that needs to be disposed of. The robber I waved my fist and was about to strike, he shouted that he would spoil such impudent behavior with his fists and teach the guy proper manners. But Jin Young blocked his blow with a quick movement of his hand, the speed of this robber was so slow and that he even got bored at some point. The robber did not understand what was happening before he even had time to see how his opponent blocked the blow all he could do was just stand and watch him. Jinan noticed that this man was trying to use his technique to defeat him. The bandit tried to pour his internal energy into the guy, it was some kind of strange technique that he had never met before. Jinan was not even against the fact that this guy would like to pour his energy into him, he decided that in this case it would be enough to absorb all his energy with his technique. He began to absorb and suck all his energy out of this person through your palm. The bandit couldn't understand what was going on. He had never faced such strong opponents before. And it seemed to him that his technique was flawless. But Jin Young continued to suck the energy out of him here the last bits in order to fill his body with his energy leaving him completely powerless. His opponent was still not very stupid and managed to pull his fist out of his palm in time to push the guy back. The bandit felt a wild pain in his hand and did not understand where this pain came from he began to feel weakness in his body. He felt that this person although to break his arm with the power of his energy without applying physical force to it. He did not understand how it was even possible, his arm almost broke from just one energy that was felt in his body. Jin Young also felt a strange sensation in his body that he had not experienced before and tried to understand what kind of sensation it was. The magical Amen began to glow as if he woke up after a long sleep his eyes began to glow blue. The demon Sertan appeared near the head of the main character and also felt this strange impulse in the stone and did not understand what was happening. The demon was flying around its owner. And the guy all this time stood and looked at his hand, he tried to understand what kind of sensation it was. The leader of these bandits all this time was next to them, this time he decided to come a little closer. Apparently, this feeling in the body of the protagonist was just the work of his hands. The bandit talker replied that he planned to end this case with the theft of a girl without magic, but still he had to use the blood curse. He put his hand forward and ordered all the other robbers to immediately that's the crew and kill everyone except the girls. Urian also ordered his soldiers to protect the lady at all costs and prevent these robbers from getting into the carriage and touching the lady. The battle began not for life and death, everyone was ready to fight to the end and defend their goals to achieve them at any cost. Their sword speeded in a brutal duel, the blows were delivered so quickly that it was hard to keep track of what was happening on the battlefield. Warriors valiantly fought back from their opponents you were ready to fight to the last drop of blood to protect the mistress. The leader understood that there was no time to continue this duel and it was necessary to solve the problem with the guards as soon as possible, he took his sword. He went straight to the carriage, sword in hand, he was ready to fight these soldiers himself. Jinan stood all this time and looked at his hand, he could not understand why he had just experienced dark energy inside himself, 
it was the energy of evil and this energy was emitted from the leader of the robbers. The leader of the robbers understood that he needed to immediately deal with this guy and kill him first before he started killing his robbers. No Jin Young put his hand forward in time and took his opponent right by the face with his palm, then stopped him and did not let go. He used one of his spells, which was called Sparks of Flame, and fire began to flow through his hand, which in the future should be the enemy. The fire began to spread to the face of the enemy and set it on fire, but the enemy could not get out of this grip and had to withstand all the damage. Jin Young cast a spell called Fire Fuses around him, a huge flame appeared that flowed over his arm. He unleashed that fire from his body and channeled all the firepower all his opponent's damage. There was a fiery explosion in a huge size and it was such a start to burn the body of the talking robbers. His clothes caught fire and began to blaze he screamed in pain because his body was on fire and he did not know how to put it out no one expected that this guy had such incredible power. The rest of the robbers were very frightened and surprised when they saw their leader lying on the ground and burning after the spell, they did not understand what to do. They shout to put out their master and stop fighting even the guards were surprised when they saw that the rogue leader is now lying on the ground and burning. Jinan is ready to fight on and he didn't want to let these rogues go without a fight because they've already caused enough trouble. He jumped behind this robber and wanted to kill them so quickly that they didn't even have time to notice it, he moved with such speed that the robbers simply did not have time to follow him. As soon as they turned their head back in front of them, they saw this monster that was about to damage them, they did not even have time to dodge the blow. Jinan landed two quick blows with this rogue and they flew back he hit them right in the face and broke their skulls with his punch. He jumped back and decided to look around himself in order to understand who to attack next to believe there were a lot of enemies and it was necessary to make quick and correct decisions about it so that there were no problems. He saw that several fighters attacked him from different sides at once, some of them jumped on him, some attacked him from behind, and someone tried to hit him with a sword from below, it was not easy to evade such attacks. But because the dexterity was enough to dodge all these blows and not take any damage, these robbers were weak enough despite the fact that there were a lot of them. Jinan made a jump and after that she used one of her spells that breaks the ground into pieces, he hit the ground with his fist and there was a strong explosion. The bandits lay injured on the ground after such a strong attack, some of them lay unconscious, those who still understood that they were on the battlefield could not even imagine how they could fight this man. He is on the ground and thought that this guy is a demonic technique that he sees for the first time in his life and has never encountered anything like this before. His enemy is wielding a fiery martial art that is capable of destroying everything in its path. Jinan swung his fist and decided to deliver a strong blow to this robber in order to kill him. He punched him right in the face and broke his skull with one blow. Jin Young took his fist and dripped the blood of this thief he had just cracked his skull. The bandits realized that the best time to avoid is right now, because then it will be too late and he will definitely kill them all. But Jin Young is ready to kill them all. The robbers were frightened when they saw what this guy was capable of. They understood that it would be useless to fight him and decided to save themselves by disaster. Jinan was not going to let these robbers out of here alive, and he was already very angry with them and wanted to destroy everyone. The bandit was sitting on the ground and I think that he most likely has already come to an end, he is unlikely to be able to survive in the battle against such a strong warrior. Jinan approached this robber and stood right in front of him. Jin Young was very angry with these bandits, he did not show his anger on the outside. This bandit was sitting on the ground and trembling with fear he asked Jin Young what he would do with him if he just turned him in will this gentleman be able to spare him. Jinan raised his head and replied to this rogue that he is not one of those people who enjoys someone else's death and said that there is no point in killing people who give up. But Jin Young asked this robber why they wanted to steal a girl about them and if he honestly answers this question, then the guy will let go of all the bandits who want to surrender. The robber was silent and did not want to answer this question, he understood that if he told the reason why it was necessary to kidnap the girl, then other bandits could kill him for this. But the guys were not interested at all. And he asked this robber not to keep him waiting. Jinan said that there were serious burns on his brother's body, if he was not taken to the doctor, he might die, so the bandits had to hurry up to tell the reason for the kidnapping of the girl, otherwise his brother would die now. The bandit put his head down and sighed heavily and answered that Junhua asked them to kidnap the girl. She overheard their dialogue, came closer and turned to the bandit, she wanted to know who exactly ordered her kidnapping. She wanted to ask him if the master of their organization really asked to kidnap her. 
He replied that everything was exactly like this, this gentleman ordered the robbers to kidnap the girl and bring her to him. Jinan asked this guy was there any other solution to this problem why did it have to be done in such a drastic way. He replied that they chose such a radical method of kidnapping only because the master ordered them to bring this girl at all costs. She was very surprised because she did not understand why this gentleman needed her so much, I became very interested in her why he decided to hire mercenaries for this. The sword was flying in the air and spinning around its axis. This sword stuck in the ground and stuck there in the forest two people fought. One of the guys dressed in blue and knocked the ball from his opponent and said that he wanted to stop this battle he told his enemy that his master would hardly want a full-scale war. He looked at his opponent and said that besides, even if they continue this battle, his enemy will still have no chance. It was very hard to believe but nevertheless they had a very capable fighter who could defeat all these robbers alone. The thug realized that he lost the battle along with his bandits and asked what his opponent wanted from him did he really need to ask for mercy. He took his wounded leader and lifted him leaning on his shoulder, then he approached the second robber with green hair and said that they urgently need to leave and take their leader to the doctor. Jinan watched them go into the distance and disappear into the thicket of the forest. He could not believe that he set fire to a person with his magic, he understood that it was possible not to do this, but nevertheless, at that moment he still used his magic and crippled another person. He understood that this was all due to the fact that he sucked internal black energy from that person, and this energy was black, it aroused in him a thirst for murder. He did not try to suppress his energy, he succumbed and that is why he caused such severe injuries to that person. Jinan understood that if these bandits continued to attack him and all the other guards further, he would hardly be able to stop and would kill all of them in order to get rid of this thirst for murder that now lives inside his mind. He wanted to understand if there was anything else he didn't know about the technique of absorbing the power of heaven and earth and controlling the soul, he first absorbed the magic of a person with dark energy and now darkness appeared inside him too. It began to rain in the forest and he gradually made his way through the trees and leaves and fell into the forest. This rain intensified every minute and was not going to end, most likely it will continue until the morning. They got to the nearest house which was located in this forest and stopped there. The mistress of business in her room was minding her own business at that moment Jin Young stood on the veranda of this house and watched the rain drip. She saw the guy standing and thinking about something on the veranda of this house, she decided to thank him for saving them all and said that if not for him then the guards would hardly have left this forest alive and she would most likely have been kidnapped. Jinan replied that you should not thank you because it was his job, but decided to ask her a question and asked about which young master she spoke with the robber in the forest. At that moment she realized that he did not know about which gentleman they did not talk then in the forest. She asked him if he knew anything about Chi Junhua's trade organization. Jinan tried to remember everything he knew about this organization and replied that he knew that this was one of the three largest trade groups in the entire continent. The girl said that the owner is the organization Tak Chung Bo and his second son Tak In Hyo is the same young master Tak who ordered her to be kidnapped. Jinan finally figured out this whole situation and he had one very important question. Why did this gentleman want to kidnap the girl? She told that ten months ago, a hawk flew to their palace from this organization and brought a letter in which it was said that the young master wanted to take the girl to him. She said that last year was her grandparents' 60th birthday and there was supposed to be a celebration in the palace that brought together many very important people from all over the continent. The young master also arrived at the palace that day and he asked the girl to show her the whole palace and she agreed and not that day they walked for a very long time. It was then that he noticed this girl and most likely fell in love with her. This man felt that he could afford to take the girl even without her consent. She said that she did not want to marry a young master and her father was also categorically against such an act. But the whole problem was that no matter how much they wanted to do it, to refuse such a profitable marriage was very stupid for no good reason. And the Sea Dragons organization belonged to the association, so there were some things that they were not allowed to decide in the association. The authorities constantly make advantageous marriages between organizations and families in order to earn as much money as possible. The girl didn't say anything else. She went to her room and decided to be alone. It was very hard for her to talk about this topic because she understood that her father and she was powerless in this situation. No matter how much they wanted to, they still could not refuse this marriage because the association would not allow them to do this and this fact caused a lot of pain. 
Night fell on the streets it was quiet and calm all the people were in the buildings. A young guy in a dark cloak was walking along the corridors of one of the houses with quiet steps. He opened the door to the room and announced that Cho Yong Hyang had come and soon this lady would arrive in Tian. The girl was sitting at her desk and looking at the pictures, but when she was told this news, she turned around and asked him if even her brother would come. He replied that he had received word that In Hyo was already next to Tian. The girl answered you, too, that you need to hurry there. But the guy was surprised when he heard this, then he replied that he would go there with pleasure because he was very interested in how much she had changed while he had not seen her. She let his head down and said that because of this girl, her brother and this guy constantly have a heart that bleeds, they can't stop thinking about her. The guy laughed and said that everything was completely wrong and he was only trying to attract her attention in order to complete the task that the lady had set for him. She answered him that even if everything is as he says, you still need to try very hard, because the parental home is already looking forward to when they finally succeed. She replied that thanks to this case, she would be able to decide how best to treat him and asked not to disappoint her next time. The guy replied that she had nothing to worry about and everything would be done in the best possible way and he could erase Jo Young Hyang from In Hyo's heart. Then he said to his mistress maybe to erase this girl from his heart maybe not enough it would be better to erase her from his head so that he would never think about her again and remember. She replied that this was a great idea and that is what she is trying to achieve. She wants him to finally forget about her and not even remember. She wanted to do it for her brother. There were a lot of people in the city that day, they all gathered in the square, along with his wife and the guards, sat in the restaurant and waited for their food. They were very hungry and as soon as they brought food they immediately ate everything then they brought tea the guard said that they were lucky because no one attacked them on the way to the city of Tain. He's with Mrs. Is she going to go up to Taishin today? She replied that today they would not rest here tomorrow morning to go there because there was no point in hurrying them. At that moment, a man in black clothes entered the establishments and stopped near their table. This person came to the table and greeted the guests of the city, he knew them and was glad to see Mrs. Cho after so many years. Yun replied that she really hadn't seen this person for a long time and said that it had already been about a year since their last meeting. In front of her stood the gentleman so the same man who ordered the robber to kidnap the lady and now he is standing in front of them and smiling sweetly. He said that his heart bled, he was anxious all this year, he constantly worried about Ms. Yun. Jean Young was very surprised when hear the beautiful words that this gentleman said, never before seen a person who speaks so calmly about his feelings and experiences. Mr. Tak apologized to the girl for the incident that happened in the forest with the robbers. He said that there was a misunderstanding due to the fact that these robbers misunderstood his order. He said that he simply asked these people to politely escort the lady along with her carriage to the city, but these people were too motivated and did everything very differently. Yun was very indignant at such an act and said that because of these robbers, a person almost died. He told her that luckily everyone remained alive so I asked these robbers to keep their mouths shut so that they do not spread at all and do not even mention this incident that happened in the forest. Tak said that he had already married to the sea dragons for such a terrible deed and all the problems had already been solved so there was no need to worry because of this Genyan did not believe a single word of this man, he seemed very self-confident to him. Tak paid attention to the guy and said that he was very surprised when he heard about the great war that is able to defeat the whole lose alone because the robbers reported to him about everything that happened in the forest and Jin Young replied that it was all true. Jinan had a negative attitude towards this master and did not trust him and even though he had just been praised, he still said that he wanted to talk to this master. The guy told him that this is not the first time he sees people like him and usually such people end their lives very badly, so they always need to be careful. So he answered that this rule applies to all people who mastered martial arts and he will take care of his future fate without other people's advice. Yun watched the dialogue of these two guys and realized that the presence of this gentleman was starting to annoy her. She kindly asked him to leave them because they were very tired and wanted to rest, and the company of this gentleman was now disturbing them. Yun reminded that on the way to this city, he caused them very big problems when he forced the robbers to kidnap her and therefore they were very tired solving this problem. Mr. So the girl is not inclined to communicate with him today and said that he would immediately leave their society and allow them to rest, but then he added that he would visit them again tomorrow and try to communicate with them again. Yong replied that she didn't want to meet him and he shouldn't come to them in the morning because they wake up early in the morning and go to the next city of Taishan. 
but he didn't seem to hear her and just smiled and said that in any case he would visit them tomorrow whether they wanted it or not. Jinan started to get pissed off this man and he wanted to wait as soon as possible for the moment when this guy would already leave here. It was already morning the next day, the weather was even better than yesterday, and they gathered their things in order to go to the next city. Jinan watched the clouds that floated across the sky. Suddenly, this gentleman appeared, he nevertheless visited them in the morning, and the guy began to enrage it even more, he hoped that this person would not come. A guy ran out of the house and joyfully greeted the guests, he was glad to see all these people in his yard. He was surprised when, in addition to the guests, even brother Tak himself came to visit him. He approached the lady, took her by the hand and said that he was very pleased to see such a beautiful flower visiting him. He asked his brother why did he come here and told about what people say among themselves that he has been getting along well with Ms. Yango lately. So he began to feel embarrassed at that moment and said that people are talking complete nonsense and all this is not true. But the guy took his hand on his shoulder and asked why this gentleman reacted seriously, maybe something happened to him. He laughed when he realized what was the whole problem with his reaction it was because he was embarrassed to talk about other girls in front of Miss Cho. Tak removed his hand from her shoulder and asked what kind of nonsense this person was talking about. But the guy said that the news of Mr. and Mrs. Yunghua had reached him. He said that he heard about the engagement of Ms. Yango and brother next month. Tak asked if he understood everything correctly or did he hear the wrong rumor. Already the whole city was talking about the fact that these two fell in love with each other when they went on a joint trip and this guy thought that it was all true. Tak replied that he met her while traveling and it was absolutely an accident when he found her. He replied that maybe there are rumors and go between people at the wedding and engagement with this lady, but she is not included in his plans at all, so this is all untrue. The guy apologized to his brother and said that he just hoped the engagement wouldn't be broken because his brother was so chasing another girl while he was negotiating marriage with Mrs. Gonson. Mr. Tak asked Ha Gong San to close his mouth and continue to watch his tongue, because now he absolutely does not understand what he is saying. San put his head down and sighed heavily he said that his brother has an unbearable temper that ruined his engagement with Ms. Gong San and now from Ms. Yango. So he hit his brother in the face with his fist, but he did not close his mouth and behaved in a disgusting way. Jean Young and Young watched all these performances from the sidelines and were shocked by what is happening here now. They didn't imagine this morning at all. Tak said that he hit his brother because he did not watch his tongue at all, despite the fact that he had already warned him repeatedly and asked him not to talk about it in the presence of other people. San wind his mouth because his lip cracked and blood flowed, he accused his brother of not being able to control his emotions at all and immediately getting into a fight. He used his magic chakra and prepared for battle he said that he hadn't fought his brother for a long time and it was time to teach him a lesson. So he began to gather his chakra around him and fire began to appear near his body, he was ready to fight with his brother. They stood opposite each other and prepared for battle they had already pissed each other off enough this morning. Jean Young was very surprised when he heard all this story about the son of the head of the trade associations, he could not even think that he had such a history with different women. Jean Young noticed that this gentleman is much stronger than the great triad and thought that he might even be as strong as Young Jun. Young asked the guy if it was necessary to separate these two brothers. After all, they will kill each other now, and he answered her that the two of them are not at all like those people with whom you can negotiate and calm them down. A lady came out of the house and asked why she heard such a terrible noise in the yard. And what was happening here? She replied that the commemoration was not over yet and that it was not the best time to arrange fights. She accused Mr. Tak of using his internal energy instead of performing rituals and called him her brother. She simply asked her younger brother to meet the guests and did not even think that a fight could start here, she did not like it at all and was not part of her plans. The mistress asked her brother to explain himself and tell her why a fight almost started here now. Sun felt embarrassed, he didn't know how to explain to his sister about what had just happened here. Tak said it was his fault because he made a mistake and went to compete with his brother in a duel. He apologized to his mistress for the inconvenience he caused her this morning because he did not want it to happen like this. She just now noticed her brother Tak and pretended to be very surprised to meet him now she replied that she was very much at this meeting. So he said that he was also very glad to see her. Yun bowed to this lady and said that she had not seen Sister Ha for a long time and the lady praised her for visiting them all the same. 
Yun said that they put a lot of effort into organizing the wake. Ha replied that it was her duty and she had to do it in the best possible way so it's okay, don't worry about it. She asked her guests to follow her younger brother Sun and said that she would soon be able to join them as well. In the end, the girl added that she was very glad to meet and that she had something to say to Mrs. Young. Jinan walked through the territory of this palace and looked around him. Sertan asked him why he is walking alone now because he should be next to that girl in order to help her if something happens to her. He told the demon that nothing could be done about it because she said that she needed to speak to Mrs. Ha in private. He worried about what was going on in these people's room because they did not inspire any confidence in the guy and he was afraid that I could not offend mistress. But suddenly the guy heard strange sounds not far from him and turned his head, he decided to see what was happening there. A man in red clothes was sitting in front of him and the guy was doing something, carefully watching him, and suddenly it seemed to him that he knew him, it seemed to him that this man's name was Taoist. The demon of the guy what is happening now and why is he watching him so carefully but the guy did not answer the demon and said that everything is in order. This man suddenly disappeared somewhere as if he was not here and the guy did not understand what had happened. He was sure that he just saw this person here but now he has disappeared and Jin Young ran to this place in order to find out what happened here. What is he here about the fact that in this world there are a lot of people with special abilities that few people apparently know about? This person was one of them. The demon said that ordinary people do not know about Jin Young's abilities and just like that they will not be able to deceive him because his eyes see more than the eyes of ordinary people. Sertan saw the inscription Chang Sin on the ground. And she said that this inscription is written in an ancient language and it means the body. Jin Young said that this is all very interesting to him it will be funny to figure it out because it's not every day that he sees a person suddenly disappear. An old man appeared near him, he approached very quietly and imperceptibly the guy paid attention to him when this old man was already very close. He turned to this old man and wanted to ask him a few questions. The old man himself was just passing by and did not expect anyone to talk to him at all. Jinan asked this man if he could ask him a few questions, the old man stood hunched over not far from the guy and said what exactly he wanted to know this young man. He asked if a skinny Taoist with disheveled hair lived near here, maybe the old man once saw such a person here nearby. The old man said that he saw one such person here and this guy always seemed crazy to him. Jinan to grandfather why does he think this person is crazy what were the reasons for treating this Taoist like that? Grandfather replied that this man went crazy 20 years ago and he is not here because of the funeral ceremony, just wandering around the palace grounds. He said that this man is just crazy, you should not pay attention to him. He is harmless and will not harm anyone, but he always walks around the palace grounds by himself. Jinan ask your grandfather if he knows where you can find this crazy Taoist historian tell him that it is pointless to look for this crazy man and asked why the guy doesn't want to meet him so much. The old man did not want to understand why this young man needed this crazy man and simply said that he knew where to find him he said that he would tell about one place where this guy constantly looks. Jinan in the middle of the road and looking at the night starry sky he was watching a huge moon that lit the way like a big lantern. Jinan noticed that from the top of the mountain, the moon looks completely different. Otherwise, it is beautiful in its own way here and I want to watch it even more when you are on the top of the mountain. He heard someone standing behind him and he had been watching this person for a long time but did not show what he noticed and finally he decided to say out loud that he was noticed and the person could stop hiding. Jinan turned his head towards the forest and saw how a man began to leave from there. He was not mistaken, his hearing did not fail him, and there really was someone. It really was the same crazy old man that he was told about, it was a Taoist, he came out of the forest and asked the guy who he was. Jin Young replied that this person didn't need to know his name because it didn't make any sense now it didn't matter. Taoist asked the guy why they met cause if his name wasn't important right now then what was really important. He looked at the guy and called his name Chasen. Jinan, what was written on the ground next to this word was a half-erased text in an ancient language. Chasen asked the guy why does he need ancient writings and why is he so interested in it because it is very rare to see a young man interested in ancient writings. Jinan replied that he was just very interested in the ancient writings and asked if there was a reason why the young scholar should not know this. Chasen lowered his head down and closed his eyes, he replied that the guy's curiosity was indeed justified and said that he wanted to ask him another question. He asked the Jin Young whether he came here alone or took some other people with him, 
because their further meetings depended on it and what they would talk about. Old man asked the guy if there is someone else inside him, for example, a demon or some kind of creature, he felt that this boy was not simple, he was not like all other people. Jinan asked this man what exactly he wants to know and what does his question mean does he suspect that inside the guy who lives the truth from his own. Chasen wherein this guy is a very strange energy he feels it from a distance that's why he asked such a question. He replied that his energy is inhuman and completely different such energy is usually used by demonic creatures or some monsters not from our world. Pren understood that this old man meant his inner demon Sertana and answered him that it would be difficult to answer this question. But Jinan said that he can't harm anyone, so you shouldn't be afraid and worry about this, the old man looked at the guy carefully and asked once again is your inner being really harming anyone. Jinan said that this being that lives inside him can't even harm him, not to mention the other living beings that surround him. The old man was alert when he heard these words from the guy, he did not understand how to react to him. The old man lowered his head down and replied that there are many mysterious things happening in the world that are hard to find answers to and you can't be sure if he didn't say that he was very pleased that one of these mysterious things was now standing right in front of him. Jin Young replied that he is very grateful to this man for thinking that about him. Jin In said that for the first time he sees a person who is able to notice his energy and asked how this Musterik managed to see another being in him. The old man looked at this guy, then turned around, lowered his head and told him to follow him and start walking towards the forest. Jinan had to decide what to do, he did not understand how much he could trust this old man, but in the end he nevertheless agreed and followed him. They came through the forest and went to the waterfall, they started climbing on the rocks and at some point the old man stopped. Jinan stood close to the old man and asked what exactly this man wanted to show him. He asked the guy that he was here. And a huge wall appeared in front of which a lot of different symbols from the ancient language were drawn, which modern people know nothing about. Jinan replied that he sees all these inscriptions, but he was interested to know why the old man showed him this place on one of the inscriptions was written chosen iron, translated into our people, this phrase means two souls in one body. Two. The Taoist replied that it was one of the eighteen writings he could find and he confessed that he had read all the books in the master's room without his knowledge. And that is why I was able to see in the guy the hidden potential of a second soul that no one else knows about. But he admitted that this is not enough these letters are only a small part of what he was able to learn and further he had no progress. Taoist, invite the young scientist to try to solve all these letters with him, because he himself was not able to do it. He wanted to decipher the ancient writings with him and learn as much as possible about the people who have two souls inside. He wanted to know how many other people in the world have a second soul. Jinan said that he studied these writings for a very long time, so he knows very little about them and it will take a very long time to interpret these writings. The Taoist of the guy does he have someone who is able to immediately interpret all these letters and make them out without spending a lot of time on it. Jinan remembered his father because he was the only person who was able to study this entire wall and translate all these letters in a short period of time but more than ten years have passed since he was imprisoned in the imperial dungeon and he did not even know that he was a live father or not. Taoist asked the guy if he wants to save this person and the guy answered the old man that this is his main goal and therefore he is now heading to the server in order to save him. The Taoist replied that he would go with him and help him save this man so that later he would help him decipher all these ancient writings. They left this place and started heading towards the city in order to return back. They walked in silence for a very long time, but at some point yes, I decided to turn to the guy and say something. Taoist asked the guy why did he have to dress up so beautifully because he feels uncomfortable in new clothes. Jinan asked the old man is he really going to go to the mountains, this is in those rags that he met him, this appearance is not at all appropriate and he would not want to be accompanied by a person who walks in tatters. The Taoist asked the guy is it really so important and the guy answered him that there are limits to everything you need to be responsible for your appearance so that there are no problems in the future. Jin Young asked this man who he wanted to meet before leaving to say goodbye because they will be gone for a very long time he does not know when they will come back here next time and if they will even be able to come back. Taoist farewell to meet his mentor and say goodbye he wants to see him one last time before leaving. He admitted that his mentor had harbored a grudge against him for 20 years and had to meet with him once before leaving in order to resolve past conflicts. Jinan said that after 20 years of resentment that was between them this person can get so angry that he will even kill him but yes, 
he reacted normally to this and even laughed he said that everything is in order and replied that his mentor is not such a cruel person. The Taoist said that he would go to see his mentor now and ask the guy to wait here and not go with him because they needed to figure everything out alone. Jinan stayed waiting on the street near the house and Das went to visit his master and he opened the door and said mentor we haven't seen you for a long time. The time has come and after that he disappeared. He closed the door behind him and Jin Young stood and waited for this person to finally return. A couple of minutes after this Dawes entered the house and screams began to appear from the house, these were screams and his mentor he shouted at the Dawes but that that shameless person and why did he even decide to probably give it. This, the mentor yelled at his student and said that for all the troubles that he had done, it was necessary to kill this guy a long time ago. Yun heard screams from this house and decided to come and find out what was happening here she asked the guy why are these people in the building screaming so loudly maybe they have some problems or something happened. Jinan that nothing terrible is happening there you just had love cries of goodbye the girl was very embarrassed when she heard these guys phrase love cries. Jin Young said that these people who are now yelling at each other in the building just had a lot of different grievances accumulated over 20 years and therefore they need to sort it out among themselves now it may take a little time. Jin Young somehow looked very bad after meeting this mistress and asking her what happened why she was so pale. She replied that nothing terrible had happened to this, the lady wanted to go with them to the north. She said that she was a little worried about her father, who was left alone in association, because something might happen to him. He must be very worried about everything that is happening right now. Jin Young replied that she had better worry about the mistress who wants to go with them because this lady can obviously cause problems the girl laughed. Taoist flew out of his mentor's house and fell to the ground. Before the code, he said that he would come back here and visit the old man. The old man came out of the building and told him not to come here again and if he doesn't come next time he'll just kill this idiot he doesn't need such a lazy and useless person who can't feed himself. The Taoist was very angry with his mentor because he wanted to apologize to him for everything he had done in twenty years and ask him for forgiveness, but everything turned out absolutely not the way he wanted it. Jinan asked this Das if he could have avoided such a conflict or if it was beyond his power. He replied that this is the best way to release the old man's anger because this man was already so angry at everyone that he needed to take out this anger on someone. And who, besides his best student, could help the old man pour out all his anger? Yes, he admitted that he was already used to it and just helped the old man calm down a little. Jinan was surprised to hear such words from this person he could not believe that someone in this world is capable of such a noble deed listen to these very many insults in your address only to make the other person feel better. Young asked the guy who was this person who was now standing in front of them because he didn't tell her anything about him at all. He said his name is Yung Guan and he recently met this young man. The old man laughed and said that after meeting this young man he made such good friends that he decided to go north with him. It was magnificent weather, clouds floated across the sky and the sun shone so brightly that the desire to smile stopped every minute more and more. The carriage set off again and headed north. Yung Guan was lying on a bench. The guy was trying to fall asleep all this time, he sat with his arms folded on his chest and also tried to sleep at least a little, but he couldn't. He was constantly disturbed by various thoughts that did not allow him to rest in peace. He thought that Sun was accompanying them on their way north only because Ms. Ha Ju Ryong was with them. And he did not mind that the lady was traveling with them, he did not understand why I needed this, but nevertheless he treated her more or less positively. Most of all, he was worried that the same strange guy went with them, which annoyed him very much and he could not be in the same space with this man. This man seemed to be the most disgusting guy that Jinan had ever seen this gentleman. So he acted very narcissistic and vile. One and the accompanying guard drove ahead of everyone and at some point he noticed something strange. He then heard some strange sound and decided to listen better because it could be another ambush or a raid that was waiting for them. He raised his hand and asked all the other crew members to stop so that he could check what was happening there. Mr. Sun drove up to him and asked what happened and why their carriage stopped. In front of them was a small group of people, they were all dressed in white clothes and sat on the ground. San was dissatisfied with the fact that these people blocked the whole road and did not let him pass, but the guard asked him to pay attention to their clothes. They were the mountain dwellers of Zhongmiang. San asked the guard why these people are blocking the passage and not allowing them to pass. The guard replied that he did not know why. These people block their way, but said that they are definitely not enemies for them. After all, 
they have quite good relations with people from these places. One of the soldiers approached the captain and asked what was the matter and what should they do now because they did not have time to stay here for a long time. At that moment, the mountain dwellers noticed a wagon that was not far from them. One of the mountain people informed all the rest of his brethren that two people were approaching them. Their leader warned all other members of the group to prepare for an attack. At that moment, while two guards were approaching these mountain people in order to ask them kindly to clear the passage for them, the mountain people themselves began to take out their weapons. Jinan felt a very strange energy, he realized that everything is not so simple here and most likely these people are not as benevolent as the captain thinks. Taoist Guang also felt a very strange energy coming from these people and asked what happened. He woke up because he felt this strange energy but when he turned his head there was no one around him. Jinan approached the captain to warn him of his suspicions. He urgently needs to withdraw the soldiers because this most likely could be a trap. The captain asked about some kind of trap, the guy is now telling him, because they were the most ordinary mountain people and he didn't see anything suspicious here. Sun also agreed with Jin Young and asked the captain to call the people back just to play it safe and be on the lookout. He that those people were not their enemies. But at the same moment they abruptly stood up and jumped on two soldiers who did not suspect anything. These people pounced on two soldiers who did not even have time to get their weapons and they immediately killed them by piercing them with swords several times. The captain really couldn't believe his eyes it was a trap and two of his soldiers died so fast he didn't even realize what had happened. These people looked very dangerous, bloodthirsty, they were ready to kill everyone who stood in their way, but no one understood why they did it. One of these monsters stepped on the body of a dead soldier and then stepped over it. The captain asked these people why they did this and what was going on here, he did not understand why these people decided to attack them. They looked very dangerous. Although these people should have been allies for their association, they began to gather in a heap to go in the direction of the carriage. One of these people asked his leader what to do next. Their leader grabbed his sword and pulled it out of its sheath after that he said break through the guards and kill the woman in the wagon. He pointed his sword in the direction of the carriages and gave the command to attack these people. Jinan was already standing and waiting for a collision with these people, he was ready for battle and understood that he still had to protect the carriage at any cost. The three of them jumped on the guy and he gathered chakra in his fist in order to stab him. He took out the opponent with one blow and pierced his body with his fist through and through, the other two thugs ran past. Jinan why did these people run away because he thought they wanted to kill everyone and fight him too. At that moment, he realized that their goal was not to fight, but to kill Lady Cho. Jinan summoned the fairy Selfina, she was sleeping as usual at that moment, but he woke her up, she was unhappy with this and asked what he needed. The guy takes a selfie to make whirlwind and stop these two thugs from getting to the carriage. He used flame magic to set these people on fire he decided to do a combination of two spells. The fairy made a very strong whirlwind that was able to stop these two thugs and the guy used the fire release spells and combined the two spells together, resulting in a fire whirlwind. The fairy said that she wanted to go and continue sleeping she didn't want to do anything else the guy noticed that this fairy hadn't changed at all the last time he called her. Jinan noticed that the bodies of these two thugs were burned, they were lying dead on the ground. He noticed that when they use the most ordinary base in magic, the thirst for murder does not awaken in him like last time, and he feels calm without letting dark energy into himself. Thanks to this spell, Jinan understood what his problem was now and now he understood what needs to be done so that the thirst to kill does not awaken in him. One of the thugs still didn't die and survived. He got up otherwise to shake himself off and try to understand what had just happened to him, the guy asked his demon to monitor the regulation of his magical power. The captain was attacked by one of the thugs and has already swung his sword in order to kill him. The captain dodged this man's sword and did it very easily when he saw him up close, he realized that these were not mountain dwellers, these were Zhongmian warriors. He is very golden that these warriors decided to attack the carriage and kill the lady he took out his sword from its scabbard and with a quick blow of the ball killed his opponent he asked these bastards how they dared to make such an assassination. He was immediately attacked by three more thugs, they began to surround him from different sides and try to attack. The captain was a very experienced warrior and went through more than one battle, but he did not know if he could deal with three opponents at once. But he still managed to make a series of quick attacks and thanks to his fast wind technique, he was able to cut their throats with the blade of his sword. The captain felt that danger was approaching him from behind and he needed to quickly decide what to do with the enemy behind him. 
Behind him, the enemy was already standing and wanted to strike from the back like a rat, but the captain managed to notice this in time and block this blow. Only thanks to his intuition, he now survived. He flew back after this blow and was barely able to stay on his feet. When he stopped he was able to see the face of the thugs attacking him from behind. It was Du Chu Moon the leader of all these thugs, he personally wanted to kill the captain from behind. This man made a leap and swung his sword over his head he wanted to strike a very strong blow to defeat. During the battle, the captain tried to understand why they decided on them on the pass. He asked this man directly. Why are they doing this, because they dress like mountain dwellers? It was very mean and few people could do such an act. This man didn't want to tell him why they did it he just said it was none of his business. They continued their battle and we threw each other quick blows with swords after which we blocked and dodged. The captain used a quick wind blow technique and filled his sword with wind magic. He struck but his enemy managed to dodge. The leader decided to immediately counterattack his opponent when he saw that he missed his blow. Due to the captain's mistake, this man was able to stab him with his sword and injure his hands, after which the captain dropped the sword from his hands. This man said that they would leave as soon as they deal with the girl, other people are not interested in them and then thanked the captain for recognizing him. But this man immediately changed his mind and said that now he wants to kill absolutely everyone here. Because it will be more interesting this way. Guan Yu immediately went to the heart of the battle, he understood that he urgently needed to help the captain. Guang made a quick jump and kicked the sword out of the man's hands in mid-air. Guang said that you can immediately see from the face of this person that he is a psycho and there is no point in communicating with him. He did not expect that the course of the battle would turn so much that another person would appear to confront them. He was very surprised when he saw that this man blocked his sword with just one kick. He raised his sword from the ground but then felt that his hand was numb. The blow was so strong that he now cannot control his hand. He realized that the person who is now standing in front of him was very strong and he needed to be dealt with as quickly as possible. He immediately decided that he needed to hit his opponent very hard and cut him into two halves. He swung his sword and delivered a very strong blow that was supposed to kill anyone who falls under the blade of the sword. After the blow, he saw something completely different from what he wanted to see because there was no one in front of him. His opponents very quickly ran away, evaded the blow, only a huge hole remained after this strong blow. Guan was able to disappear at the moment he needed, it was one of those techniques that he mastered very well and now he teleported over the head of his opponent. The enemy felt that this man was now above his head and he needed to quickly decide how he would fight off this attack. He grabbed his sword and made a quick swing to block the blow. He managed to block the Daza's blow with his sword but barely or put the sword in a defensive position. Guan jumped back and landed on the ground, after which he just sat quietly for a few seconds in order to come up with a new plan of attack. Guan began to deliver very fast blows from different sides, but his opponent was strong enough and fought back for some time, but after four attacks, he began to lose his vigilance and the Taoist began to inflict a very strong blow on him, which was no longer possible to block. This man did not understand how to fight off this crazy warrior. He grabbed his sword with his hand and tried to fill it with magical energy in order to launch a strong counterattack. Guan was quite a nimble fighter able to dodge this attack. Guan knew that he couldn't let this man break through his defenses and let him stab him in the chest. He is a very fast jump up and despite the hundreds of blows that flew at him, he still managed to dodge them in flight. Guan found the right moment to launch his counterattack and finally break through this man's defense. He no longer understood how to fight off this crazy warrior because none of his techniques could help him get through to him. Guang did his signature technique which allowed him to land a very strong kick from the side. He you were able to break through his defenses and kick him right in the head after this kick, few people were left alive. After this blow, his teeth began to fly out in different directions, the pain he experienced was unbearable. Guan asked this man before he passed out if he expected to fight such a crazy enemy. After this blow, the enemy fell to the ground. He broke his shoulder after he fell because the blow was very strong, but he still managed to get up after this blow. He understood that he would not be able to defeat his opponent. The only thing he could do in this situation was to shamefully run away. He made a jump and after that, Dawes still didn't understand why this guy decided to run away. Jinan at that moment fought with the rest of the thugs and scattered them in different directions one by one, he dealt one of them a strong blow with his fist and broke his skull. He hit this guy so hard that after hitting, he almost or not fell through the ground. 
Jin Young asked the rest of his group members to quickly fight these idiots and finish this fight because he was starting to get tired. This psycho decided not to leave the battlefield, but simply change his opponent and attack the guy he thought that this guy would be weaker than his previous enemy. He at least someone before he runs away from here because he had no desire to leave empty-handed. Jinin managed to grab this man's hand and prevent him from slashing with his sword. He asked him who he was and why he decided to attack him. Jinin started squeezing his hand so hard that the man started writhing in pain because he couldn't do anything else. He told Jin Young that he himself is from the Bekma fortress and if this guy breaks his arm then he will have to answer for his act later. One recovered during the battle and shouted very loudly that the leader had been defeated and their affairs were very bad, so he called on all the other thugs to immediately retreat back in order to die here. But San stopped these people with a threatened sword so that they could not escape. The soldiers surrounded the remaining group of these thugs and herded them into a trap in the middle of the battlefield. The captain ordered all the rest of his soldiers not to let anyone go and to detain absolutely everyone who attacked them. These people had to pay for what they had done and for killing two good soldiers. Suddenly, a lady appeared on the battlefield. The soldiers paid attention to her and asked what she was doing here, but she told them that she wanted to pass and asked them to make way. The captain limit madam that it's very dangerous here now she'd better go back to the wagon because she could bring trouble on herself if these people want to attack again. She said that everything is fine and she was very surprised that the great Du Chu Moon himself came for her. She looked into the eyes of one of these thugs and made sure that they were called here from the fortress in order to kill her. She said that these people were hired by the mountain dwellers to kill her and it was all because her clan was at odds with the trade association so they ordered her head. She, I knew that these people wanted to kill her at the request of a man named Mangium. Jean Young was surprised when he realized that their target was a completely different lady, he all this time thought that these people were encroaching on Lady Cho. She asked the captain to let all these people go safe and sound. The captain was very indignant at this decision of the lady, because he did not understand why she was doing this, and the lady answered him that it would be better for them to leave with their carriage from here and asked the captain to take care of the wounded soldiers and bandage their wounds. Jinan didn't understand why the mistress ordered all these people to be released because they tried to kill her and deserved to die or deserved to be arrested. Ms. Ha to let all these people go explained that they already had very heavy losses because of her clan. She asked all these people to return to her fortress and say hello to the Lord to tell him that she is still alive and their mission failed. She tells the Lord that his warriors lost this battle and fled from here you in disgrace and thanks to the mistress they all remained alive. The warrior lowered his head down and replied that he would convey everything to the Lord word for word at the request of this lady, this would be a sign of gratitude for the fact that she spared them. They started to run away one by one from the battlefield and the soldiers were very indignant that they still had to let all these thugs go. She asked the captain to collect the files of all the wounded soldiers on both sides and heal their wounds and then go on the road again the captain did not agree with this decision, but still he had no choice and he had to do it. Jinan was watching the mistress closely all this time and judging because she said earlier the fortress which she said would be a predicament for her. Jinan understood that these people should be extremely grateful to this mistress, because it is only thanks to her that they are still alive and have the opportunity to return to their fortress. He understood that if these people want to continue to exist normally and I feel safe, they will have to forget about trading with the association forever after this act. Ms. Ha was about to go to her carriage, but before leaving, she noticed the guy. She looked at him carefully, but Jin Young did not pay attention to her at all, and this made the girl very angry, she turned her head and went on. Jinan did not understand at all what this girl was thinking now, her actions seemed to him stupid and thoughtless. Miss Cho all this time stood near the carriage and watched everything that was happening, she was also very surprised by what happened now, but I had no time to get into these matters. She asked her sister if she was okay and how she felt the situation had to endure a very difficult. Ms. Ha said that everything was fine with her and you shouldn't worry about it at all, because she did it as she saw fit. The girl all this time thought about that guy she could not believe that this young man really has such strong abilities and in addition to his abilities, he was also able to combine two whole spells into one. She thought that if he was capable of this, then he could be very useful to her in the future and she should find a common language with him. Yun saw the anxiety in front of her sister, did not understand what the problem was, she wanted to help and support her, but first, it was necessary to understand what this girl was thinking. 
Ms. Ha replied that nothing terrible happened to her, she just dreamed a little and went into her thoughts. When she was about to enter the wagon, she told her sister that until the preparations were finished, it would be better for them to wait all this in the wagon and not look at the wounded soldiers, because this could have a bad effect on them in the future. All this time, Yun thought about what she saw in the eyes of her sister, she seemed to look into her soul again and she became not mindful of what she noticed there. Young was peeping at her from around the corner and saw Ms. Ha standing next to an unknown person and talking about something in the middle of the night in the courtyard. They looked at each other and talked about something, but she could not hear their dialogue, she did not understand what these people were talking about. Yun was able to take a closer look at the strange eyes this lady had, these eyes were not like human eyes as if they were filled with some strange energy. She was very frightened when she saw this terrible look at the mistress and did not know what I should do with it now. After that, she transferred the memories of this lady to another space and was already in the middle of the courtyard, but only it was no longer night but day. In the courtyard of Mrs. Ha, a dead man was lying near the wall, his body was pierced by a sword that stuck out in his heart area. This man was sitting leaning against the wall and dripping blood. Yun saw how people noticed this man and began to approach him they did not understand what happened to him no one knew about it but if she saw it, then it was a memory in the soul of Ms. Ha. Young understood that this man in the yard was killed by the mistress herself and now she could not even imagine what this girl was capable of next time. The man slammed his fist on the handle of his throne with all his strength. This man was angry. This man on the throne was the same lord from the tower about whom so much was said during the battle, his subjects came to him and told him that they had lost the battle, he was outraged by this and began to shout at his subjects for the fact that instead of killing them the girl was disgraced by the lord. He was very angry with them for dishonoring the name of Bekma Fortress. The Lord ordered his subjects to go and find out everything about those people who protect the lady. He needed to understand where they found such strong warriors who are ready to resist a whole detachment of the best fighters of this tower. Before him appeared a man with a bald head dressed in solid clothes. This man most likely holds a very important position in the tower, he did not address the owner. He told the Lord that he himself would personally deal with this matter and would do everything so that the name of the tower would not be defamed. The Lord thought about such a proposal, but he had some misgivings about this account. He asked this person who volunteered to do this task himself if he would do something stupid like the last time he went on a task. The man did not understand what kind of nonsense the Lord was telling him, because he always performed his tasks perfectly and there were no questions for him. The Lord said that he agreed to let him go on this task. It was this warrior who allowed him to go and find out everything about these people who are guarding the carriage. But before sending this man on a mission, he asked not to touch the people from the association, because it was not yet time to attack them and you need to be very careful with them. Because if they touch the association now, then their peace contract will end forever. The warrior replied that he would do everything in the best possible way, as the Lord asked him and immediately went on a mission. They stopped to spend the night in one of the cities. Sun and Tak walked around the territory of this hotel and talked to each other. Sun said that Jin Young has an outstanding ability in martial arts and what he did during the fight can really be considered an amazing act because it's not every day that you see a person who knows martial arts so well. So he said that this is just a martial art and there is nothing surprising in this. He did not want to continue the conversation on this topic and decided that it was better for him to leave and left his brother alone in the middle of this courtyard. Sun thought that if you can capitalize on this power, why not do it, because if the guy is not really so good at martial arts, you can use it. It was already evening outside, and he was watching the moon light up the whole yard. Young came up to him and said that tomorrow they were leaving. She once again decided to thank the guy for the fact that he protected her for the second time and did not allow this thug to kill the lady. She said that if not for him, they would not have been able to get there alive. But he asked her what she was going to do now after they arrived here. The girl that she has a message from the head and these messages will affect her future fate. She said that in order to improve relations with the Sea Dragon fleet, they want to connect her with young master Ha Gu Sang. She said that her father refused to marry Mr. Tuck because he attempted to assassinate her and wanted to steal it, which is not her father's credibility. The girl said that first you need to deal with this matter and then think about what she will do next. Jean Young asked her why they wanted to marry her to this young master and assumed it was Ha Ju Ryong's idea. She replied that most likely everything is exactly as he says, although this is only her assumption, she cannot be sure of this. 
He said that it was all because she had an interest in the elder master and this was all in order to get him the girl replied that everything should be like that but it was different. She said that the whole problem was precisely that she had magical eyes that could look into the soul of people and the lady wants to make sure that no one will take anything away from her. Jean Young asked what would happen if she still cancelled this engagement. Yun said that if she refuses then the support of the fleet will be stopped even if the sea dragons are on the verge of extinction, then the association will not lend a helping hand. He said that the dark times had come, but nevertheless, if she needed help, he could always help her. She replied that she did not need help and everything would be fine, she was just tired of everything that was happening and wanted to talk to someone about her problems. She admitted that it was all very strange and she never spoke heart to heart with anyone, because with him, after all, Jinan was an ordinary stranger for her and was not connected with her in any way. She crossed her arms and began to feel uncomfortable she was very pleased to be near him but she could not afford to get close to him. She asked him for one request that she had wanted to ask him for a very long time. She asked him that if there were big problems with the Sea Dragon fleet, if he could take care of her father. It came in the morning and they gathered near the central gate. Guan looked at the thoughtful guy who had been standing near the gate all this time and dreaming about something and asked him what happened yesterday. He did not understand what was happening to this guy, but told him that someday he would still return to his home, but now he is too depressed for this. Jin Young replied that he had one thing he needed to think about very carefully. He thought that he really wants to help the mistress fulfill her request, but now he was not at all up to it. He was very angry that the mistress had to marry the young master not of her own free will only so that the fleet would remain with the support of the association. He lowered his head down and still could not stop thinking about it, he understood that he still had time, he could do something. He really wanted to help this lady, but first he had to deal with his father because it was much more important. Guan saw that the guy stopped near the building and asked him if they had come there. Jin Young reached out his hand to the doorknob and knocked on the door. Then he removed his hand from the doorknob and could not believe that this moment had finally come. A man came up from the other side of the door and asked who was there. It was a woman's voice. Jinan recognized that voice it was his babysitter he said babysitter it's me. The woman said that she was already very old and hard of hearing, so she did not immediately understand who was standing on the other side of the door. She finally opened the door and asked the man who stood in front of her who he was. Jinan saw this woman and said babysitter you don't recognize me, it's me Jinan. Nanny was surprised when she saw this guy in front of her she couldn't believe her eyes. She asked him if it was for real that he was the same young master who was taken away from her in childhood. She held his hands and began to cry. She couldn't believe that he had really returned home. Jin Young said it was true and he really came home. For the first time in so many years, he went to his home and could not get used to the fact that everything here was the same as before. He went into his father's office, it seemed to him that his father was still sitting there. He ran his hand across the surface of the table and it brought back new memories for him. He began to yearn for those times when his father was still at home. Memories began to wake up in him and he felt nostalgia. He stood for a long time near this table at which my father constantly worked. He looked around him and remembered all the things that were here, they also remained lying in their places. He saw a picture on the wall and remembered that there was his father's vault. The demon said that he would have to go down there to decipher the ancient writings on the stone slab. Jinan replied to demon Sertan that he would definitely do it, but only after he saved his father. The nanny went into the room and asked the master if he had been here before and the guy replied that he had not immediately noticed her presence here. Jinan replied that he was no longer at home and memories flooded over him. He said that he needed to save his father as soon as possible. The nanny did not want to upset him, but nevertheless she understood that she needed to tell him this now. She told them to the guy that his father had been for a very long time and now and no one knows where he is. Jinan asked what it means and how his father disappeared. She told him that one day General Yuck came and told her that the prison in which his father was imprisoned collapsed and he disappeared. He asked the nanny about which specific general she says was it really the same Yuck Du Gam the nanny answered that it was him. She told the boy that this general came from time to time with news from the master, the only way she could hold on to life and understand what was happening in general. She hoped all this time that his father was alive. Jin Young asked the babysitter where his uncle Young is now, and she said he was dead. Gina almost fainted when she heard this. The nanny said that two years ago, on his way back from the imperial palace, bandits attacked him and killed him. 
He asked the nanny if these bandits were caught after they killed his uncle, she replied that no, there was a commotion for about a month, then everything calmed down, some person took the old man's body. Jinan did not understand how to react to all these events and he wanted to find the offenders who killed his uncle. He tightly clenched his fist and said father what the hell is going on here but don't be afraid I'll find you soon. Jin Young met with his old friend and he treated him to tea. He had not seen this man for a very long time and felt a little embarrassed in his presence, but nevertheless he calmly sat at the table and carefully listened to everything that this man said to him. The man looked at the guy and smiled. He said that he was very glad to see him again. Jinan too I was very happy to see this person in front of me he said that he heard the news that he was promoted to lord after he found the thief of the golden temple. General Yuk was sitting in front of him drinking tea Jin Young at that moment congratulated his friend on his promotion. Jin Young thanked this man for helping the nanny all the time while none of his family was in town. But General Yuk said that there is nothing to thank him for, because all he does is only tell the nanny the location of the prisoner. He admitted that all these years he felt guilty for not being able to save the boy and imprisoned him. Yuck was very surprised that the guy still returned to this city and decided to meet him and wanted to make amends, but he could only do this by telling information about his father. Jean Young was very interested in this because although he knows everything that happened to his father during his absence, he wanted to know what happened to him and where he is now. Yuck said that this case about his father's disappearance has become very strange and he will try to tell everything that I know. He that the chamber in which the scientist Ko was located was in a common building and it was impossible to open it from the inside. Jin Young made the assumption that his father was kidnapped, but he did not understand how this could be done. Yuck said that it was not a kidnapping and it was not worth worrying about it. But the emperor himself personally observed his father and the check was carried out very strictly, no one would think about Mr. Ko. But one day a very strange incident happened. Someone decided to blow up the building and the walls of the cell in which his father was sitting were destroyed by a powerful explosion. Jin Young made the assumption that his father escaped from prison by making a huge explosion in the cell and blowing up the walls. Yuck replied that most likely everything was exactly like that, and even the emperor himself was surprised when he found out about this case. He said that after escaping, all the search parties were sent to this mission they investigated but could not find anything, there were no leads. General Yuk personally searched for his father, but this did not give any results, no one knew where his father had disappeared. Jinan asked the general if he could personally conduct his own investigation in the palace and the general was not ready to give him an answer to this question right away he needed to think. Jin Young said that his father often left behind clues that a normal person would not be able to solve, and he made these clues in such a way that only Jin Young could read them. Yuck asked the guy how sure he was that his father could leave clues behind him. The guy confessed to the general that when the soldiers took him from the house for the first time and he had already left clues in his office in which he worked, but only Jinan could solve them. Yuck crossed his arms over his chest and closed his eyes and sighed heavily, he replied that if everything is exactly as the guy says, then he will need to know for sure that Jin Young will share his findings with him. He lowered his head down and sighed heavily. Then the guy said that he would not be able to immediately tell the general about all the finds that he would find in the palace, because this would complicate his search for his father. Yuck was not happy with this answer, but he understood why the guy makes such a decision. He said that it would be difficult to convince him, but he would remember it nonetheless. Yuck said that it would be very difficult for one guy to enter the palace, because now all the people who are on the territory of the palace are constantly being checked. The general suddenly changed the subject and asked how reliable information he had that Jin Young had mastered real martial arts. He told the general a story that there was a grandfather on Chongundong Island with whom he lived in the same cell, this grandfather turned out to be a martial arts master and he taught the guy all his skills. Yuck asked the boy what the name of this old man was and made the assumption that this old man could be called Guyan. Jin Young was very surprised when the general called out his grandfather's name and he couldn't believe that this man knew about him. General Yuck said that the island is under the scrutiny of the army and he heard a lot about this old man. Due to the fact that the imperial services control absolutely everything, you can't even send a letter to this island because it will be read before being handed over to the prisoner, but the general was very reassured by the news that the boy was hooked up to this old man. He took a cup of tea in his hands and took a sip after which he said that he was very glad to hear that the old man decided to share his knowledge and teach the guy martial arts.
The general made a decision and said that he would give Jin Young a high rank so that he could complete this investigation but Jin Young did not expect such a turn of events. Yuck explained to the guy that the palace would not let him in just like that, no one would give him permission to investigate this case. After all, he is an unknown person and this institution is the pride of other officials responsible for the security of the palace. But if he gives him a decent position that will be on a par with the rest of the officials who are responsible for protecting the palace, then he will be able to investigate this matter and no one will be able to present their claims to him. Near one of the hotels there is a man with a displeased expression on his face, tall and holding his hands on his chest, he is waiting for someone. This man asks the man who just approached him why it takes so long to find out the location of that couple. His subject told that the couple that this man is looking for left this place and now no one knows where they are. He said that the only information he could find was that the two were heading north from the fortress. The man took his subject by the collar of his shirt and lifted him up with one hand. He was angry that his subject spent a lot of time trying to get at least some information and could not even find out which road they left. These people he is looking for. He threw it on the ground and said that his subject has time for tomorrow to find all the information about them if he fails to do this then he will be killed. The subject replied that you would do everything to his strength in order to find information about these people. Jin Young and General Yuk approached the palace gate and stopped near the central steps that lead to the palace. Yuk said that they had already come to the place where they kept his father under lock and key and pointed to the wall that was broken after the explosion. The general said that this hole is incredibly large and the stones scattered in different directions after the explosion. Jin Young was very surprised at the room his father was sitting in and he was delighted that his father had such strength to break such a strong wall. Jin Young entered this room and began to look around under his feet, he saw scattered notebooks and papers. Jin In tried. What did his father do here to find out where he could leave clues? He is the village of the general how hard it was for his father to sit in this prison, the general answered him that he knew nothing about it. Jinan said that it would be very strange if his father felt good here, it is unlikely that he would then want to make an explosion and escape from here. Yuck said that at first everything was just this guy looked at the generals in surprise, he asked what this person had in mind. Yuck said that scientist Ko didn't like his job, it looks like he was bullied and tortured for a very long time. But soon after his father was subjected to constant torture and bullying, something strange happened, the guy became very interested in the story of the general and listened to him attentively. Yuck often watched his father and he had the feeling that this man was able to take possession of the emperor and control him. When the scientist Ko asked the emperor for something, he always did everything for him so that he would not be asked, this caused some suspicions among many people who saw their connection. Scientist company always had very strange wishes, Sometimes he asked that no one could enter his cell and refused all meetings, sometimes he asked that his cell should always be clean and that special people always monitor the cleanliness in the cell. Every three or four days the emperor came up with a new wish, always fulfilling them, hundreds of rare old books were brought to him. Jin Young saw one of these books on the floor and decided to pick it up in order to take a closer look at what kind of book it was. Jinan asked the general what kind of books were brought to his father and what exactly he read in his room, because this information can help him move forward in the search for his father. The general asked the guy if his father could write down some clues in books or leave notes there so that they could later find him. Jinan said that this is all quite possible because for some reason he needed so many books, it is unlikely that he could read them all because it would take a long time for what then he needed these books if he did not leave notes. The general said that when all his books were taken out of the cell, they were checked very carefully. They wanted to make sure the books weren't soiled or damaged after being used by scientist Ko. Yuck suggested that these people who were checking the books would immediately notice some new entries in them and would report it to the emperor. Jinan said that this is a very good theory and thought that the emperor himself could constantly personally check. Jin Young closed the book and said that everything is not as simple as it seems at first glance and he has one more thought about this. He said that there are things that even hundreds of people will not notice if they really want to, just because they don't know anything about it. The man continued his search and tried to find people who defiled the honor of his tower. His subjects returned to him and asked if he could tell him the new news that he had learned. He later said that intelligence had found out the location of these people and now they could no longer follow their trail. The subject told that he lives on the mountain behind the northern gate and you can get there in the near future. He ordered his one by one to immediately go to this place and find this person, but the subjects were afraid, they were ordered not to attack these people. 
he decided to warn his master that an attack without the order of the Lord could have a very bad effect on them and they would be punished for it. He inflicted a strong blow in the chest to his subject for not wanting to follow his orders. He was angry with his subject for something that would take himself inappropriately and did not listen to his master. He ordered him not to talk nonsense and immediately show the way to this place. One by one, there was nothing left but to simply follow the orders of his master. Yuck asked the guy what he's going to do with all the finds he's found here. The general warned the guy that today it's too late to go for books and even if they go to the library now, it will already be closed by the time they get to it. Jean Young replied that in that case he just wants to look in this office and find some more clues. Yuck said that he would leave him here himself and he would go to make a report. The general warned the guy that his friend was waiting outside and it would be better for him to hurry up and not linger in this office, the guy replied that he would try to quickly look around here. On the walls of this office there were various inscriptions in the ancient language and Jinan stood right next to these inscriptions. He drew attention to various things that were in this room and came to the conclusion that an investigation had already been carried out here and many things. Probably thrown away after the investigation, these things could be important for finding his father. All that was left in this room was of no value, they were ordinary items that his father used them. He looked around the room and could not find a single hiding place here or a place in which he could hide on the secret message. But suddenly, on one of the walls of this house, he noticed something very strange and realized that the hint could be found in this very object. It was a pink painting that hung on the wall of this cell, the painting depicted a black and white tree and strange inscriptions were written. The painting on the wall was unique in that it had the style of Shisawa Habil, which is the trinity of poetry, calligraphy and fine art. He carefully examines this picture and reads the texts that were written there. One of the texts read on your hand the shadow of a bird. And after another one, and now there are two of them, but suddenly you will see a third bird. Shadow, in fact, there are only two of them. He began to read the poems that were written in this picture or look for clues in them about where his father could be hiding. Jean Young noticed that all of the text in the picture was written by a child as a joke or was meant to be. But then he began to remember that he had already heard these words somewhere and they seemed very familiar to him, but he could not understand where. When Jean Young was little, he constantly listened to his father and his father told him that learning never ends, it is forever. Dad often told him about the Elder Scrolls, about the fact that it is impossible to study them all, but you can study forever in order to learn something new. He showed him one of these scrolls and said that at first glance it looks like bird tracks that the child drew in this letter. But if you look at these lines from the other side, then they hide the real soul of a person. Jinan concludes that if you know one side then you can understand the other side of these lines. In the meantime, he did not understand what was the meaning of these letters. He needed to find a clue that would help him solve this riddle that his father left. He turned around and saw that on the wall were written in the ancient language a hieroglyph and various inscriptions. But the guy did not understand what these inscriptions meant. Jin Young spent a lot of time in this room and left it only in the late afternoon. Young Guan said that he had been waiting for the guy at this place all day and was very tired he asked him if Jin Young would like to go to the tavern with him. Guan asked the guy if he was going to go to sleep or would he continue to search for his father all night. Jinan did not even know what to answer his friend to this question, his head was disturbed by very serious thoughts and he would hardly be able to sleep today. He remembered the inscriptions that were on the wall and understood that one of them said impeccability. But what did his father want to say with this phrase? These were word games that Jin Young couldn't understand yet. He should have figured it all out, but nothing came to his mind. The guy could not stop thinking about it and he focused all his attention on unraveling these symbols. Guan didn't understand why his friend didn't answer him anything and walked silently all the time and thought about something. Guan called his friend very boring due to the fact that he is not distracted from his problems at all and cannot even do something more interesting than solving these symbols for a couple of minutes. A man began to go to meet them on the street except for them, and it was surprising that someone else was walking down the street at such a late time. Guan was wary when he saw this non-acquaintance in front of him, he felt that some kind of conflict could begin now. This stranger stopped right in front of them and wouldn't let them go any further down the street. The man asked these guys if they knew who crippled Mr. Du Chu Moon. Guang had no idea which Chu Mun this person was talking about surprised expression. The stranger decided not to understand this matter and immediately wanted to attack these people in order to avenge them for Du Chu Moon. He delivered a very strong blow, 
after which Guac flew a few meters back. Jinan was very surprised when this stranger showed up and decided to attack them, he did not expect that he would have to fight now. Then this stranger decided to hit Jin Young and before hitting you he shouted to come here to avenge his friend. Jinan blocked his punch with his arm and prevented himself from getting hurt. He immediately flew back after blocking the blow. He needed to be as far away from his opponent as possible in order to control his attacks. But as soon as he moved away from his opponent, he saw that two more warriors armed with swords decided on him from above. But Jin Young managed to notice them in time and therefore was able to evade their attack, the guys missed with their swords and could not deal damage. He noticed their clothes and began to suspect who these people might be and why they had come here to fight them. Jin Young asked these people if they were Bekma Fortress warriors. They decided not to answer his question and instead a guy with a white headband said that their commander would take care of the master, they should deal with this boy. Jinan looked at these guys carefully and did not understand why they wanted to fight them so badly. Guan at that moment was sitting on the floor and holding his hand to his head, he was not ready for the fact that he would be dealt the first blow so quickly. He believed that any conflict can be resolved with words and agree on something but he was very outraged that these people decided to start a conversation with the fists. The commander of these scumbags immediately ran towards the old man in order to inflict the next blow on him. He made a jump and focused all his magical energy in a strike on the old man, he was already ready for battle and was not ready to just give up or take damage just like that. Guan began to collect magical energy in his fists and strengthen them and before striking he warned that now is not the time to make noise because people are sleeping and they would not like to wake up from night screams. They hit each other and a strong energy field appeared between them, which flew in different directions and created a loud noise. Guan flew back after landing this punch, he was thrown back by a strong energy wave. The stranger was much stronger turned out to be at first glance after their blows the earth began to crack and a hole appeared in this place. He then said that he was very disappointed because he thought that the old man would be much stronger and did not understand what kind of grandfather this turned out to be such a strong warrior as his friend. Guang said that this person is very arrogant if he believes that no one can defeat him. He got into a fighting stance and prepared for battle. Now the old man understood that he would have to fight seriously and give 100% in battle. Guan decided to strike back at his opponent and show him what he can do. He punched him right in the face put all your power into your punch. But the commander decided to marry him right away. Strike back and also hit the old man in the face. He began to strike him with quick blows with his fists on the body. Guan did not expect this stranger to be so strong and realized that he needed to come up with a new battle tactic in order to defeat him. He dodged his punch and jumped back now he needed to wait for the perfect moment to land his next strike. Guan gave him a jab with his left hand right in the lower jaw and usually after this blow any opponent lost consciousness and fell in a knockout. But this time everything went wrong as usual and the old man was very surprised that his punch did not knock out the opponent. This man didn't even move after taking damage, he was even able to grab the old man's hand. After that, he threw his opponent to the ground and inflicted very heavy damage on him. Guan lay on the ground and thought that it would be very difficult for him to continue the fight after he fell to the ground. He wanted to scream very loudly at the top of his voice, but it was very dangerous. Men again began to accumulate strength in his fist and wanted to deliver a finishing blow in order to destroy his opponent. He hit him with all his strength with his fist in the face and the old man after that lost consciousness for a while. He began to accumulate his strength in the second fist in order to continue a series of attacks to finish off his opponent he wanted to destroy once and for all and did not understand why this old man C waved his friend. But he was not allowed to finish off the old man because another warrior flew into his body and threw him aside. At that moment, Guan woke up and saw that someone else had intervened in their fight and helped him fight off this crazy person. Jinan saved Guana, throwing this man aside for a while, he approached the old man and asked if everything was all right with him, but the old man did not yet know what to even answer him because he was shocked by what had just happened. Jinan helped the old man to insert from the ground took his hand Guan at that moment said that he was very grateful to his mentor for the fact that he was constantly beating him and he was already used to it. The man rose to the ground, wanted to continue his fight, said that he did not expect this guy to be so strong, because all this time he thought that he was fighting against garbage that was stalling for time. Jinan immediately began to unleash a series of quick attacks in order to knock his opponent off balance. He did not expect that the guy would attack so quickly, 
he hardly had time to dodge his blows. Jinan was not afraid of this man because he considered him a weakling, just as weak as the two warriors he had just defeated. The guy began to inflict another series of fast and so directly into the body of his opponent, from which he could not evade. He did not have time to block these attacks and did not expect that the blows would be so powerful, he took all the blows to the body and felt severe pain. Jinan wanted to end this fight as soon as possible, so he used one of his strongest techniques that help him finish the opponent with one blow. This martial arts technique was taught to him a long time ago by his teacher in prison, and now it's time to put this technique into practice. The blow was so strong that after it there was a very bright flash of blue color and this man in the wall of the house who was behind him. Jinan was waiting for the smoke to dissipate after this man collided with the wall and wanted to see what was happening to him now and what state he was in. The walls of the house were broken. This man was sitting on his knees and blood was dripping from his head. He received very strong damage and could not understand where you came from in this guy there was such great power, he expected that his opponent would be twice as weak. He was ready to fight to the last drop of blood, because he simply had no other choice, and therefore he again began to collect energy in his fist in order to strike again. But Jinan was much faster than his opponent and therefore immediately blocked his attack and delivered another strong blow after which the walls of the house became even more broken. Jinan did not understand why this stranger wanted to fight them so much he had already received enough damage to surrender to us, he continued to fight anyway. They broke another wall in the house and now this house resembles an abandoned ruined building although literally 10 minutes ago it would have been a good beautiful house. Guan noticed that their opponent had disappeared. He asked the guy what happened to him. Jin Young said that this man ran away because he was no longer able to fight. Guan was surprised that this man even took his two servants before running away and disappeared so quickly that they did not even notice him. The demon was unhappy that these guys ran away like cowards, he wanted to get as much information out of them as possible in order to understand their motives. Jin Young suggests that these people were from Bekma Fortress and that's why they were hunting for people from the association but he still didn't understand why they decided to attack them now. Most likely they decided to make this attack because of the situation that happened in the forest and that's why they want revenge so much, but if you don't continue it, you want to attack them, then there will be very big problems and you need to hurry. They went to the library, but there were already people in green kimonas who were constantly studying books. These people were constantly moving books from one place to another looking for some new sources of information. Guan had never been to such places and saw such a large library for the first time. He, that there are so many books here, made sure that this library is really worthy of the imperial palace. Jinan found the department in this library that they needed and told them to go there. A man in a green kimono with a white hat sat near this dress and wrote something in his notebook. This man was responsible for helping visitors find the right books. Jinan approached this man and decided to ask him how to find one of the books he is looking for. Library worker asked the guy what exactly he is interested in Jenyan replied that he arrived on the orders of the Lord, he needs to find out a few things and the Lord should have warned this person about such a visit. The librarian replied that he was told that a recently arrived official was coming and he received a message about this this morning so he will help the guy find what he is looking for. He was told that the official would be interested in the ancient books that were taken from Scholar Ku's prison cell and Jin Young replied that everything was correct. He asked the guests to wait a little while he and the rest of the library scientists collected all those books that were seized from the prison cell. After 10 minutes, he came and put a whole mountain of books on the table and said that this was only a third of all the ancient writings that were seized. He said that as soon as they finished with these books, the rest of the books would be brought to them. Guan said that it would be difficult for him to read all these books while in the library and he would like to change this place to some more convenient one. Jinan has already begun to study the ancient writings and said that unfortunately they cannot go outside the library with these books and therefore it is better for them to start studying right away. They spent the whole night in this library and when the morning came they still continued to study the ancient writings. They tried to find the answer in at least one of these books but everything was unsuccessful there was no information that could help them find his father. Sertan said that it was all unsuccessful and made no sense in these books there was no important information. Jinan is already very tired because he spent the whole day studying all these books and did not find a single clue. He put the book on the table and closed it. Her eyes were already starting to hurt from constant reading and he realized that he needed to take a break. 
His hands began to fall due to the fact that he could not find anything and among the hundreds of books that he needed to read, the clue could be hidden in one of them and whole years could pass in order to find. Guan also did not find anything in these books, he believed that this was just a waste of time that would not help in any way. Jinan confessed to the old man that he found a few clues in these books, but it still wasn't enough. In the very contents of these books there was nothing that could be useful to them or any sign that his father could hide there as a clue. He thought that his father could just hide his message by using the order of the titles of the books he often used. If they manage to get the books in the right order, then he can find out what message his father left and they will be closer to solving it. Jinan thought that he was waiting for him when the guy came in the yard and wanted to leave a message there that only he could decipher. He began to match the verse that hung on the wall with the hieroglyphs that were drawn by his father, if they were combined to decipher, then there should have been some kind of meaning. These hieroglyphs meant heaven and earth, if you combine them together, you can find the third meaning, that is, your body. Sertan tried to understand the guy's train of thought, but so far he didn't succeed because he couldn't correctly determine the solution to this mystery in his head. But suddenly he realized that his father learned the technique of absorbing the energy of heaven and earth and then learned the technique of controlling the soul, which means that his father was a higher level than Jinan himself. Jinan continued to think that his father might well have learned a martial arts technique called absorbing the energy of heaven and earth and manipulating the soul. And if his suspicions were correct then his father would have studied this technique much deeper than the guy and would have learned the new abilities of this combat technique. Thanks to this technique, he could safely escape from the palace and blow up the wall of his prison cell. But why didn't his father return home to see his nanny and give her a message for Jinan? Most likely, he was simply afraid of the pressure of the emperor and understood that if he met with the nanny, then the imperial army would come to his house and arrest the nanny for complicity in his escapes, but his father would hardly have disappeared and left one nanny. He got up from his chair and decided to walk in order to once again about everything think and find the moment in which he is mistaken. Jinan went outside and was surprised that in this library absolutely no one bothered him to study the books that his father read and the operator did not interfere in his search. Even though General Yuk gave the guy special privileges, these privileges still make no sense to the emperor and he could calmly interfere with the investigation. But the emperor for some reason does not interfere in this process and allows them to further investigate this case. Apparently, he just wants him to find his father and then arrest him again. They again return to the cell in which his father was in order to watch everything carefully again. The general once again asked the guy what he wanted to find here, he didn't understand why they came to this room again apparently, it was still possible to find some clues or evidence here. Jinan said that he managed to find out something in the library, he wants to test his knowledge in this room now and make sure that he was not mistaken. But as soon as he entered the prison cell where his father was sitting, he noticed something very strange and did not understand what had happened during his absence. The inscriptions that were all this time on the walls they disappeared somewhere and apparently someone erased them while they were not here. In this room, absolutely everything was removed and wiped off all the inscriptions that his father left on the walls, this was done in order to confuse their investigation. General Yuk said that it was necessary to immediately report the incident to the minister because someone without permission invaded this room and removed all the inscriptions that could help the investigation. They came to the minister and told about everything they saw this morning and the minister listened to them carefully, after which he was very surprised. Minister asked the guy who he is and made the assumption that he was the same son of the scholar Ko about whom General Yuk spoke so much. The minister said that he called them all. Yes, only because he had something to say to the son of the scientist Ko, but this information was personal. The minister introduced himself and gave his name, his name was Constantine Sun Gak, he was the minister of war and the head of the Golden Guard. Sun Gak turned his attention to Guang who was sitting to his right. The old man felt uncomfortable with her gaze, yes, the minister. Song Gak asked the guys if they have a suspect who could have done this. He suggested that it was probably the work of Wang Hai, who is the leader of the spy squad. Yuck explained that the intelligence corps of the palace, which stands with the Golden Guard, their job is to prevent corruption and uprisings in the government. But in the detention room, Captain Yuck's guards were investigating because it's in their compensation. The minister said that recently there have been many strange behaviors in the intelligence corps. But before he told everything to the guy, he had one more offer that the boy could not refuse. He said he wanted to put Jinan in a senior position so that it would be easier for him to handle this investigation. 
The minister said that with such a title, no one would interfere with him and he would be able to calmly engage in this investigation and do not worry about the fact that someone will follow him or constantly interfere. Jinan was very surprised when the minister offered him to take a leadership position and asked if this decision would be correct and whether he would be allowed to do it, the minister replied that he was allowed to do it by the emperor himself. Jinan was very surprised when he heard that the emperor himself had allowed him to do this and asked what else they had talked about with the emperor. But without waiting for an answer, the guy decided to ask another question and asked how much the minister had heard about him from General Yuk. The minister replied that he knew enough about this young man but the most important thing he needed to know was that his father was in prison. And the guy himself at a young age, he went to Chongandong Island. Jinan understood that there was some kind of catch in this whole situation, he decided to ask one more question to the emperor. He wanted to know why the emperor was behaving so strangely because his majesty sent the boy to prison at a young age and now the emperor offers him a very important position in the palace but the guy did not understand how he could allow him to be left unattended in such a leadership position. The minister understood the boy's anxiety about this topic and was aware of the whole situation, so he decided to put everything on the shelves and explain to the guy that everything is not at all like he thinks. The minister explained to the boy that a lot of time had already passed since he was sent to prison, and first he needed to understand that the past emperor, about whom the young man is now talking, is not in his place, now his highness the crown prince ascended the throne and is responsible for this situation. So, Jinan asked the minister where is the last emperor now and what is happening to him now. The minister replied that no one now knows exactly what is happening with the former emperor, they conducted an investigation and there is some information about where he is now. He said that according to rumors, the emperor has now gone to Jianghu, this is the place where all the hermit gurus and monks are, people come to this place to find peace and solitude. Jinan said that she did not believe in this place, she told him all her life that this is just a fictional place that only happens in fairy tales, but the emperor explained to him that this place really exists. No one in the empire understood how this man could deceive the imperial family and disappear without a trace, no one is even sure that he is still alive and all that is known about him is just rumors and conjectures. But the minister still managed to get some information on this case and said that one of the clans contacted the emperor on this information was also not confirmed. Jinan asked the minister about which clan he was talking about because it could get their cause off the ground. It was a clan of heavenly blood they know little but they were interested in the gold plates and stone tablets that the emperor was trying to decipher this is a shadow clan so we have very little information about them the emperor said. Jinan understood that this clan is interested in precisely those ancient writings that the emperor although translated with the help of his father and this is all interconnected. The shadow clan also wanted to translate these ancient writings and learn the ancient martial arts techniques that were laid down in these writings in order to become stronger. A colonel from Jianhu approached the former ruler of the empire in order to unravel the mysteries of the golden plates and stone tablets when the emperor gained the power to remove his greed, he went there to cooperate with this clan. The minister told him everything he knew about this case and about the former emperor but then he added that there is another reason why he gave the guy such a high position. He asked him to go to Jianghu to find out what intelligence core is for you because this could cause problems for the empire and no one except Jin Young could cope with this task. Jinan was surprised that the minister asks him to be a scout and learn all about the secret plans of this clan of their intelligence core. The minister admitted that he was putting the guy at very great risks, but only in this way, at the cost of the life of one guardsman, I will not be able to get at least some information about this case and the plans of the clan. He was sure that this clan was plotting against the empire. Because they constantly send masters. Under the pretext of watching Jianghu, this raises certain suspicions. The minister is sure that these people have discovered the secret and are afraid that someone else will find out, so he is trying to bury her in this place and not let anyone know about her. The minister could not allow this to happen and leave everything as it is because these people will cause real chaos in the ruling dynasty. And besides the problems of the empire itself, this case is directly related to the guy so he should be interested in this but Jin Young asked how is this directly related to him. The minister said that these people are very afraid of everything that his father knows and therefore his son will be the best way to scare them. General Yuk said it was time for them to leave and the minister calmly allowed them to do so said that they had already been here for a long time and he told them everything he knew. Guan began to suspect something was wrong here, and before leaving, he wanted to ask the minister for something. 
Guang said that the minister's face was very familiar to him and asked if they could see each other before. The minister was furious at such a question and said that this was the highest impudence, because all this time he thought that Guan was just pretending not to know him, but in fact he really did not remember him. Guan was really very surprised when he realized that they really knew each other and the minister knew him personally. The minister at that moment was ready to explode with anger. He said that you need to be a real fool not to recognize your relative. Being next to him, Guan began to feel very uncomfortable and realized that he had heard the minister's name before and it was really very familiar to him. The minister asked the general to leave the room with the boy and leave them alone because they needed to talk in person. Jinan bowed to the minister and said that in this case they would already go and leave and chat together. Guan did not want to be alone with this person in the room but it was already late the minister said that they had a very serious conversation and this conversation would take a long time. Jin Young left the two of them in the room, closed the door on the street, the general was already waiting for him. Yuck was very surprised because he did not think that his acquaintance seemed to be relatives of the minister of war Jin Young was also surprised, but he knew that his friend had previously held a high position. It was not supposed that his friend occupies such a high position and that his relative seemed to be the minister of war. The minister, before letting these people go to begin their task and set off, decided to convey something to them in parting. Jinan asked the minister what it is and why he wants to give this scroll to him. The minister explained that this is not just a scroll, but a letter that needs to be delivered to one person. Jin Young took this letter and asked who exactly he should give it to. The minister replied that this letter should be given to a very old friend whom he had not seen for twenty years but had heard that his friend lived in those parts. He said that it was rather eccentric but there are very few smart people like his friend in this world so if the guy still manages to find him, uh, it would be good if he gave him a letter, it would be a great honor and help from the minister and this person could help him in investigating this case. His friend's name is Xing Guan but people in Jianghu usually call him a hermit and don't particularly like meeting him. According to the rumors that reached the minister a year ago, his friend lived on Mount Mutin, and if his judgments are correct, this person is still located exactly there on this mountain. Jinan said he said that he heard a lot about different hermits but never saw them live and asked how this person can help him and if he wants to help him at all. The minister said that this person simply would not have a choice. How to help him and his help can always be counted on, only it is important to find him. Jinan stayed at the same hotels that were found on the outskirts of the city, he went out into the street, it was already at night he decided to take a walk. He looked around and could not understand what he should do now something disturbed his mind and heart. In front of him was a road that led into the forest and the guy looked at it for a long time. Demon Sertan said that they have a very long way to go tomorrow and it would be better for the guy to go and sleep instead of walking down the street at night. Jinan said that he feels terrible when he is inactive and because of this he cannot sleep calm down the demon asked him why he feels this way because everything should be fine. But Jin Young said that he himself doesn't know why he feels this way and can't answer this question for himself. He was already ready to leave, but he had to wait for his friend to finish talking to the minister. A man approached Jinan and said that he heard that they entered the Golden Guard, suggested that now they are not very busy with various affairs. It was the same little brother of Mr. So he greeted the guy and said that they had not seen each other for a long time and that it was not easy for him to find the place where Mr. Ko was staying. Jin Young greeted Mr. Ha and asked why this man was looking for him. Ha told him not to be afraid of him and he didn't want to do anything wrong he confessed that he came here because he had a very important conversation with Jin Young San. Ha admitted that he did not even tell his sister that he came here and no one knows about his absence. Jin Young admitted that the man was not even close with this man and did not understand why he came here and at least talked to him. Apparently this man had a serious matter since he decided to come here. Ha asked Jen Young if he knew about the Sky Blood Clan and if so then they would have a conversation about it. Jin Young was very wary of this person because they trusted him and thought it was all very strange. He said that this was the first time they heard about this clan and did not know anything about it, but the lord who stood in front of him was very surprised by such an answer. Ha was upset because his interlocutor did not want to be frank with him and said that he wanted to go straight to the point and explain what was the matter of his visit. It was hard for him to talk about it so he paused a little before saying what the essence of the whole problem was. But he still made up his mind and said that his brother and sister decided to secretly make a deal with the Heavenly Blood Clan, and he considered it important to tell Lord Jinan about this. 
He said that his brother and sister are going to invest an absurd amount of money in the Phantom Clan. Although this clan is not even known in Jianghu, it all looks very strange. He was worried that if things didn't go according to plan or if something bad happened, it would not only have a great impact on the association, but also harm the Sky Dragon fleet. He said that he didn't know anything about this clan. But if these two are interested in investing their money in this clan, then they should not ignore this fact and Mr. Jin Young should be interested in it. Jin Young asked this man for what reason he tells him all this. Ha replied that there was no particular reason for this, he just decided to share this information with the master because he thought that he might be useful. He said he wants to be friends with Jin Young and that's the only reason he decided to come here and tell him about this situation. This situation alerted the guys, he thought about it all the time, he could not understand what the people from the association were striving for, it seems that no one knows what is happening in that lair of snakes. He addressed these words to the very man who recently attacked them. He had long noticed that this guy was following him and was somewhere nearby. The Bekma fortress assassin was by his side during this time and he was a little surprised when he found out that the guy had been aware of his presence all this time. Jinan asked this man what he wants from him and why is he following him because he wouldn't come here just like that knowing that there is no point in fighting for him because he will lose again. The killer said that he had no reason to hide and he came here to finish his job. He wanted to defeat Jenyan and, after his victory, take him with him. This was the order of his master, which he was obliged to fulfill. He had already violated one of his master's orders and couldn't just follow the guy, he betrayed his face and now all that remains for him is to defeat the guy and bring him to his master. The killer understood that he was fighting this guy one on one, a very risky undertaking because their forces are unequal, but he had no other choice because he was discovered and now it was necessary to meet face to face. He was ready to make any sacrifice in order to defeat his opponent and take him away with him, he simply had no other choice. Jin Young admitted that he was very surprised at such persistence, because last time he beat him to a pulp and the guy could not understand why such people can never stop. The killer started gathering all the energy and channeling it into his fists in order to start the fight he was serious about fighting this guy. When he had accumulated enough strength, he made a sharp dash towards his opponent to deliver the first blow. He was sure that this time it would be completely different, but nevertheless, he still couldn't hit the target because the guy dodged in time and didn't put much effort into his dodge. His punch had incredible power but still he couldn't hit his target and all that power was directed to the wrong place and he wasted his energy. The killer put a lot of energy into his punches but it was pointless because he didn't hit his target Jin Young constantly dodged all of his punches. Jin In made his counterattack, but this man managed to block it in time with his palm. And he still managed to land his blow right on the guy's chest and this blow was very painful. Jin In was unable to parry this blow and so he flew back a few meters, but he still managed to stay on his feet. This fighter kept throwing his next punches he didn't want to leave his enemy alone because in that case he definitely wouldn't have won the fight. They fought at night in the woods and he hit the guy really fast. Jin In could not withstand such pressure and barely had time to block his blows. The killer was able to grab the guy by the collar of his shirt and lift the air with one hand. He threw it at the nearest tree, which was nearby, and when the guy crashed into this tree with his back, the tree broke. Jinan took very heavy damage after colliding with a tree and fell to the ground, he couldn't even get up after such an attack. The killer began to feel that his body was experiencing strange sensations, as if some kind of strong magical energy was passing through it. His body is otherwise pierced by a magic chain, this chain dealt him incredibly strong damage. Magic chains bound the body of the killer and did not allow him to move, he was trapped. Jinan unknowingly used his dark magical energy and thought it was for the best, because he had one important business with this guy. He dealt him a very strong blow with fire and burned his body, the fact that this killer was closed traps only helped the guy resist him. Jinan came closer to this killer and said that he had a few questions he wanted to ask. The man said that he was not going to give up just like that and would not tell him anything even if he mocked him. But Jinan did not agree that this man was still resisting him he stepped on his foot right on the chest and did not let him breathe. Jinan was not going to forgive the person who attacked him twice and he usually kills such people and does not give any chance for mercy. And it was for this reason that he asked the killer to answer him as honestly as possible so as not to force the guy to mock him. Guan asked the guy what happened to him at dawn and why he was in the forest for so long. 
He wondered where he found this killer and didn't understand why they should follow him. Jinan said that this man will take them to the fortress and then they will be able to personally talk to their leader who for some reason wants to kill them. Jinan said that he didn't do anything like that in the forest, or that he only spoke very sweetly and sincerely with this man, he kindly agreed to lead them to the fortress, and from that moment this killer changed his intentions. He continued to mock this guy and joke with him, but the killer did not answer because he himself was not comfortable with the fact that he had again lost the battle and had to obey this man. Suddenly, on their way, they saw something unusual and decided to stop in order to better understand the situation. In the fox, everything was scattered on the ground, dead people were lying and there was an overturned carriage. Apparently, there was a fight here and someone attacked the carriage. Guan approached the body of the killed man touched his hand and noticed that he was still warm, which meant that only an hour had passed after their death, their bodies are too clean for those who fought and judging by their clothes, these are ordinary wars. The killer took the sword of one of these soldiers and said that they must have been soldiers from Peng and Jin Young was surprised that this man knew them. But he said that he did not know them and understood it was only by their sword, because there would be an ornament on it that proves their belonging to this place. He took the Hong Yuan sword in his hands and showed the symbols that were depicted on it. These symbols mean that the warrior belongs to Penga. They noticed that the blade of the sword was absolutely clean, which means that they were attacked suddenly and they did not even have time to use their weapons in order to fight back. Guan made his assumption that if these warriors were really from this city, then they were strong people known all over the world they could not be defeated by some ordinary robbers and would hardly have been allowed to die without a fight, most likely their opponent was much stronger than them. Jinan did not want to just leave the corpses of these people in the forest and he suggested the idea of going through the mountain ranges because if they go this way and I can't meet the followers of the path of liberation ask them to take care of the dead bodies of these people. But suddenly the guy felt something very strange and turned his head around. He had never experienced such sensations before, he became scared from the fact that he noticed this. He looked deep into the forest and realized that the wind was luring him there and he felt uncomfortable because of this. Guan asked what was happening with the guy and why he was behaving so strangely and the guy answered him that he felt that someone was following them from behind the forest and was doing it very discreetly. The killer said that most likely the criminals who killed these people can follow them, but the guy was sure that this is something other than just criminals. He suggested that they get out of here as soon as possible because something terrible is happening here and they should leave here. On the fields there were only corpses of people, an overturned carriage, there was no one else here. Suddenly a man appeared and began to walk near the overturned carriage, he was alone here and was looking for something. Demon voice asked this man if he could find anything here but the man did not answer. He said that he was a little late and that they had already killed all the warriors, so he could not find anything here. This man had to come up with a new plan in order to figure everything out, but for now he said that everything should be reported to his lord. He was looking for a man named Yoma and had to find him at all costs, but so far he has lost his track and cannot do anything. He had incredible powers was surprised when that guy was able to spot him from such a long distance it was the first time he had seen someone with such incredible power. He wanted to drag this guy into his business and ask him to help him find the person he was looking for. The master was furious when he heard that his people were killed in the forest. He wanted to know absolutely everything how it happened and why they lie dead in the forest he wanted to know who killed them. The people who told him the information said that little is known about this and about the death of people in the forest. Mr. Jean Young, he found a broken wagon when he was heading from north to south and said that there were no survivors and informed the followers about this. They replied that the followers of the Path of Liberation called him a government official and therefore they could trust his words, but the Lord was surprised that the government official himself noticed the dead bodies in the forest. He said that this is how the government official reported it to them. However, the people in civilian clothes did not want to reveal their identities and follow or were unable to find out more information. The master wanted to know what is happening with the object that was transported in this wagon. The followers could not answer him anything about this because nothing was known about this subject. The gentleman asked them what was the probability that these people who reported the news discovered the body, they answered that at the moment nothing can be said for sure. Mr. said that he must personally go and see everything with his own eyes, only the fourth and fifth in succession will go with him, the rest must wait for the next instructions. But the followers said that there was no need to act personally and he could stay in the building, they themselves would do everything for him. 
But he could not ignore this problem, because his brother and nephew died there, he lost children and important things, people's lives are at stake, so he personally must completely cope. An old man who was his uncle entered the room in which this meeting was held and said that for him he was a younger brother for his uncle himself. This man was a son. The old man said that he should personally go and see his son and asked not to forget that the head of the house has many responsibilities about how to protect the family. The gentleman did not know what to answer his uncle, but he wanted to object to him because he felt that he also deserved to go there. Sarek asked to go there personally because it could be his last trip before his death. He would like to see his son at least dead and asked to be allowed to do this. The master allowed his uncle to do this, but ordered that guards and other people accompany him, along with his team, wandered through the forest looking for the right path to the south. A man was watching them all the time. A man watched their every step and did not let them go for a second. He wanted to know who these people were and where they were going. He was very interested in getting to know these people and persuading them to help him, but at some point he saw that the guy had disappeared somewhere his eye. He did not understand how this guy got out so quickly disappeared type of eyes because he was closely watching him all this time. Jinan was behind him all this time he knew that he was being followed and he wanted to know why this person was watching them so closely. He is very surprised when he saw this guy behind him and did not know what to do in this situation, because he was taken by surprise. Jinan grabbed him by the neck and decided to throw him to the ground. He fell to the ground with this stranger and started a fight, no one expected it to happen so quickly and they didn't even have time to notice how the guy disappeared somewhere. For Nick, everything happened so quickly that they did not even understand what was happening here and why there was such a loud explosion behind them. This man was delighted that the guy noticed him and grabbed him, he first saw someone with such incredible strength. Jean Young said that he had a very good sense of the presence of a person near him and asked why this person had been following them all this time. The stranger immediately got down to business and did not even talk for a long time. He said that he had deals with these guys and he would like to ask him for one favor. He said that this case is connected with those people who lie dead in the forest near the carriages, and he needs the help of this guy to sort out this issue. Jean Young asked why he should help him and how he wants to interest him because he has other things to do now and he doesn't want to do other tasks. The stranger said that he could help in the search for the clan of heavenly blood and if this guy helps him find the killers of these people in the forest then he will show the way to this clan. The stranger told that the people who killed the warriors in the forest near the Karyats were members of this bloody clan and now the guy should be interested in sorting out this matter. Three exorcists that had been hiding for a very long time appeared suddenly in the forest all at the same time, this alerted him. He said that he needs to find one of these guys and he will help him pursue the Skyblood clan. Therefore, he once again asked the guy if he would fulfill his request. The stranger still won the favor of this guy and said that his name was Wijihan. Jean Young said that they urgently need to look in one place it won't take long so if this person is willing to wait then help him in finding these people. Wijihan replied that he would be happy to go along with them and wait until they had completed all their business, it was important for him that this guy helped him in investigating this case. In the room sat an old man and around him were warriors in red robes. One of them went up to the old man and said uncle, we found the man you were talking about two hours ago, he was walking with the commander through the forest. The old man was very glad to hear this news and said that if everything is as this man says and not the fortresses are being built. They now need to hurry in order to come to this place as soon as possible. Jinan and his team were stopped in a tavern located near the forest. Wijihan said that in Jianghu he is usually called Sword Black Knitted You this nickname is his calling card, thanks to which everyone will recognize him. Jin Young and Guang said that they heard this nickname for the first time and did not know anything about this person. Wijihan began to feel very uncomfortable and was very surprised that these guys had never heard of him. The big guy was the only person who heard about this guy. He knew that the Abyssal Black Sword was a member of the Eight Main Stars. An old man suddenly entered the tavern with his soldiers and interrupted the work of the guys at the table. He carefully examined all the guys who were sitting at the table and wanted to find a guy named Jinan. They turned on him and began to look at this old man Jinan did not understand why this stranger came here with guards and what he wants from them. One of the soldiers turned to the old man and said that these were the guys they were looking for, and the old man smiled when he realized that they still managed to find them. Wijihian immediately recognized this old man. But in order to make sure he is not this old man, Master Peng Jiai Han of the Peng family, 
Wijihan did not wait for an answer from the old man and immediately realized that it was he who was the guy was very surprised that such a significant person personally came to meet them. Ji Khan looked at Wijihan with contempt and asked the young man who he was and why he spoke so boldly with the master. Wijihan introduced himself to the master and gave his name, then he called his nickname the Black Sword of the Abyss and the big man looked at the guy very surprised. Ji Han opened his eyes and carefully looked at this guy he said that he heard about the master of the eight main stars and said that these masters are not inferior to people from major factions in their skills and then he asked the guy why he came here. Wijihan did not tell the reason why he came here but said that he had business in this place so he ended up here and then asked what brought the master to this place because the way here was hard. Ji Khan said that he had a business with a man in blue clothes and he had been looking for him for a very long time. Ji Han asked the boy if he was a human named Jinan. The guy at that moment was very surprised, he did not expect that such a respected person would look for him in order to offer cooperation. Ji Khan bowed to the guy and said that for starters, he wants to express his gratitude to him for conveying the news of the death of his family in the forest and now, thanks to him, I can't quickly start an investigation. Ji Khan very quickly ended with words of gratitude and wanted to quickly come where he said that he had come here for a reason and he needed to find out the information that Jinan owns. Ji Khan sat on a chair right in front of them and started asking the guys if they saw the criminal who killed his family in the forest or maybe they noticed any traces. Jinan said that he saw absolutely nothing but corpses. They tried to look around the crime scene but couldn't find anything. Ji Khan was not very pleased with this answer but he could not blame this guy. The old man talked about how he knows that Jin Young is a government official. Jinan did not understand what this old man was leading him to, it was a surprise that he knew about his status in society and the guy decided to ask what Mr. Ji Khan really was. The old man said that he had many questions. He once again asked the guy if he saw anything at the crime scene, then asked why the official was heading towards Bekma Fortress. The old man wanted to know why the official was accompanied by Wijihan. Jin Young said that it would be very difficult for him to answer all these questions and would not want to do it. He did not understand why the old man was trying to find out all this. Ji Khan was unhappy that the guy did not want to answer all these questions and decided that he needed to be dealt with in a more radical way and that he would have to beat information out of him. He took hold of the hilt of the sword with his hand and began to pull it out of the scabbard that hung on his back. Jin Young was very shocked that this gentleman exposed his own and began to threaten with a weapon just because the guys did not want to answer his questions. Ji Han was serious and was willing to fight against Jin Young just to get information out he thought it was the best way to have an honest conversation. Jin In warned the old man that such methods are barbaric and if he wants to fight them then it will not end well and it is better to remove the weapon before it is too late. Wijihan was scared when he saw that Jinan was very serious and ready to fight he tried to free him and said that the old man is on the level with 10.000 masters who are the best warriors on the continent and it is better not to joke with him. But Jinan felt absolutely calm and did not worry about the fact that there might be problems with this old man and he wanted to know how strong the Jianghu masters were. So the guy could test his strength and understand how strong he is. Ji Khan smiled and realized that the battle would still begin. Ji Han decided to immediately strike with his sword from above and attack the guy first, but Jen Yin quickly reacted and managed to accumulate energy in her fist in order to block this blow. Jinan turned his fist into steel and thanks to this, he was able to calmly repel the blow of the sword without taking any damage in return. Jinan was very surprised that his body can be so strong and even a sharp sword is not able to damage him if he correctly controls his chi energy and calmly manages it. They started their fight. They struck each other with a quick blow and deftly evaded them or blocked them. Jinan was very surprised that this old man is so good at fighting and wielding his sword despite his old age, he still moves very fast and fights like a real master. But the guy still repelled all of his attacks and for now tried not to counterattack. He wanted to tire his opponent as much as possible by blocking his attacks and dodging them so that he would spend all his energy on attacks. Ji Khan was insanely surprised that this boy was able to block all of his techniques with his bare hands and not spend a lot of energy on it. Ji Khan accumulated a huge amount of electrical energy in his sword and wanted to deliver a very powerful blow after which few people managed to survive. 
Jinan was very surprised when he saw that the old man had such incredible power and he needed to dodge this blow in time. The old man struck with his sword and after that lightning began to fly in different directions in the tavern. Jinan made noise in time to dodge this blow and did not receive damage, but nevertheless he understood that it was so, but it was very strong and if he misses it, then the battle will be over. Ji Han continued to strike intensely and try to touch the guy with his sword and Jin Young had no other choice but to accumulate magical energy. The guy used his fire magic to counter this old man's electrical energy. The guys carefully watched how this battle was going on and Guan said that he had fought shoulder to shoulder with Jin Ion several times, but for the first time he saw that he fought so skillfully and showed all his abilities in battle. Wijihan was amazed that this guy is so good at martial arts and it was the first time he saw such a young martial artist who mastered several difficult techniques at once. They continued their battle, inflicting powerful blows on each other and at the same time repelling them and dodging, they still could not hit each other with Uranus and break through the defense. Sertan realized that the boy needed to be given a hint and asked him to be careful because an incredible stream of magic flows through the sword of this old man if he makes at least one mistake then the guy will die immediately. Jinan was not going to lose this battle and found a good moment to deceive the old man and break through his defense, he was able to deliver fiery punches to his face. G.I. Khan withstood this blow, but it still took a lot of damage, he was able to ferry the fire from his body and throw it to the side. The old man was very pissed off that he didn't manage to land a single accurate blow on his opponent, but the guy was able to just hit him with a fiery fist right in the face, the old man began to accumulate all the anger uh, in his swords and put huge energy into his next blow. After this blow, a huge beam of light was poured out of the tavern and the fight was moved to the street. Now they fought there. Jinan was able to block this attack by placing a fire shield in front of her, but was still knocked back 15 meters. G.I. Khan at that moment was still in the room, he looked at the guy holding his sword in his hands and told him that if he wants to continue the battle, he needs to constantly be focused. Jinan was not going to give up and this battle made him feel the excitement and thirst for victory, he used one of his fighting techniques and summoned the fire sword. G.I. Khan was delighted when he saw that his opponent wielded such a unique technique, it made the old man smile and understand that he was fighting a worthy opponent. They again entered the battle and were ready to face each other in this duel. When their swords touched in the courtyard, there was a huge explosion, it was like a flash of lightning and fire. After their clash in the yard near the tavern, there was a very large explosion and nothing could be seen because there was smoke around. This smoke gradually began to dissipate and fly away. When the smoke gradually began to disappear, Jinan appeared in it, he stood and held his hand to his face, he looked very tired. The guy at that moment began to realize what kind of opponent he was fighting, he realized that it was actually a 10.000 master who owns incredible martial art techniques and he was glad that he fought such a worthy opponent. G.I. Khan approached the boy and praised his skill in martial arts he said that it was amazing the old man himself looks very cheerful and seemed that he was absolutely not tired after this battle. G.I. Khan confessed that he was very impressed that the boy could still stand on his feet despite direct attacks. G.I. Khan asked the boy what he needs to do in order for the guy to tell all the information he knows about the wagon that was attacked in the forest. It was important for him to find out because his relatives died there. Jinan lowered his head down and closed his eyes and sighed heavily. He said that he had several rules and the most important of them was to ask the old man not to take any action on his own. And his second request was that no one should know about this conversation. G.I. Khan scratched his beard in order to make a decision and asked the boy if it is necessary for him to fulfill these conditions and why he wants it so much. Jinan answered the old man that these are his conditions and the only way he can tell him all this information that he knows and explain that this is all only because the story itself is very unpleasant for him and he does not want them to know everything. At the entrance to the tower, the master was waiting for them. He was informed that he had guests, but he could not even think that Jinan himself would visit him. The guy understood that the effect of surprise caught this gentleman by surprise. The warrior approached his master and sat on his knee after that he asked if they needed to deal with these strangers, but the master replied that they should not be touched because these wars are very strong, they cannot be dealt with so easily. Jinan, his team climbed up the stairs to meet this gentleman and find out everything from him. 
This gentleman received guests in his tower and seated them at the negotiating table he said that he had not seen Master Peng for a long time and the old man replied that they had not seen each other for fifteen years since he quarreled with Hyun Gong Hu. He was very surprised that the old man still did not know this and said that he would never forget these times in his life. This was the first and last time he received help from old man Ji Khan. He looked at Jinan and said that he was overly happy to meet the guy and made his assumption that the boy had something to do with him. He asked the guy if he is a member of the Golden Guard and the guy replied that everything is exactly like that and his name is Ko Jinan. The boy said that he came here to see the owner of the fortress because of the incident of treason that occurred in the palace, the old man at that moment looked at the boy very carefully and was surprised by such a request. Jinan said that he knows that the master of the fortress has many connections with groups of dark warriors scattered around the world, this could be very useful to him. He said that the masters of the spy detachment are now operating in secret, but the boy still managed to find information that they are related to the Jianghu warriors and among them there are those who are members of a criminal organization. Jin Young came here to get information about who he's connected with or dating. These people he needed to know. The owner of the fortress looked at the boy with a very sly look and began to touch with his fingers. He said that he could not help the boy in any way and then asked him why they should fulfill his request, which does not bring them any benefit. He said that Jin Young and his friends had already attacked their soldiers twice in the forest and tried to cause them and the association very big problems. Jin Young said that he has nothing to do with the association and their problems are not in his competence, so he asked to put it on the back burner and said that at least he would try to forget the incident by double attacks on him. The owner was unhappy that the guy was behaving very arrogantly and asked him what would happen if they refused to help him. Jin Young replied that he didn't feel any joy in shaking hands with a person like the master of the tower, but that Bekma Fortress had many connections with criminal organizations and he simply had no choice. So he turned to these people. Jinan warned the owner of the tower that if they couldn't solve this problem by dialogue and agree on something, then he would have to use his force and this could lead to bad consequences. Ji Khan intervened in their dialogue and said that if this guy starts to rampage here, then he will cause a lot of damage that will have to be restored for years and this would be very disadvantageous for the Bekma fortress. He insisted that it would be better for this guy to help this would be the right decision. He assured the owner of the fortress that he had encountered this boy more than once and he could be trusted. The owner of the fortress was very surprised that the old man interferes in the affairs of this guy and is now his ally, he replied to them that G.I. Khan's support makes him think after all, the boy really has good skills in martial arts that can harm his fortress. He crossed his arms over his chest for a couple of minutes, he thought while sitting in silence and eventually told them that he accepted Jin Young's offer. The guy asked for another request he said that the master of the fortress and his people need to investigate the death of Yung Sang Hyun, the former palace counselor who was killed three years ago on the main street of Beijing. He said that he would not be able to deal with this case because the Golden Guard should investigate it and the guys from the Golden Guard should know more information on this case. Jinan replied that in the investigation left by the Golden Guard from a number of spies, it was recorded that he died after beating a drunkard but the guy does not want to believe in this stupid version. Jin Young was sure that someone deliberately covered up the truth about what happened to his uncle. They ended the negotiations and after that they were kindly escorted to the exit to leave the palace grounds. Before the topic how to get out of here Jin Young stopped at the exit and felt something suspicious he turned his head back. Near the entrances to the fortress are the owner and saw them off with his eyes. I liked Jin in this person and he felt some kind of catch in him, as if this person could easily betray or deceive them at any moment. On their way, a man appeared who introduced himself as the messenger of Nakanjio, he knelt down on one knee and greeted Commander Wijihan. The messenger said that he managed to find out that Yoma and the three exorcists of Hyal Hyal crossed day one and at the moment these people are approaching Kianamsen Mountain. Wijihan asked the messenger why Yuma and three other exorcists were gathering in one place on this mountain, it was most logical for them to act alone, the messenger replied that apparently this was due to a person named you from the sect of ten swordsmen. Ji Han found out the name of this person and asked the messenger if Yu Tae Chung from the sect of ten swordsmen is now on this mountain and the latter answered that everything is exactly like that. Vijihan asked the passive one how many warriors are now on that mountain and the messenger replied that somewhere around five or seven warriors are they all following them on their tails. 
Wijihian said that they would immediately leave for Kianamsen Mountain and ask the messenger to send a letter to this place in order to find out the situation and understand what is happening there now. He alerted his team that they are now in big trouble, they need to hurry to this mountain in order to fix everything. Three people were standing in a large room with red wooden pillars, they were discussing that Yong Jae Sung was moving secretly from everyone. A man in red clothes crossed his arms over his chest and asked in a displeased voice why these people act mystery and pretend that they are engaged in noble deeds. The old man replied that they were chasing the exorcist Hyul Ho. Gu Yang Mugyang now finally understood what the essence of the matter was and he found out that they were hunting for exorcists but did not understand why they needed it. The old man made his guess and said that maybe they were chasing the exorcists for justice or to unleash suppressed ambitions. A third man in blue asked what their role was in this case, would they just be watching from the sidelines? The old man said that they will make sure that these people roam all over the world to get to the exorcists but in the end they will not be able to find them. He said that they were here to manage the world situation but not to applaud watching the others perform and the man in blue asked what their plan would be. The old man said that if they chase exorcists then their job is to chase these guys. High alcohol exorcists are not the same as they used to be, they have become much stronger, they don't act regardless, someone is clearly behind him. Gu Yang asked is there a faction capable of dealing with these guys? The old man told them about the Heavenly Blood clan, which is one of the strongest clans on the continent. This clan appeared not so long ago and little is known about it in the world, but they say that this clan has outstanding power and will very quickly gain its political status. He said that the best options are to go right behind this clan and collect fruits from the trees they will grow. The man made a conclusion from their meeting and said that their plan is to get rid of the exorcists who are now the headache of the whole Jianghu. The old man supplemented this plan with the fact that the position of Yong Jae Sung will also be weakened. And if they manage to get benefits from there, then their plan will be ingenious. The men listened to this plan and decided that they agreed. But there was one question. Who exactly are they going to send there to carry out this task? The old man suggested that it is for this case that they use their secret weapon and try it out in practice. They were surprised that he wanted to use this weapon right now, they thought it was too early, but the old man tried to convince them that if they hold this weapon for too long, then they cannot miss the right moment to use it. It was the perfect opportunity to try the weapon in real combat and see what it can do. And the old man said to send a support squad after the main weapon so no one has to worry about what might happen. To begin with, they decided that they need to send at least one squad to see what he can do. When they didn't finish their negotiations, the last thing the old man said was that they needed to go to Shangxi. A huge staircase led up the mountain. Jin Young and his group of assistants climbed this staircase. But when they nevertheless climbed the mountain, all they saw here was the dead bodies of soldiers. They realized that they had come too late and had already dealt with the soldiers. Wijihian couldn't believe that they were too late his whole squad of fighters was killed, he understood that it was all because of the exorcists and Yoma. Jinan sensed a very dangerous black energy, it was in the air, he immediately paid attention to it. He summoned a fairy and asked Selfina to look for some people in the mountains and said that there must be someone there. The fairy was dissatisfied with the fact that she was again forced to work and asked the owner if she did this task, she could then do nothing, he replied that she would then be able to rest. Jinan asked the demon Sertan to search the area for energy that he does not feel because the demon could do this with ease and Sertan said that he would look for something now. Wijihan said that unfortunately the person who could take them all to the mountains died. Guan replied that the situation was not easy for them to still be able to cross these mountains and old man Ji Khan replied that people would die but first you need to start moving. Jin Young said that if there is a dangerous path ahead, then he will go first in order to protect everyone in case of danger. When Jinan and his team climbed up the mountain, they saw that a fierce battle was going on on the mountain. A man in red clothes professionally destroy warriors from the Wijihan detachment. This man was armed with two Daisho swords. He killed a whole detachment of opponents alone. This killer cut off the heads of all the opponents that came across in his path, he did not leave anyone alive. He wanted to help his comrade and attack one of the soldiers from behind, but a green magic arrow started flying towards him from the forest. When the arrow was already very close to his face, he paid attention to it. This man at the last moment fight with his sword from this arrow. He looked into the forest and saw that the art in the blinking green light. 
fairy fired her magic bow at this man she said she tried to block his attack and was going to pierce his body. This man was very surprised that from such a great distance someone could release such a huge amount of energy and turn him into an arrow. The wars continued to fight and strike. They understood that their forces were not enough to resist these bloodthirsty killers, but nevertheless they did not fight to the last drop of blood. They delivered quick sword strikes to test the enemy's defenses, but they didn't succeed. Old Man G.I. Khan suddenly appeared from the forest, he accumulated the magical energy of electricity in his ball and wanted to help the soldier cope with the enemy. He struck a strong blow with his sword at the enemy and the enemy came with a jump back. He did not understand where the man with the lightning strike came from here and this began to frighten the killer. The old man began to fight this guy and strike him with his sword, but the doctor skillfully defended himself from his attacks. After another attack, the enemy was able to defend himself by placing a block and then inflicting a counterattack due to which the old man flew back. G.I. Khan was very surprised that this man repelled his attack and still survived, he did not understand how this man had the strength to withstand such strong attacks. The assassin took a fighting stance from which it was easy to launch any attack and carefully began to examine his opponent holding two sharp blades in his hands. G.I. Khan threw his sword over his shoulder and said that the rumors that had reached him about the fact that the Hyal Hull exorcists lost their power and are no longer as strong as they used to be. The exorcist assassin made a swift dash forward as he kicked off the ground and prepared to unleash his next attack. G.I. Khan was able to block it there in time and prevented this person from harming himself. They baptized their swords and stood opposite each other trying to endure the tension, the old man said that killing the people of Yung Jae Sung is a very immoral act and he will not be forgiven for this. G.I. Khan started again accumulating lightning energy in his ball and the opponent had already ceased to withstand such a strong voltage. The exorcist felt that his energy was much weaker than the energy of the old man, his black magic runes began to disappear and lose the energy of lightning. He understood that he did not have enough strength to resist this old man. Jin Young and Guan were fighting with steel opponents at that moment and the guy stopped for a moment to see how strong this old man was, he was amazed at his energy, ready to watch how G.I. Khan uses his lightning technique every time. Jin and thought about the fact that the old man was only close in strength to the 10,000 masters and he imagined how strong the true representatives of the 10,000 could be. The soldiers turned to their commander Widzihan asking him to help them deal with these opponents as soon as possible so that they could move further. The soldier said that they need to find Elder Yu because he is now all alone without the support of the rest of the soldiers fighting most of the Yuma group alone. Jinan thought about the fact that he constantly feels a strange aura around him and he realized that there is a master and the sex of ten swordsmen not far from them and Yuma he made the assumption that this black aura belongs to one of these two guys. Jin Young said that he would have to be the first to clear the way and the guy told him that he was not against such a plan and asked Jen Young to take care of everything. Jinan turned to Master Peng in order to understand whether he would go further with them or not, and the old man replied that they should go without him. G.I. Khan wanted to finish the fight and one-on-one -on -one deal with his opponent. His enemy was wounded after the last blow that the old man dealt to him one of his swords was broken but he was very angry and ready to fight on. The old man could not let this man go alive and he wanted to finish his job so he asked Jin Young to go without him he said that he would catch up with them soon. Guan took the guy by the shoulder and said that this old man is quite enough here to fight off these enemy units, so he offered to go along with Jin Young. There was a fierce fight on the top of the mountain near the water. Master Yu single-handedly fought against a whole crowd of opponents, but there were only more enemies all the time and he felt that it was becoming difficult for him to resist them. He was a real master of martial arts and was well versed in combat techniques, so he could fight off several opponents at once, he cut his throat to one of them. As soon as one of the enemies fell to the ground, a new enemy immediately appeared in his place. Master Yu during the fight thought that if this battle had been before when he was still young and this would not have presented him with huge problems, but now he was already very old he had to spend a lot of energy fighting this and the fighters. He decided to take on five opponents at once and tried his hand he had not fought for a very long time it was a good occasion remember all your martial arts in practice. He delivered precision strikes to his opponents and immediately killed them. From the crowd and enemies, Yoma appeared with a very strong black energy, his energy was black and green in color and he accumulated it in his fist. He struck the old man with a very strong blow, but Master Yu still managed to block the blow with his sword in time and did not receive any damage. 
Yoma looked Master Yu Tae Chung straight in the eyes and said that today he would take his head with him. Master Yu laughed in the face of his opponent when he heard it. Then he said that Yoma still can't catch the old man's water and put it just a little harder, he already allows himself to open his mouth. Master Yu pushed his opponent back to give himself time to accumulate new energy. The old man laughed and said that even if he was destined to die here today, he would still take all these scoundrels with him to the next world. Master Yu again I took up the sword otherwise kill my opponents by piercing their bodies with a sharp blade. They tried to surround him and throw several blows from the back at the same time so that the old man did not have time to repel them, but instead the master began to accumulate energy in his ball. He used one of his techniques called piercing blade. This technique allowed him to make a large beam of light that killed everyone who got in his way and it was impossible to resist against this better light. Immediately after this technique, he did a second move called Sky Strike and his sword emitted incredible light energy. Master Yu for nothing was able to crush three opponents at once and they could not even understand what happened to them because light blinded their eyes and they felt incredible pain after which they died. After applying this technique, a large amount of smoke appeared on the top of the mountain after the explosion. When the smoke dissipated, Master Yuan appeared from him, he was very tired after using such energy-consuming techniques. Suddenly, Yoma appeared in front of him and wanted to hit him with his green fist, this blow was supposed to be sudden and deadly. The old man managed to dodge this blow and did not take any damage. But Yoma was very cunning and he immediately delivered another blow, after which the old man flew back he could not predict this sneaky blow and received damage. Master Yu could hardly stand on his feet after taking such a heavy damage, but he still did not hesitate and could continue the battle. He was immediately attacked from two sides by the rest of the opponents. They wanted to drive him into a trap. Master Yu understood that he was running out of strength and could lose in this duel, he felt that he needed support if someone did not come to his aid right now, then he would hardly be able to stand against these opponents for a long time. At that moment, Junior appeared. He noticed that the old man was very hard to resist all these people and called the fairy Selfina to him so that she would use her magic technique again. Selfina's arrow hit the bodies of the enemies very quickly and helped the old man fight them off. Selfina killed enemies with her sharp arrows, she does it so quickly and imperceptibly that they didn't even understand what was happening, it seemed to them that the wind got into their body, it was the magical fairy arrow. One of these soldiers was surprised that magic arrows were flying into them from nowhere and did not understand how to resist against these arrows, he used his black magic in order to protect himself from these arrows. Selfina continued to strike him with her sharp arrows from different sides. And the warrior did not understand how he needed to defend himself from these arrows, because he simply did not see them. He tried to take a closer look at where these arrows were flying from, but he could not notice anything, he could not see Selfina. She realized that the past could not hit her opponent and decided to use a magic spear in order to surely break through the defense of her opponent, she was very angry that these people behaved very cruelly and meanly. Master Yu was very surprised when he saw that someone came to his aid and then he saw a big green explosion. It was a surge of strong magic. Jinan approached the master from behind and asked him if he was Master Yu Tae Chung of the Ten Swordsman sect. The guy came closer and said that they were sent here by Commander Wijihian so that they could help the old man deal with opponents. Jinan saw Yuma and asked the master not to interfere in the battle he said that this person and they want to deal with it personally. Yoma was very surprised when he saw that help had come to the old man, he did not expect that someone would get here and did not understand why this guy did not want to deal with him personally in battle. They were at a great distance from each other and felt that a battle would soon begin in which only one would survive. Yoma felt that there were internal injuries in his body that prevented him from using all his strength and he was afraid that he would not be able to dodge a blow to his opponent. Yoma was very disappointed that he again failed to kill the old man, even though he was very tired and it seemed that he would be able to kill him today well, everything did not go according to plan when these people intervened. Jinan began to move towards his opponent in order to strike him with the first blow. Jinan wanted to punch his enemy right in the face, but Yoma managed to block this punch and grabbed his fist with his hand. He looked at Jin Young and understood that all his plans were now blown to the wind and he just wasted time and a large number of people. One of the fighters was very angry that these newcomers were so arrogant and wanted to kill his master so he took his sword and immediately went to these guys to attack them. But Guan used his teleportation technique to move right in front of this fighter in order to kick him. 
Guan delivered a very strong blow to this soldier in the chest, after which he broke several bones in him and forced him to fly back. Guan landed on the water after the impact and prepared for the next attack. He got into a fighting stance and said that it would be a lot of fun for him to have fun with a weakling. They began to slowly approach each other in order to probe the opponent's weak points and understand which one is better to use first. Water scattered in different directions due to the constant attacks that took place around. The soldier still did not understand where he was flying into the magic arrows, he did not know how to fight them off. Fairy Sylphina said that people who did not sign a contract with her or do not have a contract with other spirits at all cannot see her, therefore her attacks are invisible to them. She thought about the fact that we get magical powers from her master. She definitely won't get tired and therefore she should properly warm up in this fight using her magic blows against these opponents. She hadn't had so much fun for a long time, and therefore today she was ready to use the master's magic in order to fight these scum. Jinan was distracted from the fight with his opponent Yuma for a few seconds because he noticed that Sylphina suddenly decided to use so much profound energy in such a state it would be very difficult for him to maintain his technique. He was very surprised that the fairy, who on normal days all she does is complain that she is tired and does not want to follow orders, now she decided to use a lot of magical power in order to fight, this is not like her. He was reassured by the fact that his opponent was already very battered and tired, he received an internal injury in a battle with a master from the Ten Swordsmen sect and therefore is not able to fight at full strength. Jinan made the decision that he needed to finish his opponent as quickly as possible before he recovered and accumulated enough energy to fight back. He unleashed his fire martial arts technique and started throwing out quick fire strikes but Yoma was still a god to fend them off. Yoma understood that not a single place could resist a full hit of such a blow. But even when dodging, the force of the blow is felt, even a high defense technique that can reflect the sword with bare hands is useless in such a situation. After Jinan's blows, he felt that the veins in his arms inside his body begin to twist and this is the first time he has encountered such attacks. Yoma regretted that he was already very tired and could not give a worthy rebuff to that guy. If he had enough internal strength, he would not have suffered so much. He wanted to kill the old man as soon as possible and get out of here because he could not fight for a long time against these guys. Yoma regretted that he lost a lot of his brothers here and they are now dead, but thanks to his black magic, he could resurrect them and collect them again. All he had to do now was fight off Jinan and avoid here, but getting away from this guy would not be easy. Jinan kept throwing very fast attacks which he had to constantly dodge and expend a lot of his energy to dodge Jinan was like a beer to him. Yoma understood that it was impossible to drag out any more time. After all, if Master Yu restores his energy, he will immediately join the battle, it came to him to deliver a strong blow to the genie, push him away and immediately begin to leave here. But in order to escape, he needed to get rid of this guy as quickly as possible and he used one of his strongest techniques called the Phantom Green River. Huge green energy began to flow into Jin Young was completely absorbed by this dark energy. But Jinan was still able to get through this green barrier and accumulate fire energy in his right hand and lightning energy in his left hand. He delivered a very strong lightning strike with his left hand directly into the enemy's body. Yoma was not ready for the fact that he would miss this blow and felt incredible pain, this could be fatal for him there. Jinan grabbed his opponent's shoulder and began to build up energy in his other fist in order to land another blow. He punched him right in the ear with his fist and it was there that was the final in Jin Young's combination. Yoma could not withstand such an intense impact and after that flew off to the side and crashed into a stone wall. Jinan now finally understood what abilities exhausted the master so much. He saw the technique that Yoma owns, he understood how his energy works. After all, even in such an exhausted state, it was difficult to deal with this enemy. Jinan understood something if they fought on equal terms, then most likely he would lose this battle because he could not withstand such a strong energy, he would not be able to resist it. He felt very tired in his body and fell to his knees the guy could no longer fight. He felt that his inner strength dried up in an instant and could not understand what it was connected with, as if someone had sucked all the energy out of him. Then he remembered that Selfina had been fighting all this time using his inner reserves of magic. He did not understand why she spends so much of her master's energy on her abilities does she not understand what norms are and that so much energy cannot be used. 
Certain's voice warned the boy that something dangerous was about to happen he needed to be careful Jean Young immediately paid attention to this warning. Yuma suddenly stood up and made a quick dash, after which he stabbed Jean and right in the shoulder and injured him. He saw what was left of the wound on his shoulder and was very surprised that Yoma was still able to move. Yuma felt that the damage inside his body was very serious and in this state he could not run far from Master Yu. Yoma decided that if he couldn't run away from the battlefield and stay alive, then he needed to kill this guy before he died. He grabbed his neck with his hand and began to choke. Jinan was very exhausted and could not resist, he had no strength at all, so his opponent grabbed his neck and put him on his back. Yoma told the guy that he had seen such skills for the first time, although only a small part of internal energy was used up, but it had already recovered. He said that this guy's internal injuries also look very serious if he pours his energy into him, Jin Young's veins will burst and he will die. He was very disappointed that he failed in this task, but in parting, he wanted at least this guy. Jinan felt that he had no strength left at all, he could not even move his fingers. Sertan saw that the guy urgently needs help and said that there is another way. If you use the absorption of the energy of heaven and earth, the control of the soul, then he will be able to defeat this enemy. Stay alive. No warn Jinan that if something went wrong then there could be serious problems but still he didn't have time to hesitate and it's better to try this technique than just die now. The demonic artifact began to work again, he felt that soon he would have to awaken again and use his demonic energy. Jinan was already beginning to choke and felt that he would soon die if he did not take some action. Power suddenly began to appear in him and he felt how the artifacts began to act and fill him with new energy. Yoma did not understand what was happening now and where the guy got such great strength, he felt that the boy was squeezing his hand and was able to break it with just his fingers. Suddenly, the boy's face turned into a demonic entity that was ready to suck all the energy out of him. Yoma was very scared when he saw this face in front of him. Jinan began to suck out all the life energy from her opponent and absorb it into her body, Yoma screamed in pain. He asked for mercy, but Jinan let in a demonic entity that was not ready to spare anyone. He sucked the life energy out of his opponent's hand, it immediately began to turn into bones and skin and looked like a living corpse. Jin Young filled his body and the energy that he sucked out of his opponent, he felt that in this way he was feeding the demon he had just awakened. He was even able to get up off the ground and walk normally, even though just now he didn't have the strength to even move his fingers. He sucked all the life energy out of Yoma's body and now this guy looked like a corpse that had been buried underground for hundreds of years. He felt himself getting worse and worse. Jinan hit myself in the face with my palm and said that he knew that everything would happen this way. When he used this forbidden technique, he let in demonic energy and now it's all beyond the realm of possibility and he will have to deal with it. Selfina did not understand why the magic powers and the owner had run out and she could no longer use them. She was upset because of this, because if she had enough magical powers to inflict a couple more blows on her opponent, she could kill him. She felt guilty for having a lot of fun and wasting a lot of the master's magical energy, but then she justified herself by not expecting the master's village to end so quickly. But she was still content with fighting this warrior because she hadn't had fun in a very long time since now. The warrior was shocked that the magic arrows had finally stopped flying at him and hoped that the battle was finally over. He was injured on his face, there were scratches and abrasions. He was trying to understand what it was that had just happened to him. As soon as he realized that the danger had finally passed, he immediately fell into the water and felt that he no longer had the strength to lose consciousness. Jinan began to feel a very strong black energy inside him that made him fight the rest of the wars that were still alive. He killed all the opponents who were still alive until that moment. Enemies bled and begged for mercy, but it was useless because Jenyan could no longer be stopped. The guy jumped on the rocks looking for new opponents wanted to kill everyone who harmed him and his ally. Master Yu was on the sidelines all this time and was watching the guy he was surprised that this boy is still able to fight and feel so active. He began to suspect that something had happened here because the guy needed to take a break to rest and gain strength in order to enter the next battle, but for some reason he could fight on. Jinan brutally killed all his opponents and black energy began to stand out from him, it seems as if he was just fighting using internal forces, but his sudden look changed, the energy began to go off scale. Master Yu was afraid that his suspicion might be justified and that the guy was now fighting not at the expense of his internal energy, but at the expense of auxiliary forces. 
Master Yu made his assumption that the guy transformed the art of Yoma into pure power and by assimilating it to the fullest he was able to apply it in martial art. Jinan inflicted very painful injuries on his opponent before killing them wanted to see how they suffer before death and ask him to forgive. The guy did not look like himself, as if something terrible had infused into him, something that made him constantly demand blood. The thirst for blood made him constantly find new opponents and brutally kill them in order to satiate his need for blood, but it stopped more and more with each kill. He in what to tear the flesh of his enemies causing them to experience incredible pain and torment. The voice in Jen Young's head asked him to constantly brutally destroy his opponents this voice asked him to break the bones of his enemies and disembowel their bodies, taking out the organs. Jinan put his hand inside the body of the enemy and grabbed his heart he wanted to rip out his heart with his bare hands and he felt the heat of this organ with his fingers. Sharp icy sensations in his head mixed with the desire to kill and fill his hands with blood, he became a real animal. After tearing out the heart of his opponent with his bare hands, he decided to look at his hand and what he saw was disgusting, it was an indescribable disgusting sensation that he could only realize later. Demon Sertan said that the boy's internal energy increased tenfold. But the guy was not happy with this result. Because half of this energy was dark and made him do cruel and vile things. Jinan could not forgive himself for sucking out the soul of two people, most of the energy was used to reveal the energy of the stone. He did not control himself at these moments, instead of him, the soul stone controlled his body and did things that were contrary to Jinan's will. Sertan still continued to insist on his own and said that the brutal killings, it's not the worst thing that he half revealed his strength, it was already a good result. Jinan asked the demon what was happening now and it seemed to him that the demon was hiding something from him and did not finish speaking, as if he had some kind of plan about which he did not tell Jinan. Sertan began to behave as if he knew nothing and had no plan, but it all looked very suspicious. Jinan understood that the demon was hiding something from him and from that moment decided that he needed to be careful with Sertan. Master Yu watched the boy all this time even after the battle was over he wanted to understand what was happening with this guy and who he was. Vijikan ran out of the mountain gorge and asked the elder if everything was all right with him, the old man answered that he somehow managed to survive and if this guy is not blind, he can notice that everything is in order. G.I. Khan came to the rest of the group and reported that they did not miss the two opponents, you allowed them to escape. Master Yu was very surprised when he saw that G.I. Ha was standing in front of him and helping them in this matter. G.I. Han admitted that he did not expect here in the form of Brother Yu and if it were not for his work, he would have spent three nights drinking with him. Master Yu replied that he was very glad that his friend still likes to drink alcohol so much. He asked G.I. Khan why the old man personally decided to come here and help because it is unlikely that this decision was made only because he missed his old friend. G.I. Khan video that he came here to catch those who killed his son and the people of his family he knows that Yoma and everyone who was involved in this was in this place. Master Yu told the old man that Jenyan personally killed Yomu in front of his eyes and did it with maximum cruelty Jenyan was sitting on a stone at that moment and said that it happened completely by accident. G.I. Khan was very upset because he could not personally repay his enemy and kill him with his sword, but nevertheless he could do something else, so he approached his dead body and knelt down on one knee and then took the box which lay on his body. G.I. Khan was glad at least that he was able to find the lost item and this was already a good reward. For this cause, Mr. Yu said that he did not know why the Han family needed Ruby and wanted to wait for an answer from the old man, but the old man said that it was not just Ruby. G.I. Khan told a story about this stone and it turned out that this is an unusual ruby and a real fire gem about which legends are added. Master Yu was still very dissatisfied. He said that it was very strange to see into the stone and it did not look like a real one because in a real stone there should be a flame pattern inside but this stone does not have any flame pattern. G.I. Han was shocked when he did not find the flame pattern in this stone, realized that it could be the most common fake and Wijihian made his assumption that they could not get the wrong item from the Ho family. G.I. Han listened to the guy's version and said that it would be very good if it was like he says but does this mean that they want to make their Peng family their enemies? He was in a difficult situation because one person's life depended on this stone and a fake stone is a huge problem for this person's life. Master Yu said that they have no other choice and the only thing they can do is go to the whole family because standing here will not solve their problems and they need to move out. Master Yu felt that the most important task for them all right now was to focus on the exorcists. 
Khan was very upset that he didn't find the right stone which meant he would have to keep searching at that point the guy asked why don't they hand over the captured exorcists to the Wijahan squad. Jinan turned to Mr. Wijahian and said that he needed to learn something from that person Wijahian replied that if you need to get information through interrogation, then it is better to do it in their fortress. Jinan did not agree with this solution of the problem because it would take a very long time to send him to their fortress, and therefore he offered to personally interrogate this guy right here and now. It would be faster this way. Wijihan could not resist him, at least for the reason that Jin Young himself caught this guy and therefore decided to listen to him and allowed him to do it. He said that if there is no point in interrogating and this guy does not give out information, then they will take him to their fortress and entrust this matter to professionals A.E. Jin Young said that he was fine with such a plan. He decided immediately, without delay, to proceed to interrogation and begin to learn from this prisoner information that interested him. But as soon as they began to approach him, they saw that he had untied the ropes and fled somewhere, they did not even have time to notice how he did it. He has already run for ten minutes through the forest trying to get away from these people as far as possible. In the forest, he met his brothers who still survived this battle. The commander of the exorcists was with his assistant, these same two escapees who could not be killed, they asked what happened and where their brother Yoma. Monk Han told his exorcist brothers that they failed the task and now everyone is dead, they were prevented by a strange guy who suddenly appeared and had incredible abilities. Monk Han told me that of all the surviving exorcists, only the three of them killed everyone else. Sanyil was disappointed by this news and started to stop getting worse and worse he said that if they just come back, the cult leader will kill them. Suddenly, his chest was pierced by the blade of the sword, no one expected that this could happen. In front of them stood a guy in black clothes, you want to know how he appeared here and why he moved so quietly after all, they did not even have time to hear him. None of them, I had time to feel the presence of this stranger, which meant that he owned some unknown technique. One of this stranger's eyes glowed exactly like Jinan's eyes glowed when he let in demonic energy. Jinan, along with his allies, went to the poles in order to find the escaped prisoner. Suddenly, they came across the bodies of dead escaped exorcists deep in the forest and it was very unexpected for them to see dead exorcists here. Wijihan noticed that the bodies of these exorcists were very mutilated, but nevertheless, with their clothes, one could understand that these were the two who did not manage to catch them in time and did not run away. Guan said that now there is only one escaped exorcist whom they need to understand, they did not know where he fled and it was necessary to first find out if he was alive at all. Guan turned to the boy and said that the interrogation should be forgotten because he is most likely already dead, but Jin Young said that the remaining exorcists are still alive. Jinan felt his energy nearby and therefore could conclude that this guy is somewhere nearby and he is still alive. He thought about the fact that behind the exorcists there is a clan of heavenly blood. If this is true, then the escaped exorcist must be caught. He needs to be caught and interrogated to find out information about the clan of heavenly blood. The escaped exorcist was in the forest and he was all alone, he was constantly followed by the same stranger in a black hood who killed two of his comrades and this guy did not understand where the stranger had gone. Suddenly, he felt a very strong pain in his back. The stranger thrust the blade of his blade into his body. He pierced the exorcist's shoulder with the blade of his blade and tried to inflict a lot of pain on him. The exorcist managed to launch a counterattack and throw the stranger aside. He managed to jump back and dodge the blow without taking any damage. The stranger decided to hide in the silence of the night and fall to me in order to deliver an unexpected blow to his opponent from the darkness. The exorcist began to examine his wound and realized that it was today that he was faced with the fact that the invisible eye is the second enemy in a day that has the ability to disappear. The stranger teleported behind him and was ready to strike again from the dark but the exorcist managed to feel him before he struck. He waved his sword and wanted to hit his enemy faster than he could hit him. But when he nevertheless struck his blow, the enemy was no longer there and he did not hit him, so the energy for the blow was wasted. The stranger decided to plunge a sharp blade into his leg while his opponent was distracted. The exorcist felt a very strong pain in his leg and realized that he now had to fight with two deep wounds in his body. He was not ready to give up so easily and decided to strike again using his black magic technique. The stranger grabbed his hand and called his opponent very clumsy and inattentive. He cut off his hand with his blade, after which the palaces experienced incredibly severe pain. 
He didn't understand why this guy didn't just kill him why he constantly mocked him and made him feel so much pain. The stranger said that this guy is the only witness left among the exorcists. The stranger said that his task was not to leave a single witness and therefore he was obliged to kill him right here and now. But suddenly he heard that he was beginning to be surrounded by people who were in the forest not far from him. The stranger decided to sit down on one knee and lower his blade, bowing his head in front of people who are approaching him. Jen Young came out of the forest and looked at the stranger who was now sitting on one knee, he approached the wounded exorcist and examined him. Jinan said that he had business with this exorcist and asked the stranger not to interfere in this matter out of turn. The rest of the group began to emerge from the forest and surround the stranger, he understood that he was at a disadvantage for himself and was unlikely to be able to fight them. Wijihan looked at the clothes of this man and noticed that he was clearly not from these parts and was unlikely to belong to one of his fighters. Wijihan apologized to this stranger for breaking in here and taking his prey from him. But they needed to analyze the situation and asked him to walk with them. He stood silently and did not answer anything, it seemed to them that this man was simply deciding what to do next. Suddenly, this stranger disappeared somewhere, he turned into black smoke and evaporated, no one even managed to catch him. The whole group attacked the place where this stranger had just been, but they didn't succeed because he evaporated very quickly. They could not even imagine who this person was and how he got such teleportation capabilities. Jinan summoned the fairy Selfina again and ordered her to find this man in the forest, because he could not run far. Selfina was unhappy that she was again forced to work and she said that spirits cannot work so much in one day. Jinan reminded her that she sucked all the energy out of him while fighting with one opponent and ordered her to immediately take care of this matter and find that guy because he did not run far. She lowered her head down, closed her eyes and apologized to the owner, she said that she would do everything now. Selfine used her magical vision to feel the footprints of this man and find him. Thanks to their power, the spirits of the forest told her where this person is now. The fairy said that there are a lot of people around him now. Jinan realized that this man was not alone all this time and had comrades with him and asked the fairy to take him to this man. Jinan warned all members of his group that he will go after this killer and ask the others to look into this first while he will chase him. Guan tried to stop the boy and asked him to wait he wanted to go with him. The stranger returned to the rest of his squad, they were also dressed in black robes. He saw that many people had gathered here and was pleased that everyone was gathered in this forest. One of the fighters said that he would like to hear a report on the situation of the immortal heavenly host. The stranger replied that two members of the exorcists and all the remaining people from the Zhongjie fortress were killed in the process, two wars died and the other two were very badly injured. The commander said that no strange things happened with their Chok Chok faction and everything went very well for the first appearance of immortal heavenly warriors. The stranger said that everything is not as good as he thinks and in fact there was one problem. He admitted that they could not kill one exorcist and there were as many as five witnesses who could interrogate him and saw the stranger with their own eyes. He said that among these people there were two guys whom he saw for the first time and the rest of the guys were Yu Tae Yung, Bang Ji Han and Wu Jihian. The commander asked the man in the hoodie if these people were able to reveal his identity and the man in the hoodie answered that they could not see his face and did not know who he really was. The commander ordered everyone to return back immediately. One of the strangers was very surprised by this decision and said how they could just leave, leaving witnesses behind. The commander agreed with the words of the stranger and said that they still did not reveal their true identity and since the enemy is not easy, it is better to retreat in such an environment there is no need to face them and suffer losses. The stranger raised his head up and said that in any case, their opponents remained at the same level of strength but they were able to grow in their strength and this is a good reason to play with them a little and try yourself in battle. The soldiers had to choose whose decision to support on the one hand they could not support the words of Captain Vera but on the other hand there was the Chok Chok group. The Chok Chok group continued to insist on their own and they wanted to kill these five people who were witnesses in the forest. The captain said that he still had the right to command and his word is law here. He said that if they make even one mistake, it will damage the reputation of the great lord. Jinan stood near the tree all this time and eavesdropped on all their dialogues. Gwang noticed that all these people are very similar to real martial artists, it seems they do not want to reveal their identities, but he did not understand why they want to retreat with such power. Gwang asked the boy what they would do next. Because maybe with the help of the old people and Oni they won't be able to resist these people in two, they definitely won't be able to cope against the crowd. 
Jinan said that unfortunately and we really will come out to defeat all these people so they better retreat from here right now and should be content with the information that they did not receive now they have clues. Guan agreed with the boy's decision and was ready to retreat with him right now, but due to his negligence, he stepped on a branch and accidentally crushed it and made a very loud sound. After he stepped on this branch, he began to justify himself to the guy and says that it happened completely by accident. Jinan knew it was a mistake. Could cost them their lives, but nonetheless. There is no other choice. And now they still have to confront all these people. After a couple of seconds they were surrounded by these wars, they were everywhere to hide from them, it would not have been possible to hide from them, and the only way out that remained for them was to fight. Jinan and Guan realized that it was a very stupid idea to engage in battle with this clan and decided that the best solution for them would be to simply run away. The killers began to hunt for the guys and surround them from different sides, one of the killers jumped off the branch in order to attack Guan. Jinan managed to notice the killer and pushed his friend aside, thereby saving his life. Jinan did not expect these assassins to be so fast and able to attack suddenly. He said that you need to be very vigilant in order not to miss their attacks. Jinan used his new lightning strike technique and fired a strong stream of lightning at his opponent. Assassin did not expect that this guy has such a strong technique and therefore could not block this blow in any way and received all the damage in himself. Assassin fell to the ground and passed out Jinan was able to deal with one assassin but there were still a lot of them he said that they are starting to catch up with them they need to get out of here quickly. They ran between the trees for a very long time and tried to get out of the forest, but they did not succeed because the killers were constantly chasing them. Li and Guang ran very fast and the boy said that he was very tired his body was tired now the constant struggle he needed to rest. But they couldn't stop even for one minute because the assassins were constantly chasing them and they were getting closer and closer to them. One assassin suddenly teleported in front of the guy and wanted to strike him with a stealth blow with his blade. Jinan dodged this blow, but he understood that if he had reacted late, he would have been killed now. Jinan made a counterattack with his fist and although to neutralize his opponent, but at the moment he struck, the assassin turned into a shadow and disappeared. Jinan got angry because those assassins had a very annoying ability and were hard to fight. Assassin teleported behind the guy and decided to strike him inconspicuously from behind, but Jin Young felt it. This time, Guan decided to save Jin Young and thank him for helping him avoid the injury that Assassin wanted to inflict last time. Assassin again turned into shadows and now but this time he received damage, albeit a small one. Jin Young thanked Guang for saving him but the old man replied that he just did his duty and now they have a one-to-one -one score. Jinan did not understand how he needed to fight against these assassins because they had the ability to turn into a shadow and this ability gave them a huge advantage in battle. They realized that they needed to come up with a new battle plan against these assassins, they cannot be fought like normal opponents because the usual techniques do not work on them because they constantly turn into a shadow. Jinan did not yet know how he would fight against these assassins, but one thing he knew for sure is that these assassins are very problematic guys. The assassins began to attack them and surround them from all sides. Jin Young and Guan constantly fought off their attacks and evaded them. The leader of these assassins was very surprised that these two guys resisted for so long and were still able to fight. He decided that he needed to tire out his opponents and play with them until they completely ran out of energy and when he did this they could be killed. New opponents appeared in the fox who also wanted to join this battle. It was the clan leader who was allied with the assassin clan, he came to the aid of the shadow assassin in order to kill Jin Young and Guang. The clan leader used his magical power and dealt a very strong blow after which an explosion occurred in the forest and lightning began to fly in different directions. Jin Young and Guan were thrown back because they were thrown back by the blast, but they still managed to stay on their feet. The clan leader ordered his soldiers to attack these two guys and his soldiers immediately entered the battle. The leader of the assassins approached the leader of the clan and asked him why he was doing this because no one asked him for help. The man said that they don't have time to play with these two guys and they need to deal with them as quickly as possible and asked the assassins to take this matter seriously. The leader of the assassins was very unhappy that this man allowed himself to communicate with him like that and gave him orders, but he did not answer anything and simply remained silent. Jinan had to fight the assassins and soldiers, he repelled all their attacks, but the guy understood that he was running out of strength and could not continue like this anymore. 
he would weaken very soon and he would have to surrender and lose the battle. Jinan understood that he should not waste his strength and energy in vain, and the only way he had left was to use the demonic stone again and risk letting demonic energy into himself. The demon Serten said that you can't use the demonic stone so often because the energy that is inside the stone is equal to the energy that is currently inside Jin Yang. If he uses it, it can be very dangerous. Sertan said that this time he can help the guy and take the demonic energy upon himself and thanks to this the guy won't have the same problems as last time. They had no other choice and had to take a risk. Jinan had to make a decision, he didn't want to let demonic energy into himself again, but he really had no choice and it was dangerous to trust Sertan because last time the demon did not control this energy and the guy did terrible things. Jinan agreed with the demon's suggestion and decided to infuse himself with demonic energy from the magic demon stone he hoped that Sertan would take care of everything and this time he could handle this black energy. Jinan told Guan that at some point he would give him a signal, and when the old man saw this signal, he would have to run away from here and not look back. Guan said that I don't know what plan this guy came up with, but he's ready to take the risk. He asked at what point will Jin Young give him a signal. Jin Young said that this signal is now and ordered the old man to run away. Sertan felt a demonic force that endowed him with new capabilities and he was able to turn into black energy and, like a flash, he flew into the sky. There was an explosion of black energy in the sky that covered a huge part of the forest. The killer was shocked by such magic, he saw something like this for the first time and did not understand how he should now fight with such an opponent. Sertan created a black hole in the sky from demonic energy, and demonic rain began to appear from this hole. This rain began to cause massive damage in the area of the battle and the assassins could not dodge these blows and many of them were injured. The clan leader tried to dodge the demonic rain by constantly jumping to different points and fighting them off with his sword, but it was useless because the rain did not stop. When a drop of demonic rain fell on the clothes of the opponents and their clothes began to burn with black fire. The clan leader had a terrible feeling when he looked at a person whose body was burned by black fire, he was afraid to look at this assassin. Sertan said that this is not the end and he is just warming up before the start of the battle, the demonic stone has endowed him with enormous capabilities. Jin entrusted the demon with his body and magic and simply watched everything from the side. The clan leader saw a black hole begin to appear in the air, it was a clot of black energy that appeared out of nowhere. When the clot of black energy gained enough strength, it made a very large explosion that caused great damage to everyone who came under its influence. The leader of the clan miraculously survived after such a strong explosion, he did not understand how it was even possible and where this guy got such strength. He couldn't believe that someone in this world could wield such power and deal with black magic so well, the battlefield turned into a black dome of demonic energy, no one could believe that such power could come from one person. The leader of the clan saw that the assassins were standing behind him and asked them to pay attention to the strength of this guy. He said that for the first time he saw a person from whom such strength emanated. The leader of the assassins was unhappy that this man was going to retreat and surrender he ordered him to go ahead and fight against this guy in order to kill him. The man said that the black flame turned into a wall and completely blocked their path, he tried to get around this flame, but he did not succeed. Assassin said that this guy heard their story and now he can't be let out of here alive. The clan leader was very angry that the assassin was acting very arrogant towards him he said that this guy should have been killed at the very beginning and not played with him but the assassins were very relaxed and missed the opportunity to kill him all this could not have happened if they obeyed the clan leader and retreated in time. The leader of the clan ordered the assassin to take all the wounded and killed soldiers and retreat from here immediately. While it can still be done, because if this guy gets angry then it will be too late to retreat. Guang saw that Jen Young was very tired after throwing out such a large amount of black energy and decided to help him sit down. He put the guy near the tree so that he could rest in peace. Jinan constantly talked about how they barely or managed to escape from these assassins and if a little more time had passed they would definitely not have coped. Jin Young said that he was very tired and could not walk anymore he needed to rest and told his friend to go without him but Guan refused to leave without his friend and said that the hardest part was over and he would stay with him. Jinan saw a man in front of him and looked at him attentively. Guan asked this man why he went so far to Elias and what he was doing here. Master Yu replied that the meeting place had changed and that's why he came here to help the guys because he felt that they needed help. 
Guan asked the master in surprise how he managed to find them in such a large forest. Master Yu said that he decided to trust his intuition and go where it would lead him, but when he went this way, he saw a burning forest and the sounds of an explosion, these signals helped him understand that the guys were exactly there and he was lucky to find them. Jin Young was very surprised when he learned that the master managed to find them completely by accident. Mr. Yu said that he was also very surprised that these two could survive the battle against the Blood Clan and stay alive. When Jin Young returned back to the village, very unpleasant news awaited him. Wijihan told the guys that during their absence one person was killed here. Wijihan said that he left one of his soldiers here so he could guard the building, but when he came back he had already been killed. This guy's corpse was mutilated, so they covered it with a white cloth so as not to scare passersby. Attacking one of the members of his squad is a very brave act and he does not understand what kind of person could afford to touch the Qianjizong samurai. Wijihan promised that he would definitely find the killer, I would take revenge on him. Jin Young remembered that he had overheard the conversation of the assassins in the forest and did not tell the story that all the members of Qianjizong were killed. He made his assumption that the Blood Clan could be involved in this murder. Jinan told Wijihan about this in order to help him figure out this case and find the criminals. Jinan said that those assassins who attacked them in the forest were killing samurai in that area so they could have killed Wijihan's colleague. Wijihan asked the guy if he had any information about these people in order to find out their personalities and in the future to understand where to find them. Jinan said that he only heard two names of people from this clan and thanks to these names it will be possible to trace them. Wijihan said that he knows one of these names but he does not understand where he heard this name. Vijihan remembered that one of these people is Danju's boss and somehow he is involved in this matter. Vijihan said that he would be able to find this person. Master Yu intervened in their dialogue and said that boss Danju is a very important person and he is constantly guarded, he usually hides in the castle and it will be very difficult to get to him or drive him out of this castle. Wijihan was ready to take a risk and find this man to avenge the murdered samurai from the Chongjizing clan. He was sure that this man fit the description of the killer perfectly and only he could have the courage to attack the samurai, but his search would take a lot of time. Wijihan asked to write down the appearance of the people who were in the forest, maybe he could identify them and Jin Young replied that this person must be very tall. Vijihan bowed and thanked the guy for giving him this information. He said that he would immediately go to Changjizing and try to find out even more information in order to find the killer. But Wijihan remembered that he couldn't leave just like that because he had one more thing left to finish here. A prisoner whom they managed to save was brought to him, and this prisoner had to be interrogated to find out all the information. Wijihan said that before he went to the city he needed to interrogate this prisoner. Wijihian remembered that he promised Jin Young to let the first one interrogate this prisoner and asked if he wanted to do it. Jinan was delighted that his friend had not forgotten about his promise said that with pleasure yes they asked this prisoner. Ji Han was flustered because he didn't know Jin Young's interrogation method and suggested leaving the interrogation to an expert as it might bring a more positive outcome. Jinan asked the old man not to worry about it and trust him because he is also very good at the art of interrogation. Jinan came closer to the prisoner and said that the interrogation will begin now. Jinan allowed the demon Sreeton to use his abilities to improve the interrogation. Sertan used his demonic abilities and began to bewitch this man. He instilled black energy in him and ordered him to speak only the truth and completely obey Mr. Jinan. The captured soldier did not want to tell them the truth, but the spell worked on him and he said that the Blood Clan is all he knows about their names. Master Yu asked the boy what nonsense this man is talking about and why he is behaving so strangely. Jinan replied that he had to use hallucination magic so that this person could not resist himself and told the whole truth. In fact, the magic that he used is much stronger than what he said, this magic was created by mixing two types of psychedelic magic. Jinan used his demonic ability again and asked this captive to tell him everything he knew about the Sky Blood Clan. He said that the murder that they did not commit was not of their will, they were given an order that they were not obliged to carry out by any means. The prisoner said that three years ago he was beaten on the street and hidden in a large cave along with other people who got to this place in the same way. In one day, he appeared in front of them the same person who did not let them out of this cave. This man was called the Golden Curator. He was the head of the heavenly bloody religion and gathered people in this place in order to subjugate them and create his own army. He was a very cruel man and there were many legends about him. Nobody saw this man's face because he constantly walked in a golden mask. 
this man constantly forced his subordinates to fight and on one day, Yuma fought against a strong fighter. The golden curator said that he saw this fight and it was disgusting Yuma was very weak and the master was sorry to look at him. Yuma was very angry that this man allows himself to criticize his martial techniques and fighting style he said that he was not afraid to fight even as a gold curator and he was not afraid of death. And the golden curator said that if this guy constantly throws around his words and disrespects the master, then I will kill him. And after that he laughed because Yoma was very impudent. Yoma was very angry with the master for such disrespect for himself and used his magic to start fighting him. The golden curator asked Yuma not to start a fight and stop, he said that this guy is very impatient and constantly wants battles. He put his index finger to his lips and asked everyone to be quiet after that he wanted to make one sentence. He offered the guy two options. The first option was to fight him right now, but most likely the boy would not stand it and lose the battle. And after that he died, and the second option was that he would become the deputy gold curator and be able to be his arms and legs. Yoma was very surprised that he had just been offered these two options, he was absolutely not ready for them. Yoma began to laugh very loudly and at that moment he finally understood what the meaning of the master's proposal was and he said that he was not going to work in this clan and do the dirty work for this master. Yoma said that he would never agree to be this bastard's assistant for anything in his life and if he had the choice to kill ten swordsmen or fight with the golden curator, he would rather kill the curator. Yoma called this gentleman a real piece of trash who deceived all these people who are sitting in the cave and he must pay for it with his life. The master was very upset that this guy chose this particular path and wanted to fight against him, but nevertheless he was ready to fight and punish the disobedient student. He used his magic and began to accumulate red energy around himself in order to later fight with the guy. Energy began to envelop his body and fill the space in the cave. He was a very strong man with great power and was ready to teach an unsuccessful student a lesson. Before they started fighting, the master said that if he wants to teach his student something, he constantly has to use his strength and hurt them, only this way helps the students understand the full value of these teachings. Yoma fell to his knees and could not move his body. He was very tired and injured. Blood flowed from his mouth, received a lot of damage and now he could not continue the battle, he understood that his strength was weaker than that of his opponent. The golden curator killed all the people who were in this cave and left only one Yomu alive. This man was a real monster, it cost nothing to kill other people. He was very cruel and bloodthirsty and did not allow anyone to contradict him. Everyone who disagreed with him, he killed them. The gentleman began to take steps towards the guy and said that the boy was very weak and with such abilities he could not even protect himself from a street drunk. The master invited Yoma to obey him and become his disciple. The gentleman in the golden mask said that he would teach the boy his fighting techniques and enhance his abilities, and then he would finally be able to fight with the great swordsmen and kill them, after that his name would be known all over the world. But he needed to find out if the guy agrees to accept such conditions and submit to him, is he ready to become his student? Yoma lowered his head down and said that he would do everything as the director told him, accepts this proposal and obeys him. The director threw him a round ball and told the guy to take it. The golden curator said that this ball is a drug that can increase his endurance. The principal ordered the boy to return home and increase his stamina until they hear from the main school. The captured soldier told Jinan and his friends the whole story he knew. He said that it all ended with the fact that they received a letter in which it was said that all members of the Heavenly Blood clans, on the orders of their master and the head of this religion, should attack swordsman Ten Jewels. The prisoner said that they failed to carry out their plan and they lost the battle, but their master is still at large, he was able to escape. His master had the same martial arts techniques as Jin Young, but they were still different, filled with fear and danger. He said that one day he managed to see the master during his work, and then he was horrified by the magic that his master owned, such magic is very hard to forget. He possessed very terrible magic, as if a demon possessed him and he controlled this demon, few people are able to wield such abilities, demonic shadows seem to jump out of his hands. The bloody red devil accompanied this gentleman all the time, Jin Young has the same devil but only black. They listened carefully to everything this prisoner told them, and now they had to figure out what to do next. Ji Han said that the work of the Heavenly Blood clan has been completed to some extent, and now go and be so active. 
but he still wanted to find the home of this dangerous cult and believed that they could not be ignored. G.I. Khan said that he would really like to go along with the rest of the guys on a trip and help them, but now he had to deal with things here because it is more urgent for him. He took out the box in which the fire stone was located and began to examine it, the old man understood that he needed to find a real stone that should be in this box. Master you made his assumption that Mr. Pengua may be possessed by a demon due to the fact that his daughter is now sick. G.I. Han agreed with this judgment because this situation was very strange, his daughter had always been healthy and suddenly fell ill. She had a very rare disease that developed. There was not much left to live in a weak body, so every day of her life was valuable in a situation where there were no signs of improvement even after the use of numerous drugs and day by day. Only her condition worsened. G.I. Khan hoped to find this stone, because his ability could help this girl, but the stone turned out to be a fake. G.I. Khan said he couldn't sit still and he had to go and find out what was going on here he couldn't just give up and leave it like this the situation had to be brought to an end. He handed over the prisoner to Widzihan and the guy said that everything would be all right and he would take this prisoner to the fortress, he was glad that they managed to interrogate him and find out a lot of information. Jinan watched the old man all this time and tried to understand how he could help him or calm him down. G.I. Han told the boy that everything is fine and thanks to Jin Young, they were able to find out valuable information that will be of great help to them in finding out who is behind all this. The old man said that he was very happy to meet Jin Young and fight on the same battlefield with this boy, he would be very happy if fate helped them meet again. They started to leave and took with them the wounded prisoner Jin Young and his team remained standing still. Jinan asked Master Yu what this old man was going to do now he needed to understand where he was going next. Master Yu said that he intended to accompany the boy and his friends on their further journey, he was ready to go with them and help them. Jin Young felt very awkward, he didn't understand why this person would go with him and accompany him. Master Yu answered the boy's question and instead simply put his hand on his shoulder. Jinan did not understand the motives of this man and he seemed very suspicious to him the boy wanted to find out what was the matter. He thought that the master saw his demonic abilities and because of this now you want to be next to the guy in order to help him figure it out or control him. He lowered his head down and realized that he didn't want to think about it anymore, thoughts about his demonic abilities upset the guy. He clenched his fist and thought that the endless murderous intentions and bloodlust were spoiling him. The terrible feeling of this story was still in him and was not going to disappear from him. Any person who feels such power near him will not want to let it go, especially the master, the man who is called the great swordsman of the ten thousand. He clearly shows interest in this demonic ability. Master Yu wants to accompany the boy in order to control his power so that it does not harm the civilians of Kong Ho. The master will keep his sword at the ready all the time in order to kill the boy without hesitation at the moment when he loses control of himself. This makes Jinan think and constantly feel the danger next to him. He had to make a decision to let this man follow him or still refuse him and say that he would go on traveling without him. Master Yu suddenly told the boy that when they go on a journey along the road, they will definitely need to stop by for a while in Jianju. He will definitely need to meet one person in the city of Pungramjang. Large spacious room with two paintings on the wall, in the center is a gentleman on his knees, behind him sits his subordinate. The master listened to the report of his subordinate and learned that his fighters were killed and two of them were injured. He was very upset that one of his best troops was defeated and had to be rescued by disaster. He did not understand how it was possible that they were defeated by two guys. The man said that this guy was very strong he had incredible power against which it was impossible to fight but he was not alone there he had assistants who helped him fight. The master said that Najit's ceremonial group is now on a new special mission and maybe this person will be there too. He asked his subordinate what is the probability that they will return from this mission alive. After an encounter with this man who killed three of his warriors and wounded two of his warriors, the likelihood that the next meeting will come successfully is very small. He realized that he needed to send a lot more people on a mission 10 people should be at least in order to go on a mission. The man understood that the master did not know about the power of this guy, and he thought that 10 people were very few, you need to send at least 10,000 people. He told his master that it was the first time he faced such a strong opponent and 10 people could not cope against him, it was simply impossible. The master said that these problems might not have happened if they had been attentive and not distracted from the task. Then this man would not have attacked them and he would not have lost his people in battle. 
He narrowed his eyes and paused after that he said that this man would not have survived against his squad of fighters if everyone acted correctly and did not waste their strength. The man could not answer him anything to find the facts, he just lowered his head down and remained silent. The master was furious that this guy came to help master you after that killed his soldiers and attacked the special squad. He once again reproached the man for the fact that because of his negligence and inattention, people died now one of the best special squads cannot function. The gentleman asked the head of the detachment if he had any excuses about this or he would continue to sit with his head bowed and be silent. The man said that he reported all the information about the incident that happened in the forest and he didn't know anything else and he couldn't say anything in his defense. The gentleman said that we need to deal with this guy before the information leaks to the masses and until other people find out that the special squad was destroyed by the hands of this man. He ordered this man to go with his own hands to kill this man alone. Only in this way can he atone for his guilt. He was shocked by such an order and understood that it was impossible to do because he himself could not cope in a battle against this strong man. He understood that he had no other choice and he would either kill him or die. He will not be able to run away from the Lord either, and the man found himself in a difficult situation. All he can do is go and kill Jin Young. He bowed to his master and said that he would carry out this order at the cost of his life. Jin Young and his team walked for a very long time and at some point they stopped on the steps and looked up. Master Yu said that they arrived at Pungramjang, which was a castle on top of a mountain to which high steps lead. Master Yu asked the boy to let this terrible situation out of his head and stop worrying about it. Jin Young replied that he would do so. They suddenly heard someone's voice shouting at them to stop immediately and if they don't you will attack them. Suddenly, they were attacked by a girl in pink clothes, she dealt them a quick blow with her sword and left a black mark after her sword. Jinan asked this girl what is she doing and why is she attacking them because they did nothing wrong to her. She felt that a terrible aura emanated from him, this aura emits a terrible terrible energy, such an aura is usually owned by a demon or demon owners. Jinan began to suspect something strange about this girl. He needed to figure out who she was and why they were attacked. The girl said that she could not let a person into the castle who possesses such a terrible aura as a demon because it is very dangerous. She once again decided to attack him and stab him with her sword. She warned him that he would not fall into this fortress and said that he might not even dream about it because she would not let him through. She hit him with a black energy strike on Jinan, managed to block this blow in time and did not receive any damage. She continued to accumulate energy in her blade in order to strike the next blow, she was very serious and did not want to let this guy into the fortress. She dealt him a lot of quick blows but the guy did not return her blows, he only blocked all her attacks, he did not want to harm her. Jinan tried to fix the situation and calm this girl down he said she got it all wrong and she shouldn't be so aggressive because he's not going to hurt her or this fortress. Jinan pointed his finger at Master Yu and said that he came here with him and all he wants to do here is to meet people from this fortress under the guidance of Master. She said that she could not just believe a person with such an evil aura, because it is very dangerous and his words can be false. Demon Sertan said that ordinary words will not work in this situation, this girl will never believe him in her life and it would be better to still use force to convince her. He did not want to attack her for anger began to awaken in him and he could not do anything about it all he tried to do was calm down but evil energy awakened in him because the girl made him angry. A man was sitting in the office and writing something in a notebook with a brush. He dipped his brush into the inkwell and began to write something again. Suddenly, he heard very loud sounds that came from the street and decided to find out why it was so noisy outside. At this moment, the girl Jin Young fought against each other on a huge staircase, they inflicted quick blows on each other and each of them tried to achieve his. She stabbed him and broke through his defenses after that she asked what happened to him is he still not willing to give up. Jinan was very serious about fighting this girl and so he began to accumulate magical power in his fist in order to strike back at her. He stabbed her with his fist and the girl tried to block his attack with her sword. She was able to repel his attack and not take damage, but for such a block, she had to spend a lot of energy. She did not understand why this guy is so persistent and continues to fight her why doesn't he just give up and leave here because he is not welcome here. Guan asked the master why this girl attacked and decided to clarify if they needed to help the guy cope with this girl, but the master did not answer anything and just silently continued to stand and watch the battle. 
A man came out of the building and decided to see what was happening here, the master said that there was no need to help these two fight because nothing bad would happen to him. The men started down the stairs and decided to ask these two people what is going on here and why is it so noisy here. But when he went down a little lower and approached Master Yu he was very surprised to see this man he called Master Yu his uncle. Master Yu said that it had been a long time since their last meeting and asked this man how he was doing. He came here for a reason and admitted that he had one question for his nephew. But first, he wanted to see how this battle would end and who would win in the end, Jin Young or the girl. She heard the voice of her father who asked her to stop this fight and stop attacking this young man who came to visit them. Her father told her that this guy she fights is their guest and he is an acquaintance of her uncle. Therefore, he must be treated with respect. She stopped the fight and decided to take another look at this guy, she became very embarrassed because she attacked him. She bowed to him and asked for forgiveness for attacking the guy with hasty judgments without fact-checking and said that they would meet inside. Jinan smiled at this girl and said that they would definitely meet inside him it was very funny to fight her and she seemed very cute to him. They went into the house and this man put them all at the table and tried to listen to what they want, as far as he understood, these people needed advice from him. He said that he did not know for what specific purpose these people arrived and what they want to know. Jinan asked the owner of this house if he knew anything about the case when the scientist of the show clan was locked up in a prison for dangerous criminals. He replied that he knew one case about a scientist who was imprisoned by order of the emperor, but he was absolutely innocent. He remembered that the incident took place several months ago when the prison was destroyed and the scientists disappeared from it. Jin Young said that this is exactly the story that he did not want to know and the man imprisoned in this secret prison is his father. He said that he had information that the emperor was hiding in one of the settlements. Near this settlement there is a clan of heavenly blood and he wanted to know more about it. He assumes that his father may be in this place called Jiangandong he heard that some of his classmates are moving to this place. Jinan wanted to find out from this gentleman everything he knows about this place and about the history of his father in order to somehow find him or his traces. The man said that in this place, which the boy tells him about, is a very inferior organization. But he did not know that there was some kind of organization in Jiangandong. He said that he knew that there was more than one such place and there was one more place besides this, which could be useful for the boy in his search. Jin Young immediately realized that this second location could be under Jungandong's organization and most likely they are in different places. He asked the man to find out about this place. The owner of the house told the boy that this place is connected with the Black Island, so this place is very dangerous and hard to find, it will take a long time to find it. Jinan said that everything is fine and he has enough time, he does not worry about this. Besides, if this Black Island exists, then it can be found. Jinan made his assumption that it would be very difficult to get to this place because not everyone will be able to enter there, after that he asked the owner of the house if he had heard anything about his father, maybe he knows some story that could be for him useful. Master Yu said that they need to find out as much information as possible about Jin Young's father and it would be useful to learn something new. Jinan said that if now the master does not know anything about this, then in the future he can try to find out some information and asked him to contact the boy if he can get some information. The man said that he would be happy to help the boy in search of his father and as soon as he finds out something, he will immediately notify him about it, he said that in Korea he has no equal in the search for information, he is number one. The gentleman was standing near a large stone statue, it was a statue of a warrior the size of a house. He heard that someone came into his room and asked this man why he came here and what he was doing here. The master suggested that his subject came to him and in order to tell him new information, he asked is it really someone who is now constantly looking for information in the city of Kanho. A man stopped at the front door, his face is not visible because his face is covered by a shadow, he reported the information that the admiral wants to borrow the power of the great lord. The master asked what happened to a person who can contain the strength of several people at once. The man did not answer his question but said that the lord needs to secretly kidnap this person and this method will be the most correct way to solve the problem. The lord did not understand why he needs to kidnap a person for what purpose to do this and what results you will bring him. He replied that he would kidnap him the best option, but it would be difficult to do this because it would be much more difficult to kill him. He said that if they manage to kidnap this person, it will bring positive results and their work will move on, no one will stand in the way. 
The Lord thought it was worth it because these people are very powerful and don't look down on other people too much this is starting to piss off the Lord. The Lord said that he was a very good person and such an act would not be in his style, but nevertheless he could not do otherwise. The man said that he is the only person on the golden throne and he is also a person who is treated in the golden council very special so stealing him is a must. The Lord imagined himself on a golden throne and then realized that it would be very difficult to steal someone from the imperial palace, he did not understand what this man was up to. But the man continued to explain to the Lord that this act would be very useful for them. But everything must be done so that no one knows that this is their work. He said that the Golden Guard is closely monitoring their movements and it is very difficult to move now. Besides, this person who does not want to be kidnapped Grand Master. Kid the Lord said that if the Admiral thought so, he would not be an ordinary person. The man convinced the Lord that he has a lot of power and he can manage other people and not take personal part in this matter, he just needs to correctly direct people so that they go unnoticed. If he manages to find the right person to handle this case in secret and discreetly then there is a good chance that they will succeed. The Lord said that there are a lot of people here he does not know how to choose one of them to complete this task then he continued his thought and said that in any case he would have asked the Admiral's favor and everything went well so this person can be trusted. He thanked the Lord for the fact that the Great Lord thinks so and can trust him. The Lord looked at his subordinate and asked him why he felt anxious and worried so much. The man said that it's all about Go Jin Young because this guy is very strong and they don't care if they can't handle him. The Lord did not answer his interlocutor, instead, he turned his back to him and began to look thoughtfully at the statue. He waited until this man left the room and after that he called a shadow to him, this day turned into a man and asked what the master required of her. The Lord ordered this shadow to send someone to a city called Sanwuk. After the shadow received its order, it immediately evaporated and disappeared from the room, the master was left alone again. He felt that someone appeared in the room again and the Lord said that this guy stands like a bone in his throat and if he wants to take the golden throne, they won't let them do it. The man who was given the order to kill Jin Young appeared in the room behind Lord's back and said that even if he failed to kill this guy, at least they could kidnap him. The Lord said that he has not yet made a final decision to kill this person or still kidnap him, but in any case, a guy named Jin Young needs to be finished because he causes so many problems. He used to say his name Jin An all the time. The Lord said that at such a young age this boy lives such a difficult life is he still coping with these problems that fall on his shoulders. It was very quiet in the palace where Jin Young and his team were. Master Yu walked around the palace grounds and pondered what to expect on their next journey. He heard that a girl named Ion was watching him. He wondered if she responded to the name of the great swordsman or still called him her grandfather. The girl bowed to her grandfather and said that it was very reckless to watch him, but she did not do it on purpose. She just wanted her uncle to teach her martial arts. He said that he was not planning to do martial arts right now and just wanted to take a walk in the evening. He said that he watched her fight the Jin Young and praised her martial arts he said that she had grown a lot with her sword and was proud to have such a talented granddaughter. Master Yu said that when he wanted to become stronger, he had to live far from other people in order to constantly train and not be distracted by unnecessary irritants, but he would love to live with his family. But he unfortunately cannot live with his family and is very sorry because of this. Previously, he made such a decision for himself that he would live away from everyone and improve his martial arts, so he cannot transfer his decision and return back he has already chosen his path. Suddenly he felt a very strong energy in the air and he decided to find out where this energy came from, but so far he could not understand. Jinan was in the forest and meditated on one of the stones that was located on the edge of the mountain. He tried to stabilize his breathing and fill his body with concentration and energy so that his internal processes began to work. He felt that his energy was awakening and it began to envelop his body, air currents of energy began to appear around him. These currents and energies were very strong. They could lift his hair into the air and scatter it in the wind. Master Yu watched the guy from the side he thought that this guy's strange videos in the evening during training, he did not understand when he was resting this boy. His energy was very strong and resembled sunlight. Even though it was evening, this boy had incredible abilities. His aura sometimes resembles an endless labyrinth of darkness. He decided to stay here longer and try to watch the boy I and the master were very interested in what martial arts Jin Yan studied because the power he owned was unique. 
Jinan was the real embodiment of yin and yang because two forces were fighting in him a light force that was ready to save the world and there it war that could destroy everything in its path. Jinan's story was unique it was truly great but this story couldn't surpass Master Yu's story because he was also a great warrior. Master Yu did not understand why it is so difficult for him to contact this young man why this guy does not allow him to him and does not want to work hard instead he chooses the path of loneliness. The master decided that he would monitor how this boy develops and help him properly direct his energy. Jinan heard that the master was watching him and decided to talk to him he said that he knew a man who told him that when you get old you can't fall asleep at dawn. Jin Young asks Master Yu Sien Bei if he is the same old man. Yu was very surprised that the boy noticed him, he did not expect that his presence would be so noticeable and he turned his head to the guy. The master replied that it comes with age and jokingly asked the guy if he can fall asleep at dawn or is he already starting to age too. Jinan asked why this girl attacked him so recklessly in the morning and why she was so eager to defeat him and now she has been pestering the guy all day. Jinan was very upset that they did not want to let him into this fortress and they attacked him because he had heavy energy, but when these people found out that Master Yu had arrived here, they immediately changed their attitude and began to treat boy C respect but he felt it was unfair. But he asked why the owner of this house was very closed and did not tell them about the things that he was asked, he pretended not to know anything, although he definitely knows the information. Master Yu understood the boy's excitement and said that you shouldn't worry about the girl. She is always like that, but when she found out that I had come, the master, it became clear to her that she needed to calm down, because it was her grandfather but not her own. Jin Young said that he was very upset that he was attacked and he did not understand why they did not immediately recognize their grandfather. The old man said that therefore you should not worry about the occasion because he was last year 30 years ago they just forgot his face and no one expected that he would come today this girl saw her grandfather for the first time. She saw her grandfather for the first time and was shocked that the great swordsman is her grandfather, because of this she could not sit still all day and asked him to teach her martial techniques. The owner of this house never paid attention to his family about the master, because at school this person left the family forever, and it is better for no one to know information about him in addition, when it comes to a great swordsman, it is better to hide this information from everyone. Master Yu spent his whole life in order to make his name known throughout the country and to be respected by everyone, and now he is very afraid to spend this name or slander him with dirt and it is better for him to remain a secret and not tell anyone that he has a family. Jinan said that the title of Grand Master Swordsman is a very important title and he understands why the old man is so worried about it. Master Yu said that everything in this world does not turn out the way you expect it and therefore you need to be prepared for everything. Jinan listened to the old man and listened to his words, he found the truth in these words and realized that the old man would not say bad things and he definitely understands something in this life. Jinan said that he is currently studying one martial art and asked the master if he would like to take a look at this martial art because it would be very useful for a boy to show his technique to such a great master. Master Yu said that he would look at the guy with pleasure, because he is very strong, they are afraid and he wonders what kind of technique this boy is studying now. Jinan said that he studied the ancient writings that were in his father's secret room and among these ancient scrolls he found one combat technique, but it was too complicated. At first, this technique turned out to be an ordinary set of techniques for him, but when you start using it, the internal energy flow changes its direction and it is very difficult to cope with this technique, he wanted to find out from an experienced fighter some information about this technique, because no one knows anything about it. Jinan began to accumulate energy in his hands and try to prepare himself to perform this martial technique in order to show it to Master Yu. He began to perform techniques from this technique and accumulate energy in the right direction, various energy spheres began to appear in his hands, they were white and then blue, and at the end there was black energy in one of his hands and white energy in the other hand. When his energy flow reached the right level, he made a punch and released a huge flow of energy forward, this flow of energy was incredibly strong. He completed this martial technique and asked the master what it was like from the outside and what he could tell him about this martial technique. Master Yu told the guy that the technique is quite interesting but the problem is that he learned it wrong and he has significant mistakes in performing the techniques. He does it all. Not perfect. Therefore, he does not succeed. The master said that the boy has a very correct way of energy flow while performing these combinations of blows, 
but the intensity with which he splashes this energy out of himself is out of control and due to this, problems begin. He said that the boy very often uses his brain and tries to make him do everything right, but in such situations it can only hurt and because of this there are problems with the execution of the technique. He suggested that the boy use his brain less in training and trust his feelings more, thanks to this method, he will be able to achieve the correct execution of this technique. After all, there is no original of this technique and you need to trust yourself. Jinan absolutely agreed with the master since the original of this method does not exist and he needs to find the right ways to perform this technique himself, he will have to follow the flow of his mind and the flow of his sensations. Master Yu said that if he personally studied this technique of martial arts, he would try to redefine it in accordance with the inner peace and harmony that is inside him, because only in this way he could find the balance of performing this technique. He suggested that the boy make some changes to this technique and make it more comfortable for himself and his inner world, because due to the fact that there is no original, there is no exact understanding of how these strikes should be performed. The master said that he had already advised everything possible and that he had nothing more to offer this boy. Jinan made a decision that he will listen to the words of the master and this way of studying this technique will lead him to learn quickly and this is the shortest way the new formula is the original that will help him give the basis of this martial arts technique and returning to the beginning is sometimes a speed up for further study. His first teacher always told the boy that you need to assimilate and focus on harmony, this will lead to the most positive results in learning new techniques, you should not be afraid of change. Jean Young realized that no matter how good and strong this technique is, it is still not perfect. Grandfather Guyan once told him that the ancient martial arts techniques were created in the ancient world and now no one knows how to use them correctly. However, unfortunately, Heavenly Dansambi could not keep up with the rate of development of Sinusobacter, maybe this is because initially there was no struggle for all Bopa. Jinan was afraid that this technique could further awaken his bloodlust and thirst for murder. So for now, decide to pause in learning this technique and think it over carefully. He thanked the master for such useful advice and bowed to him, he said that my new knowledge would be very useful to him in studying. Master you said that there is nothing to thank him for, because he did not help in any way and these were just basic tips. Jinan came to the palace grounds to a place where there was no one and where there was a lot of free space. He couldn't calm down and decided to continue learning this technique because he felt that when he learned this technique it would be the pinnacle of melee combat in long-range attacks. He will be able to combine the calmness and peacefulness of a herbivore and compensate for his weakness with the strength of a predator. Jinan understood that if he could combine melee attacks with ranged attacks and one strike would be able to do a double attack then this would lay the foundation for a new change in the law of the divine mind. Based on other martial art techniques what is the biggest advantage he will be able to learn a new technique and during the ceremony of initiation into this technique he will be one of the strongest fighters because he will not have flaws. The only reason that frightened the Jin Young and made him stop was that the demonic energy could move into him and awaken the bloodlust in him again, and if the bloodlust is combined with the new martial arts technique, big problems can begin. He has a lot of time for this training and at the end of the training he still managed to combine two very strong energies and make a powerful burst of this energy in one blow. Jin Young was very happy that he still managed to achieve positive results in this technique and nothing bad happened to him. He accepted Gong Kungjiol. Now Jinan was thinking about what to name this new spell he wanted to come up with his own name because it was no longer the same spell that he read in the ancient letters, the interpretation that he himself came up with. It was very quiet in the palace, night fell, there were two people in the fox at night. One of them was dressed in black clothes, the second was dressed in white clothes, they talked about the fact that a man in black clothes saw Master Yu here. The man said that it's already night, that's a good time to find a boy here, but still, it's not the ideal time to attack. The man in black said it was the perfect time to attack, but there is an old man next to the boy that could interfere with their plans. He said that he could go first and find the boy, but his accomplice in white clothes should complete this business. He said that he would do everything himself as usual and did not even doubt that the man in black clothes did not want to help him much. He took his weapon with his hand and said that I drank no this order at any cost despite the fact that he can even die in battle. A man in black clothes is called cancer and he reminded his comrade that this request was given by the great master and this mission must be completed at the cost of one's life it is better to die with honor than to die without honor. But he was ready to die during this task, 
he had already prepared himself for the fact that everything might not go according to plan. Cancer did not understand why this person is still standing here and not going to complete the task. The Cancer rose from the ground and began to walk, he said that it was time to leave. They had very little time and needed to immediately go in search of Jin Young. They quietly and imperceptibly walked through the forest, looking for the guy, they didn't know that he was somewhere nearby. Jin In at that moment was sitting on a stone and meditating, he was concentrated on himself and resumed his energy flows. Cancer at that moment was not far from the guy. He hid behind one of the trees and watched the boy. He began to run between the trees very quietly and imperceptibly and tried to get as close as possible to the guy. Jinan felt the presence of other people not far from him and sighed heavily he was tired of the fact that someone is constantly hunting for him. Sertan asked his master if he had noticed that someone was approaching them and the boy replied that they were not very loud and this spy had already given himself away a long time ago. Jinan was tired of the fact that no one can leave him alone and everyone wants something from him, he couldn't just let go of this matter and understood that he now had to deal with these guys. He noticed this spy a kilometer before he got here to deal with this spy will take a little time that he could spend on meditation Jin Young asked the demon if he would go with him to fight these. Sertan said that their presence is very well felt and blocking their attacks gives him a headache but leaving one Jin Young to fight against them would be meanness of his side and therefore he will help him. Jin Young said that they need to immediately start monitoring these spies, because if they wait a little, then it will be too late, these spies will simply disappear. It was important for him to find out who was behind these spies. Why they started hunting him again. Jinan ran through the forest after these spies. Cancer tried to escape from the boy and constantly turned into a shadow in order to confuse the guy and not give himself away. Jinan could not find this spy, but he felt his energy next to him. He understood that this guy was hiding somewhere not far from Mimo and find him. Sertan said that these spies are real professionals because they have been running after them for quite some time and it is still hard to notice them. Jinan said that they were already somewhere close and asked the demon not to relax and be on the alert all the time because they could appear at any moment. Rak took out four kanai and took them between his fingers. He wanted to suddenly throw them at the guy. The kanai started flying straight at him and were already very close, if they hit they would have caused a lot of damage because there were a lot of them. Jinan called upon Selfine to help him fight off these attacks. The fairy used her magical green arrows to fight off all the kunai that flew at the master. Jinan finally found out where this spy was hiding and now he could safely attack him because this person gave away his location. Jinan wanted to return the kunai he had just lost to this man, and thanks to an ability called Green Onion, he redirected those kunai in the other direction. Iron knives began to fly at their own owner, now he could take damage from his own weapon. Cancer was not afraid of this attack and behaved very calmly in this situation, he even caught with two fingers and one of the kanais who flew into him. He said that he was very surprised that Jin Young had such strange techniques and saw something like this for the first time. He never met a person who could then just find his location. He praised the boy for being well trained and very attentive. He said that he wants to end this business himself and kill the guy with his own hands. Because this way he will have more glory available. But unfortunately, he cannot kill him himself because the Lord gave the order to kill Jenyan with another person and he is obliged to listen to his master. Cancer suggested instead of killing the boy to serve him politely and that's all he could do at the moment with this guy. He took the boy by the collar of his shirt and began to pull him towards him. After that, he began to run forward very quickly and pull the guy behind him using his martial arts technique and accumulating a speed. He quickly picked up speed and moved to the nearest slope from which he threw the boy into the water. Together they flew down from a large waterfall and had to break into the water. He was very confident in his actions and was not afraid that he could die with this guy if he fell down. Cancer threw him down and wanted the boy to crash when he hit the ground. But Jin Young managed to create a green energy flow near him in time, which saved him from falling. He spent a lot of magic in order to save his life and not crash into the water, but now he could safely levitate in the air. Jinan said that there is absolutely no courtesy in these people and at that moment he realized that instead of where he was thrown off there were a lot of such assassins. These assassins were on the walls that were near the water, they were all waiting to be brought here. Boy, it was a trap. Jinan was not afraid to fight these guys, he started joking that he had not seen them for a long time and the guys probably missed him once decided to come again. 
Cancer asked the boy why you have such self-confidence in him is this really the basis of his martial arts, he said that he really likes that the guy behaves this way. Cancer said that these assassins were brought here just in case, but they won't fight. He said that Jin Young needs to fight with one person so that he can restore his part. Cancer said that his task was to bring the boy here and that his role was over and now he could step aside. A warrior appeared from above and was ready to strike from behind, but Jin Young felt that something was wrong here. He managed to dodge the blow and received no damage. His opponent continued to strike. Jinan blocked these blows with his hands, he does not allow himself to be harmed. His opponent began to accumulate magical energy in his swords in order to deliver more powerful blows. Jinan at that moment realized that he needed to counterattack and began to retaliate which stunned the enemy. Jinan said that he was not happy to see this man again and at that moment he used his new technique in martial arts in order to try it out in practice. He began inflicting long-range attacks on his enemy in order to break through to him through his defenses. His subscriber said that he was also not happy to meet, but there was no other way out, this should all end today. They understood that after this battle only one would come out alive, so they fought very desperately. Jinan, how can he break through this person's defense and deliver the right blow after which he will not be able to fight further? The man drew energy into his two blades and headed straight for his opponent. He struck a comet strike that pierced any defense after this strike. Few could survive. He said that today would be the last day for one of them and now is the time to show their best. The warrior began to fill his swords with blue energy in order to deliver a very powerful blow to his opponent. When he struck this blow, the water scattered in different directions and a water corridor was formed. Jinan said that his opponent had a very interesting attack technique and he had never seen anything like it before, this technique was like a loud scream, which does a lot of damage. The warrior saw that Jinan blocked his attack and because of this he began to get angry because he put a lot of energy into this blow. He immediately began to attack the guy and inflict very fast attacks on him, trying to break through his defense, he was very fast and was able to quietly close the distance between them. Jinan was not afraid of this opponent and struck him with his fist right in the stomach, he said that this man is very strong in his own way, but it will not be difficult to deal with him. But Jinan was worried about what he would do with this man later, he didn't want to kill him. But in the battle there, only one person could survive. Black assassins who had been walking on the rocks all this time and watching him. He noticed that among them there were several unusual people. He watched a man who sat separately from everyone, he looked like the captain of all these black assassins. Sertan said that fighting the commander of the black assassins would be very dangerous due to the fact that his assistants are here, the situation could be very difficult for them. Jinan struck at his opponent in order to destroy him as quickly as possible. This warrior was a very weak opponent and killing him was not difficult and the guy did not want to spend a lot of energy on him. He punched him directly in the face and used his energy which doubled his punching power. His opponent was unable to stay on his feet after receiving such damage and flew back. Now the most important thing for him was to deal with these opponents who were next to him, they were the main threat of blue lightning appeared in front of his face and he did not expect to see it. Assassins appeared and held a blade in his hand, the guy's body was bound by lightning. He sat on his knees and moved his body a little. Cancer said that the warrior was defeated in the battle and his master disgraced him again, for which he will have to die. Jinan was trapped, black assassins began to surround him and they appeared in different directions, there were a lot of them. Cancer said that his assistant could not cope with this guy and now he will have to finish this case again and ordered his henchman to kill the guy. Jinan was able to break the shackles and get out of the trap, but it was too late because he was attacked by black assassins. But suddenly another person appeared on the battlefield and with quick movements of his sword was able to kill these assassins and save the couple. Cancer didn't understand what was happening. He wanted to find out who intervened in this battle and helped the guy. It was the guy's mentor. He felt that something terrible was happening here and decided to help the boy so that he would not be killed. The master asked the guy why he came here alone, and said that if they fight together in the future, it will be much easier. No Jin Young replied that he could handle it himself. Cancer began to smile when he saw that his old mentor came to the aid of this guy and said that he had made a big mistake. He regretted that he allowed this warrior to fight the guy one on one and spent a lot of time on it. The master attacked the captain of the black assassins and at that moment all Cancer was thinking about was that he had to kill the guy back in the forest. 
The master was unable to inflict damage on this black assassin because as soon as he touched his body with his sword, the assassin immediately disappeared at that moment. Cancer said that this master is a very strong warrior because he just mocked cut off his head and he hardly managed to escape from there using teleportation. He said that they have no other choice, I can't just retreat but first they need to take care of the fallen guy. The assassins turned into black fogs and began to quickly move in space, flying between the guys. Jinan used his fairy magic to shoot magic arrows at them, he did not want to release these opponents. His green arrows began to fly forward trying to catch up with the fleeing assassins. The green arrows tried to tie up the assassins and prevent them from leaving. The black assassins began to use their teleportation magic to escape from these arrows and avoid falling into a trap. Cancer understood that he needed to save his henchmen and began cutting green arrows. He tried to destroy these arrows so that they could no longer interfere with him and his assistants. Cancer said that this boy is much stronger than the stories he heard about this guy. He said that now they need to leave but they will meet with him again later when the black assassin is better prepared for this meeting. He turned into black fog again and began to fly in the air like a flying snake. Jean Young said that the master came very on time and to the right place, to which the master answered him that he felt that the guy needed help and responded to this call. He said that this call for help was so weak that it was difficult to notice and this time it was just luck that the master was able to find it. Jean Young said that he didn't need to come here and it was a bad idea but he felt excited and decided to play with these guys as if it was just a game. He wanted to catch at least one person from their gang and find out who they were. And why they came here. In the end, he didn't catch anyone and just disgraced himself. It was already night outside and the moon was shining very brightly. The servant came to his master and reported the news that all the iron blood demons were already dead. The gentleman in the golden mask was very upset by this news, he hoped that some warriors would be able to return after this battle. The servant said that he has very little information but he assumes that their enemies have moved and secretly mobilized their black assassins. The gentleman said that this news upsets him. The servant suggested sending these people warnings and explaining that it is better not to do this. The gentleman said that there was no need to send a warning because it would not bring his fighters back, he was upset that the blood exorcists died but nothing could be done about it. He said that there are more important things to do now and when should I do them? Mr. Ask your servant if they managed to find the person they are hunting for, the servant said that he did not find any traces. He looked at his master with frightened eyes because he understood that he had brought a lot of bad news and said that he was doing everything possible to carry out his order. The servant asked the gentleman in the golden mask, did he really need to find this guy? He said that the guy they are not looking for is actually very strong but cannot compare with the strength of the gentleman in the golden mask. Master, I am tired from my throne. He walked up to the servant and grabbed his hand by the throat, after which he said that the servant must find him at any cost. And only then can he be reborn into the perfect demon god of the bloody heavens. He said that this child is still weak, you can fight him and defeat him, but if they act for a very long time and then it will be too late. He strangled his subordinate and said that you can't leave a job halfway unfinished. He dreamed that he could kill all people and bleed the world in order to become the god of blood and be painted red, then he could receive the power of the demon world and destroy this world. He said that this guy is a character from the legend but the legend may not be reality and everything can change at any moment so they must destroy him so that he does not interfere with them. The servant said that they were starting to choke and told the master at the strength of this guy was incredibly great. The master let him go and put him on the ground. He no longer choked him. Suddenly demonic hands began to appear from different sides and these hands took the guy by the body and he fell into a trap. He said that before these crazy people who claim to be blood sons find out about this, they must first discover it themselves and solve this problem. He said that until you make a person suffer, he will not begin to show his initiative. Demonic hands began to choke this guy and he shouted that the master wants to get the most out of his blood relatives and ancestors and promised that they will be his main priority. The master ordered his demonic hands to let this guy go and said that now the world must know that the golden mask is coming out of the shadows and getting down to business again. He said that he would make this world work according to his rules and achieve the desired result. The servant was very frightened by what had just happened to him and said that he had already heard the same words from another gentleman. The master turned his head towards the servant and said that they must show everyone that the world belongs only to him and no one else. 